Well, up now for, for the re-upload. And the re-upload of the previous one isn't even up yet. Oh. So much to look forward to. So much fapping. <laughs> A fap to remember. Correct areas the whole idea was that we do two at a time because we'd need two episodes to fill an EFAP episode. I have since realized that was an incorrect assumption. Oh. Nice. Do you remember we covered the entire season of Falcon the Winter Soldier in one EFAP? I remember that. How it, did we do it? it? I hmm. actually don't know how we managed to do that. It's like we've only gotten longer over time. But... Magic. Couldn't tell you. Even right. though I know all about magic and spells and sorcery of all kinds, uh -huh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't actually know. I couldn't tell you. This is truly otherworldly. A little bit. Um, but hey, all the problems to have, it ain't such a bad one. Bring out people for storytelling. And sometimes we even get to enjoy the episode or, or the coverage of it. Rare is the former. But it could happen. Maybe in the uh, the in the opposite of the intended way, but that's all right. Ah, uh, there is chat. Coming in to say hello. The coverage has been great fun. It is just, it's actually, the, the bit I don't look forward to is actually watching the episode beforehand. But I guess it's necessary. Necessary evil. Yeah, it can be very, uh, annoying. <laughs> say the least. Now, uh... Those who are already wondering, where is Fringy? Well, he's right there. I feel like asking there the question go. of where he is was pointless. <laughs> I was... don't even know why they bothered. He's why right did here. they ask? I don't understand. He was right there. I don't, I don't know. I, well, then I guess the whole time. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I slept for that too long. That's okay. We're doing our little intro, all right? We're doing our round, winding up. We just started um, up. Yes, Baru will be with us in as much as an hour's time. So obviously we'll have talked about the first scene by then. So he can join us right after that. And then Shad, uh, I believe he is he is uh, teetering on a yes-no. We may see him, we may not. We can't know for sure. Obviously, the uh, re-uploaded video title will reflect that reality. I, I couldn't have known for sure. Anyway, yeah. Hello, everybody. We, um... We, wait, we're covering episode six, not five? Oh, my goodness. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'll just change that. Actually, that was more helpful for the word count, because, uh... Well, six. we just assumed that the coverage for episode 5 would never end. Yes, so, to thank you, Rings of Power's abysmal 6th episode. Beautiful. Don't worry, fixed it well before everyone saw how bad that error was. Um, but yeah. I didn't notice myself. It was, uh, it was quite a long and terrible episode 5, so maybe, in a way, 6 is just 5. It's an extended, like, part 2. Think of it that way. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think a lot of us, you know, we, we, that uh, that stream ended. Took care of some life things like sleep and eating, and then you wake up and you're like, "Well, time to do it again." Only like, the finest of bodily needs were satisfied. Yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll go for like well before we start up, we'll we'll just go for about I'd say. In twenty minutes or so, we'll just we'll just chill out for a little bit. See if we give a little bit more time for other fellas to to show up. You see, this was a this was a trying thing to ask people to do. All right, there's a lot of a lot of stuff. Remember, we got House of the Dragon uh, is today, so we got you know just trying to balance everything. But um, maybe we'll uh, we'll just answer some of the super chats that are coming in now to get a little head start on oh, okay. that. Okay, and then there's uh, a spot. yeah, and then we'll we'll start it up. So uh, the first one said She Hulk's feet. I think, I think oh, this person is a that's fair. I mean, that's a decent observation. Yeah. Um, then halfway through the Karen EFAP, what a gem of a movie. That's true. I recommend everyone check that out. It, was fuck. it is a gem of a movie. It's, it's funny, right? It's like, oh, the Halloween EFAP movie is spooky times. It's like, it's really spooky. It's just usually funny. <laughs> we usually cover movies that are very amusing. What would, it, what would it look like for us to cover something that's actually scary? I don't know. Um, I don't like I don't like scary movies. I get spookified. I love them, but I don't know that EFAP movies is really the suitable format. You know, I just, not for an actual scary movie. I don't think. Mm. Um, we got Morley's secret Sunday stream to praise Iron Man three. Uh, 
Not quite. It's a little bit different. We're going to be criticizing an episode of Rings of Power, but I could see the connection there. Uh, Lord Longbong of Mugelington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong Fap? Peter Jackson's Long Kong. When's less going on? It'll be a movie fap for the ages. P.S. Oh, well, Wagsies. Riches with a good boy. Hello. Um, yeah, there's a good chance of that. I think someone was mentioning. I would assume so. I would this assume is Godzilla, so. too. Why not throw them all together? Big arc. Like I said, we can Every cover. Every single one ever made. We can cover Let's King of the it. Monsters again. That was one of our earliest EFAP movies, right? So, you know, we can get yeah, a refresh it was a on that. Yeah, good movie, too. It was great. I've, I've blanked King of the Monsters. Which one was that? Was that the one with Eleven from Stranger Things in it? Yes. Is she in King vs. Kong Monsters? Godzilla? King vs. Kong <laughs> Monsters. <laughs> Someone's ha someone has to do something about these Kong monsters. Mm -hmm. All I remember about King of the Monsters is that there was some very um, uh, suspect acting going on. Um, like I, bad? I, yeah. If it's bad, you can say bad. They're not here. Suspect acting. Good point. Fucking awful they, acting They watch our on. show. They're going to get all upset. Oh, no. This will encourage Millie them to Bobby do Millie Bobby Brown is like, wow, EFAP was my favorite up until they said that. Is his name Billy Bobby Brown? Her name. <laughs> she's she's eleven. I love I love how much that's not helpful at all to someone who has no idea about Stranger Things. You're like, what do you mean she's eleven? She's young. <laughs> You're like, oh no, wait, yeah, no, sorry, that's her name. <laughs> Label this is a name, right? Yeah, she goes by it. And uh, so her name's Eleven Rags. She's uh, the main girl. She, her name's I think she's eleven. She screams at King Ghidorah at one point. Uh, I think. Yeah, that that sounds familiar. Uh, I can't remember if she... Wait, that was... Oh, you're right. I thought he was a boy. Um, uh, I think she has long hair, and, and she looks... She's more girly in that. King of the was... Monsters, I just... I just I was, in my mind, I was just thinking, oh, yeah, and the sun. And but no, it was... It was a girly girl. I mean, I enjoyed the visuals. Sometimes. Yeah. Was I enjoyed for it. some of the 7% that was the yeah. actual monster fights. I did too. Um, I'm not caught up with yesterday's EFAP, so this is a surprise to be sure, but a welcomed one. Well, I, I'm glad, because this is, uh, yeah, this is, we call it an emergency EFAP at this point, and we're like a whole month ahead of schedule of EFAP at this point. Um, so we're going to have to find a way to start giving you guys some EFAP gamings mixed in on those Saturdays, all right? That's going to happen. Uh, but but I've never seen worse armor than the Numenorians in this show. Yeah, it was. Uh... You've never seen worse. I don't know about never seeing worse, but <laughs> armor. They said they are. They are really bad, though. Yeah, they're pretty they, bad. They uh, are really bad. They're they're up in the top. We end up. They're in the top list. We end up going with the whole like one of the worst for the budget, I guess, or like the the profile of the show. Like it's, it's got to be one of the worst when you. Sort of yeah, way, if yeah. I saw that on a high school stage play, I'd be like, "Hey, that's pretty good." Mm -hmm. But in in this show, mm, you want to get you want to get the outfits right. I feel like we have the budget to get. I feel like we have the budget to get everything incredibly good, without exception. I think white was definitely the wrong color choice. I mean, it makes it look cheaper. I think if they just darkened it up a bit. Then at least you wouldn't be made it look like metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's true. Not just like white. Yeah, it looks like paper. That's like the big problem. Is it evokes the wrong material. Uh, there are ways to do it, of course. They just didn't. Uh, here's to a 13-hour EFAP for one terrible episode. Well, <laughs> it can't actually be any longer than I think seven hours. It caps out there, so uh, we will. I'm sure we'll be fine. Seven hours for one episode. We can do that, right, guys? We can swing that. 100%. Hmm. No chance of that going wrong. Karen greater than Galadriel? Yeah, I mean, Karen is a well-rounded, flawed human being who, you know, she doesn't quite learn a lesson before it's too late, but uh, you know, Galadriel is just clearly not the kind of She's person you want to hang well -rounded. out with. really well-rounded. I would totally hang out with Karen and ask her about some stuff. Like, yeah. Remember how her backstory is her husband was killed by a black vigilante? And you, you wonder yeah. if it's like, like a superhero type? <laughs> Something like like Hancock, and... or yeah, or uh, Black Panther, Rody, or Rody. Yeah, I could have ran in and fight a nuke. I don't know. Blum up. Why not? Um, I'm honestly shocked that a single episode of Rings of Power costs more than the entire first season of Daredevil. Wait, is that true? I didn't remember rec reconcile that. If that's true, Tringy, you know Daredevil. Right. Is this true? 
that uh, one episode would have cost more than the whole show? Probably, yeah. Ugh. That's just that's just going to show, isn't it? Well, that explains how much better it is than Daredevil, right? Because it had all of that incredible budget to just spend on all of this, all of this everything, from the sets to the costumes to hiring good writers to, you know. I would say so. That's yeah. Cool. Uh, boom, boom. There's a tiny meme channel called Meme Time who deep faked Rowan Atkinson onto Galadriel. Look at the smiling on the horse scene. Makes all it makes sense now. I, I think I've seen that actually, yeah. And the deep faking uh, Mr. Bean onto Elrond as well as good shit. Yet another EFAP. Mola, have you considered playing Steel Rising post God of War arc? Love the gaming stream so much. By the way, play Returnal. Also, hi, rags and guests. Hello. I have no idea what Steel Rising is. Anyone else? Maybe it's like uh, a revolution by a thieves' guild. Well, oh, all right. And mm -hmm. uh, as for Returnal, I keep getting a lot of people recommending that. Do you guys like it? I can't. I have never played Returnal. I don't know. I've heard of Returnal, but I have never. I hear it's uh, pretty good, right? Apparently, a lot of people are recommending it, so I assume so. Hey, Morley, would you ever listen to Oni plays in the background while working on something, or would the funnies be too distracting? Um, depends on what I'm doing. If I'm doing, like, visual editing, I can mostly have videos in the background, but if I'm writing, I don't really have a video I'd, I'd like to listen to at the same time. Uh, or audio editing, you know? This is probably what you'd expect. At some point, you guys mentioned doing a Harry Potter arc. Were you serious? Yeah, I think so. That'd be fun. I am not unserious about that kind of thing. Which is, I feel, a Are straightforward you <laughs> an answer as, yeah. All right. And you by that, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, totally, I'm totally down with the potential for a, a Harry Potter arc. Well, that's one of your you favorite movies, right, Frankie? Like so we can Harry see Potter if it holds up. I mean, look, I'm, I'm happy to do an arc for it, but as for knowing anything about that film series, it's, yeah, I can't help you. I'm actually wearing the sorting hat right now. Yeah. It wants me it wants yeah, me see, to release what it. That is. What? Oh my gosh, I'm actually surprised. You don't know what the sorting hat know. is? You really don't? I don't know. I don't know shit okay. about Harry Potter really. I find Do that you know really about hard Harry to believe. Harry Potter's bestest friend, Ronald Weasley. Yeah, I know. I know that. You don't remember the sorting what? hat? I, what, what about what film was it in? Which one was it in? This one. It was in what, the first. This one tells seen, you which yeah, house you're going seen, in. I haven't seen that one. Oh. Have you seen any of the Harry Potter movies? I saw Goblet of Fire, and then I saw the last two. That's all I've seen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bizarre selection. Well, I didn't. Like I said, I don't. I don't care about Harry Potter really. Never did. Wow. But you cared enough to watch three of them. Yeah. So look who's a yeah. liar now. But not even, I, we're, we're seven minutes into the EFAP when we've already caught you in your web of deception. I don't, I, I feel like um, there was a breach in your logic there. Just because you don't care about something doesn't mean that you will never have ever seen anything for you it. You cared enough to comment. And to go and see three movies. To see One, three of them. maybe I'd have given you three, but three. Yeah. Okay. Silence. Yeah, I why, can't talk to you guys when you get three? like this. The guilty are uh, often silent. I don't know. I think maybe one of them might have been... One of them would have been, like, for a school thing, where it's like, oh, we're going to the movies, pick, like, a film that you want to go watch, or maybe they even Is that decided... that your school that did? ...we had to watch. Uh, maybe it was, like, I don't know. I It was something... I still did that. ...related to one of them, yeah. Maybe I even two of them. Not. That's actually how I saw Goblet I think, of Fire. I think, um... I, I the goblet of fire might have been that or like a birthday as well. I don't know. That's um, and then I got invited to watch the last one, like the midnight screening. Also ended up seeing King Long Kong, um, that way. King Long Kong. <laughs> and, uh... Our our school never. I never took field trips to go see movies. We never did that. We did. Really? We did. Uh, we did field trips to further our educational 
pursuits. He says was, when realizing his like, job is to talk about movies. Point. Listen, that's true. I feel like all the time I spent watching movies in my whole life was totally not a waste of time, and now it was incredibly important, foundational to the entire planet's societal health. That's look at all point. the other things I was learning in school, and I think, well, that's the time I could have been spending watching films. And yeah, when they were like, ooh, you want to you know? learn about covalent bonds? It's like, no, I want to learn about Bond, no. James Bond. Ionic bonds were way more interesting anyway. See? I agree with that. Yeah, ionic bonds are interesting. And then like, oh, I biology, and it's like, I don't learn about the things that. biology. I never did biology, didn't learn about that, so... And it reflects That strikes in my me as odd, Fringy, considering your love of animals. Um, yeah, I guess it wasn't, uh... I don't know, I, I did physics and chemistry, I didn't do biology. Fringy likes their outside and whole appearance, I don't think he wants to dig in, find out... I would say it. that... Yeah, I'd say that I'm much more interested in animals in terms of like, not like the as a hobby, not as a career. Just, well, not as a career, no, evidently. But like, <laughs> I like I like animals just hanging about and running around out there in the world and getting up to all sorts of shenanigans more so than like what is their uh I don't know cell structure. <laughs> I mean, I, I was fascinated by biology in terms of just understanding how everything, like, where does the oxygen go, and then what does it do, and then same for food, and, and, and pooping. You gotta, you, we, I love to find out why we turn poo. things into, like, brown, stinky things. You know, why not? And everyone does that on Earth, or a lot of people, anyway. Uh... Devil Fruit of the Week. So this is another one of those, uh, would you take the fruit or uh, while not being able to swim anymore? Oh. Allow its user to transform into a hybrid, its original form mixed with a human or a full human at will. Which animal pet would you feed this to? Wait, what? So you give it to a pet and the pet can take human, like, a, like it can transmogrify itself partially into a human? Well, if I, I'll read it again. because What if I, I gave it to, a, a like, confused. an ape? A great ape. The Hito Hito fruit, which allows its user to transform into a human hybrid. Its original form mixed with a human. Or a full human at will. Which animal slash pet would you feed it to? Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't want to fucking traumatize whatever animal I give this to. Yeah, maybe I would. Maybe you'd have to give it to a creature that's already fairly ape-like, so that yeah. when it transforms into a human, it's not like that big of a deal. It's almost like, oh, this is just an, this is a similar form of something I'm already familiar with, which might not like, be too bad. Give it to like a little fly, and then it turns into the fly from the fly, and you're like, <laughs> Jeff oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> um, My last cat was a. a Bitch, I wouldn't have given it to her because I don't think just, cats are ever you know. bitches. I don't need the odd exception. That was definitely one of them. Wouldn't have given it to that one. Um, um I don't know, man. I'd probably just be like, nah, we'll just leave it. Animals are probably happy being the animal that they are. Not necessarily, but probably. Risk turning them into a human hybrid. And then I'm guessing it's like it's all very wholesome and fun, where they turn into a very normalish looking thing that's not terrifying. Even though I feel like this question would end up with terrifying results. That's what I yeah, think. What if you gave it to a hummingbird and the hummingbird grew two human arms oh, no. like out of its side? So you had this tiny little hummingbird with two normal sized human arms coming out of the sides of it. Oh, someone did one of those videos where they did like chickens. Oh no, birds generally, I think it was, but with human arms. And then it's like pictures of or videos of chickens running around like waving at people. And it's very bizarre. <laughs> Sounds it. Uh,. Thoughts on the Devil's Rejects? Music, EFAP, when? I've seen the Devil's Rejects. Who are the rejects. Devil's Rejects? It's a movie, but uh, I haven't seen it in ages. Oh. And then, music, EFAP. I don't think we're ever going to do a music, EFAP. I don't know how that would look. Like, we talk about songs, I guess, maybe? Um, maybe one day, who knows? Every Yeah, maybe one day, but notables. probably never. When is it a good time for a character to forget something or accidentally do something that pro progresses the plot? Probably when he gets his head hit with a hammer. Uh, I guess you'd go 
when it's justified. Memory but potion. To specifically, yeah, like to to the, all the ways you can justify it depends on if we're doing sci-fi fantasy or if it's regular. You just have to look into how people's brains can uh, fall apart IRL or what can cause that as a horrible accident slash bit of uh, biology. Yeah. And see they if can, can naturally it. forget something that they didn't have much time to remember. Like if they're yeah. under pressure and they have to remember instructions for deactivating a bomb and they remember a lot of it, but they can't remember all of it. You know, things like that. I mean, a lot of it would probably just be stuff in your normal day to day. Did I have enough time to devote these things to memory? Steps to operate a machine or a piece of equipment. Maybe you have them visibly take notes if they can to show that they wouldn't have been able to remember it otherwise. Um, what do I do if I know exactly what my character would do, but it doesn't go in the direction I want the plot to go towards? Then change his situation. Or you could just, um, uh, sacrifice, I think it was, Whedon's talked about it as part of writing, it's like you've got to be ready to destroy the things you've created, uh, even get rid of them was, entirely. Um, yeah, it was Hemingway's thing, I think, is kill your darlings, um. Yeah. So it was, it's that. So if your character does, you know how your character would act, but you want the character to do something differently to how they would act. Was that the point? Yeah. Well, they're saying that they want a particular plot line, but they also want their character, they, their character, the way they've built them, would make a particular decision that wouldn't lead to the plot line they want. And, oh, uh, yeah. At that point, you need to go back and change things, or you have to commit to yeah. the fact that your character has now uh, changed the plot line. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, put them in some situation where they can't do what they really want to. Maybe they're maybe they owe a debt to someone. Maybe they physically are unable to do it because of equipment concerns, or they don't. You know, just something like that. Think about why. You know, just think of little things that you could do. Put obstacles in the way, yeah. or um, maybe just uh, I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff you can do. Um, it's, also like, it's best not to just get too tied to like a, a really really intricately planned out plot like unless you're it's good to have the end point to aim toward but your approach to the end point should be more flexible because your character will develop as you're writing it yeah, one your one characters say... can take on their own life and their own sort of decision making habits and then if you need to get to the end scene that you have in mind fine but you can approach that in multiple ways and you know if you are forcing your character to act out of character to get to the end point then definitely rewrite something the plot line is downstream from the characters, in a sense. Uh, it's mm -hmm. going to be dependent on what your characters value, so it needs to be more malleable than they do. Uh, but uh, you know, but obviously, if you really, really want that plot line, then yeah, you're going to have to go back and change things about the character. Uh, why do you say Mister Incredible peaked in the sequel? Who said that? I don't think anybody said that. <laughs> Uh, this is the same guy who says I'm doing my I am at three praise any day, so I'm assuming it's a meme. Why can't you guys use Kappa faces? How am I supposed to know these things? It's true. Uh, has anyone seen the Maze Runner movies? Love you all. Yes. I know of them, but I've never seen them. One of them. I How many are there? Two, I three? I think there's three. three. And I might yeah. even have seen all of them, but there's those one of those films that you sort of you see without really remembering. Um, the first one was kind of interesting, I think, up until about the three-quarter way mark. And then after that, it becomes The Hunger Games, but with more running. Well, yeah, because that was the era of the young adult, like, adaptation, like, film adaptations. Hmm. Where you've got the dystopia and some, like, high concept. Yeah. That, like, because that was Divergent as well. That oh, was God, yeah, those were one of <laughs> I tried watching I one of those ones. That was not a fun experience. I hear it was that those a fun experience. Pretty bad. They are. I, though they, I, hear, yeah. I hear that um, a lot of people think that like just inherently like that 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 series isn't that good. Like even the books. Whereas I think Maze Runner. I don't know. I hear better things about it. I I I just I don't I know personally nothing about Maze Runner except I think I've seen the front cover of it. <laughs> I'm like, huh. Oh. I I I kind of like the first movie. I kind of hmm. like it. I like the high concepts, um, but I presume that it's kind of doesn't go very well from that point on. No, it has the like, problem where it has a really interesting mystery that it teases in the first film, or at least the first like two thirds of the first film. And its problems come when it tries to reveal the the truth right. behind that mystery, and then it becomes very very sort of. I mean, cliche is probably the, the 
Something yeah. Like. I guess um it's just you you you're not in the maze anymore. So like the the, the maze runner, that's that's over. There was no more maze and that was like the big that was the big sort of selling point of the story. And the big evil organization, I think, is called Wicked, which is a terrible yeah. name. For that yeah. Organization. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's Why would terrible. you name it that? Why the because fuck would you name it that? <laughs> just in case you needed to know that they're evil. It's like there was in Ratchet and Clank, there was a there was an organization called Thugs for Less. Like <laughs> they're obviously <laughs> bad guys, but it's a, it's a joke. It's not like a real real name for for an evil organization. Uh, an EFAP on my Sunday? That's it. I throw money at you. Jokes aside, do any of you remember your first video game? And if so, how well do you think it holds up today? I appreciate you all massively. My first video game, I, I'm not certain I... I can nail it down pretty darn close, but that's going way back. It would probably be either. Hmm. When my cousin brought his Nintendo 64, when he visited our family, he would he would bring that, which means it's very likely that it was Mario Kart 64. Or. Oh, it probably is Mario Kart 64. Hmm. That's probably what it was. Um, I think, yeah. And how well I'd do have you... to really give it some thought, but I think that's what it is. How well do you think that holds up today, Ray? Honestly, I haven't played it in so long, I couldn't tell you. I Fair enough. Remember, I prefer it to Mario Kart. What's the most recent one, 8? Yeah, 8. Okay, the most recent one. I actually like the old ones. The old ones are better. I disagree. <laughs> I, I like, like 64, but I don't think I don't think it holds up super duper well. Wow. I wouldn't be if I was going to guess that would be similar to what my guess is. Well, yeah, I mean, well, uh, hold up very well. in terms of controls and I guess it was just the technology was just so much less back then you know well it was, a bit like, it was less forgiving though the, the thing i had the problem i had with eight is the rubber banding is really obvious and the um the, the green shells which de facto home in on you which is very annoying and i think more obviously than they used to hmm? no, red green shells don't hone in red no 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 they, they do like the rebound no. for the green shells it absolutely i'm sure this is a no. thing like no. the, the random no. improbable <laughs> deflections that are guaranteed to hit you all the time i'm sure no. that didn't used to be a thing that sounds like something no. a bad player That's... would say oh no, i yes. genuinely know because like i again no. i prefer the older games just because your green shells will go randomly and these ones i'm sure i read online that that was a thing that's more common now than it used to be um, I mean, I, I have no context for any of this, really, because I haven't played any of Mario Kart 8, so I'm just like, hmm. I don't discount the possibility that I'm a shit Mario Kart player, but given I've played basically everyone since 64, I think I'm okay. I'm pro at Double Dash. Really... I'll Double Dash is, that, that is my favorite one. <laughs> Double Dash was okay. It's not one of my favorites, though. I think I have an immense fondness for the, the D at Mario Kart DS. Well, so... I I like the DS one, but it ain't as like. What's wrong with Double Dash? Dash? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. Uh, I guess yeah, I didn't like. Know. I guess I didn't really like the. I guess the driving in it just seemed weird for me. I don't know. I. That man. So many bad takes today. All right. Well. <laughs> yeah. So I was gonna say Double Dash is one of the best ones, excluding uh stuff like playing Tetris maybe or an arcade game that I may have played but kind of forgotten the first significant game that I played I think and remembered was Quake and Quake is fucking glorious I love Quake to this day I love Quake and I'm happy to play Quake whenever um that was a really good starting game it's funny as well because I didn't play Doom until like way later but uh Quake Quake is as someone just said Quake is legendary fucking cool game love it Good start. It introduced me to a lot of things real quick. What about what about you guys? Two left. Uh, I'm still trying to remember. Because my stepdad, when he moved in, had a SNES. 
but I don't, I think maybe we had the N64 by that point. The first one I think I remember playing was probably Banjo-Kazooie. Mm. But it's either that or Mario Kart. Those are the two sort of big ones I remember playing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Crash 2. Pretty sure that was the first game I played. Well, not bad starts for all of us. Nobody seemed to just randomly play something really bad. Like a kind of knock off weird game that was in some distant country or on holiday or something. I don't get in this. Well, I guess some better than others, of course. <laughs> uh, it defined forever our media tastes. Uh, enjoy your 20 minute power nap between streams? Yes. Took full advantage. Hey. Plenty of time. We had a whole night's worth of sleeping to do. Yes. It was fabulous. I want to say thank you all so much for all the great content these past few weeks. Love listening to all of you massives. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. No problemo. You know what? On that note, we'll probably get started, actually, on having a look-see at this this little episode here, because uh, you know, we could... Rings of power. We could keep going, but uh, like I said, Disparu will uh, arrive at any moment... Theoretically, and uh, that's possible for Shad as well. No guarantees, uh, unfortunately, for Shad. It's just that, to be fair, he's got he's got more than one stream to do today, uh, as do I, actually. So we uh, we do have, like I said, a cap, and that means that it'll just take us through to talking about rings of power straight away, which they let you. A them rings. You know, you we we. Our coverage of the previous episode, if you haven't seen it, it's probably worthwhile getting that first, because you get a lot of context for the things that are to come. This is the big fight episode. Lots of fighting happens, because we've set up several things. And you might think, like, oh, for the Southlands? And you're like, yeah. And then you're like, but not not the Numenorians. Like, no, no, Numenorians are well. Like, oh, but they just, they just left their dock. I don't, I don't know that. Correct. It might take them weeks to cross the ocean. That's where you'd be very incorrect. I don't Apparently. know why you'd be incorrect, but you would be. Just so we have an idea of what we're um we're in store for, is this the the officially ten out of ten episode that IGN gave it? This is yes. yes. This, uh, is this, this is the ten is out of ten episode from IGN. So now that we've established saying, this like, perfection, <laughs> I did see another one saying that this is the episode that redeemed Rings of Power. Like some guy who was oh. really cool on it, and he looked at this one and said, "Yeah, this is what we've been waiting for." So, um, <laughs> oh dear. I, I'm trying to think of like what that position would even look like. Like the person is like, you know what? Yeah, I kind of agree. It's not been so great, but would it be that they would be like loads of action, real cool action, dabbing and, cool. and arrows and also and twisting like, and gutting. Do you think the birth of Mount Doom uh, as, as it were, is, is like it's considered like this awesome, you know, like Galactus arriving in some Marvel movie. They're just like, oh. That's what makes the episode really good. Uh, something, something to consider, because uh, you know it's one of our favorite characters from the original trilogy, Mount Doom. He's a pretty cool guy. Mm-hmm. Big old oh, dude. Uh, <sighs> oh yeah. So well, yeah. I guess we'll just get started. There's no reason not not to, especially because there's uh, a lot to talk about when we get to the, the creation of that little little mountain. Um. Opening scene is is Adar. He's he's dropping some seeds into the ground, the soil, and covering them up. Uh, he's dropping some big fat pot seeds into the earth. He's feeling bad about the fact that a bunch of people are gonna die. He, mainly his orcs, because you know. Yeah, it's almost exclusively his orcs. It seems. Yeah, and you wonder about his uh, character exactly. What they are up to. You do wonder where they're going to take him in general, uh, for those who've seen this episode, or exactly what the plan is. But I suppose that's fine. And he's a very compelling character, you know. Uh, he has his, um, is it Lord Farquaad moment? He says, Some of you will <laughs> die, but that is a sacrifice I'm prepared to make. <laughs> he's like, but, but if you die now, then it means that you're dying for a homeland or something. Yeah, there you go. So it's something like that. I think you'd be proud and happy about. Um, I I wonder when we should sort of break down his plan. Like, is it when we find out exactly what the plan is, or you know, before he enacts the plan, we should go over it. I'm not sure because 
there's a lot to say in terms of the approach. It's funny as well because the watchtower was empty for a decent few days, right? Or at least close to one day, something hey, like that. I have no clue. How the elves long it's left, been. and then our elfman was like, "I'm gonna go check out the village with the the gunky the gunky cow came from that village, right?" You believe that? Yeah. Do you guys remember this? That's what set off Elfman to find the orcs, was the cow had black milk. It because it ate grass milk. from an area that was like... Chocolate grass. What the hell? Like, that's, that's what kicked all of that off. <laughs> that's, we got here because of a sick cow, yes. A cow that he could easily not have... That was Homer's cow, right? I think so. I think it was yes. Homer's cow. God. Explains a lot. You know, that is, that is quite an arc, actually. There's a lot of details there you could miss. Just each really when one But, um, yeah, the, the, so the, this watchtower, it's not necessarily that they want to get to the watchtower, though, because they, what they really want, as was stated in the previous episode, is that hilt. They really need it. And um, I guess they just knew it was in this village somewhere. That was the general information. And then at one point, it was discovered that the kid had it, because he stole it from Waldreg. Who I guess his his dad gave it to him and so on from all the way back when they were doing fights with Morgoth and stuff. Family heirloom. That, that's confusing. Is so he has it. It's passed down as an heirloom, but no one ever told him or indeed any of his ancestors what it was or how to use it. No. Well, is why that... would they? There was a big old statue that explains it in the Watchtower. Yeah, there's a big old statue that explains it. Plus, putting it in the keyhole up of the tower. That's it, that would, well, it, as we'll as we'll learn, doing that at any point in time wouldn't have accomplished anything. So I don't know why. We'll get there. We'll get to there. <laughs> is it a coincidence that that mural, whatever it is, is in the watchtower, or did they build the watchtower because around that because it was that? Um. Oh, we're getting to a chicken and an egg situation? Well, because there's a problem either way, obviously. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I would assume that... What would I assume? I don't know. Um, I don't... Yeah, I don't know. Occam's razor doesn't lead me anywhere. <laughs> it's today. like, well, what makes the most sense? What's the simplest? Like, what, it's like, what, what requires <laughs> the least amount of assumptions? Is like, I literally could not tell you. Well, the simplest if... explanation is just because. Is it? In the writer's perspective. Yeah, I mean, well, any other explanation requires that the writers put some thought into this rather than simply, well, that's just where it is, because uh, that's where we need it to be for the scene to happen. Well, so I would assume that the tower and the, I guess, the dam was built with that in mind, but by who would it be built by? Oh, like maybe the whole place was built by Sauron back in the day, and then the elves took over it, but they didn't realize what they'd taken over. Uh, except that it's said, it's established, you know, isn't it, by the, the weird little symbols that he leaves around, that the plan is in the event of Morgoth's retreat, then they fall back to Mordor. The men there sided with Morgoth, but it wasn't sort of the base of evil operations at that time. Um, I would, I would, and yeah, yeah I, I honestly, I don't know who the hell built the dam. That's an interesting question. Um, uh, I it must be they the built it. they've got the... Yeah, with the specific intention of uh, what it does, right? That was that was like their whole goal. Except they were like, "Oh no, you're gonna have to build a trench, though." Yeah, for this to, because that dam is built deliberately to have the the ability to release the water into a trench that's yet to be built to do the big thing we'll see later. In which case, it must have been built by the evil guys, but it must have been built by the evil guys a long time ago because otherwise the elves just would have. Totally spotted that happening, and now I say that it's a stupid argument because the elves <laughs> don't see anything. But <laughs> nope. I, uh, yeah, I they know. put little little blankies above it in the sun scorched, like annihilated wasteland, so you wouldn't have noticed it. But then, if the elves did build the tower around it deliberately, well, then they must know what it's for. Yeah, so and allowed it to remain. But who built the tower? The elves, I assumed, right? Yeah, the elves built towers around that area to sort of keep watch, but they built them, well, at least sort of law-wise, they built them after the war. So, like, but Minas Tirith, it begins as a watch Maybe they tower. found the tower there? 
and it was just like, oh, hey, we were going to put a tower around here. There's already one here. Let's use that. Oh, it's, what's this creepy lock? Oh, well. It's got an elvish name, though. Austerith is the tower's name. Um, so I think, the, I think the elves built it. Maybe they renamed it. It was called it was called Ooga Booga before, and they were like, no, Ooga Austerith. <laughs> It'll be, it's, it's, it's hard to know because it really does matter as to who built that tower because it tells us a little bit more about how the fuck any of this crazy shit works. But we'll chip away at that as we go on. Uh, he's just rousing up his orcs. It's like, we're gonna go kill. It's gonna be great. You guys get ready. And, uh, it like, it like kicks off straight away. He, um, he walks them right up to, uh, the wash tower. And, uh, it was, it was, it was pointed out by, by Rags when we were watching it straight away. Just, wow. One archer with one good shot just kills Adar right now. Which, uh, oh. Just walks in, no helmet. We have our elf who's been practicing for hundreds of years. I was like, man, you should have just shot this guy. This Check is out crazy, the commander yeah. right here. Yeah. Because uh, I think that's going to have a significant effect, surely. Like, all these orcs, they might be able to carry on the goals of this, of Adar. But but... Would, do they, do the orcs know about the sword? I'm not and sure, the, actually. They, like, they know they need it. They've been told they need the sword, but do they know to put it in the locky thingy and turn it? Yeah, so, hmm. Strange, um, but the thing is, it's it's almost like these characters are operating because of this way because they know the, the the reality of the situation, which is that the watchtower is entirely abandoned except for Elfman, uh, who's waiting. And we, the audience, are like, "What in the world? What is going on?" Oh my gosh! This what is his plan? plan? Yeah, yeah, very lost here, and they're all just piling in. But if you think about it, it's like, wait. As we were speculating from the previous episode, they did seem to mention or imply the falling of the watchtower. So, maybe that's his goal, to, to topple it. But then you're like, man, they had like a night or even hours to set this up. What is the nature of it going to be? And it's funny because this is like the first significant thing that happens in the episode, right? Like, you've barely even begun it. And uh, this, this is why this episode has a reputation, okay? But before we get to that... Uh, Adar spots the um the the statue whatever this is of the of the the hilt and I think many people have been asking it's like was he aware of this before he saw this or was this like something of a surprise to him I couldn't tell you it I almost seems like I a trap tell. well it just looks like when he looks at it he's like ooh and then they're like what? and and it's just like yeah this is where we put the sword like did you know that or did you not. It would be really weird if, if he didn't know that, but was still was dead plan? set on finding the know? sword. Yeah, well, what was yeah. he going to do once he got the sword? What was his whole motive for finding the sword if he didn't already know what to do with it and where? Well, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I find it all hard to track sometimes because it creates problems I don't even know that they realize exist if you do it this way, but... It really seems like had they not moved those vines, then maybe he wouldn't have noticed this was there. <laughs> just, just like, oh, I hope not. I hope this was all something he knew. But the thing is, as we'll go over, the plan feels fucking strange when you uh, put all the pieces together. Anyway, uh... just on the time question you mentioned, um, how long it's been and how long they've had, and the fact that yeah. we don't know. I, I think I forgot to mention like yesterday. There is actually the line in the show, I think in the previous episode, where the riders sort of give themselves that get out, where they're standing and they're looking over the, the wall of the tower and they see the orcs' torches in the distance. Oh. And he says, we have, we have days or maybe hours. And I kind of think, yeah, that's, that, that's <laughs> giving yourself a lot of leeway there. I was about to say, how do you go from maybe hours but also days? How does it... <laughs> it's just, I think that's just the, the uh, well, maybe it's not a conscious attempt, but it's, it's the way that you get around the fact that none of the timelines actually accord with each other. It's just to say, we may have N amount of time. We just don't tell you what <laughs> N is. If we it stay is just vague. extremely generous in the, uh, the prediction on how much time that is. If we stay vague Days. on every timeline, then it's like eventually it'll just be like, whatever the timeline has to be to make everything work, that's the one. How long does it take the Numenorians to arrive in Middle Earth? Days or or maybe hours. One of those. You know, one of the two will be the correct answer. Um, but yeah, Elf Elfman starts shooting. He's nailing a couple of these orcs, and all the other orcs are like, "Oh my goodness, we we didn't even. This is so unusual that, that they would attack us so meanly." And why you know, does he do that? Given that, that his whole plan is 
doesn't rely on him randomly shooting at orcs to let them know where he is before he actually does the thing he's there to do. I'm not actually sure. Uh, I'm trying to think of what benefit that could have. Maybe to convince the orcs to come toward him a little bit, to drag him a little bit close to the tower before he fucks it up? I don't know. I, I really don't, but uh, because he only kills like one or two and then he's like, all right, time for the fire arrow. And then as, you, as you say, why would he not have used one of these arrows to actually target the most important guy? I'm assuming he can see Adar in there. Yeah, and he should he should know how leadership works. Huh? So no, but he's got a better idea. This is yeah. We'll go nice and slow with this, <laughs> Dad, because this this was a thing. So this is a big old tower, and you can see it's like got wrappings around it of sorts. Looks like metal, like but also lamps. Rope. Yeah, he fires this. And it lands right here. And we're going to grant him the fire arrow thingy. We're just going to give you yeah. the fire arrow. Fine. You have a fire arrow. That was a thing. Definitely. So you've got your fire arrow. That's a this strong rope looking made... rope, right? Just that looks... rope is made out of sawdust. <laughs> yeah. The arrow, if you shot an arrow into a rope like that, it just, it seems like, yeah, it would, it would, it would uh, lower its integrity, but uh, uh, I don't think it's going to destroy it. And that's why the writers were like, ah, yes, but it's on fire. And it's like, fire Ooh. doesn't work that fast, <laughs> no matter how. This is elvish fire. Ah. The fieriest of fire yeah, that they really ever hot. fired. I, I would expect in this to have the arrow, the fire arrow hit the rope and then freeze it so that it shatters. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you would shoot it to, sh to freeze it, and then he shoots another arrow with a hammer on it to shatter it. That's how it would work. Gotta get that right, you know. And, uh, yeah, so it breaks it. Now, without knowing anything that happens in this episode, you might think to yourselves, well, what's that gonna do? Right? Because, like, it's, that's one strap. I don't even know what that strap was, exactly, but with that gone... Yeah, what is it doing? We see, we see the results. And that is... Uh, everything breaks. Um, why? It's all uh, of it falls um, apart. I don't understand. And the way that it falls apart is bizarre. Like, it's not like it... I, I would expect it to come loose, almost, and then just sort of fall, or, or just loosen up and lazily kind of just fall off of it in a Look, fairly non-ceremonious manner. But it springs it's just... off and it breaks and it flies off and it's a big thing. Like like there was a whole bunch of tension on it and yeah, I, I just so that's, I... Not the, that's, that's not the most crazy part though. Of I think what this is cause. it's just worth saying like whatever's happened to that tower's result of that is just it makes it seem like good god that was an incredible safety hazard. The fact that one rope was holding yeah. all of that together. Yeah, but um, and what, what holding it all together? What do you mean by that? You're telling me that the tower can't stand? Yeah. Well, it looks like it's already falling apart, but before we get to that, if you remember, uh, Elfman jumps down on the outside of the gate. Lucky for him, yeah. every orc went inside. There are none outside. I'm not even sure with what we saw that they oh, didn't fit. Even they though, though been remember, there was a, there's a line of orcs down the, the hill. Right. But, so, but there's none the, between I'm, the hill and here. Yeah, what I'm saying it? is that exactly. you'd, ha you'd have orcs at the entrance. They would ha he just well, jumped that. into a crowd of them. That's how that would have worked, but obviously we can't have that because they'd be in his way. Yeah. And so. if and if they're not, but in this would require a level of organization for there to be this big gap. Like, all right, this is a team. We go into the fort. This one, you sit on the pathway and hang out there. Because if they were just randomly around, then they'd be spread out fairly evenly, I think, along this pathway. Yeah. So we just have to sort of ignore that. That's a thing. Now you might be thinking to yourselves there in chat, like, what? What is he just going to run off? And it's like, well, no. If we crash the tower then we're going to have to trap them in there because they could just walk out, right? So he does this very genius thing here. He kicks that rock off the edge. It's got a chain attached to it. He pulls no the chain. And see see here, it's pulling this this plank or... Like, would you call that a plank of wood or is it just a big stick of wood? I, I, I call it a beam. A beam of wood, yeah. And it pulls it in the absolute perfect possible way. Because there's so many ways this could fuck up, trust me. And the doors get locked down I'll as a result you, of the weight. I'll, I'll, I'll trust you. Thank you. I'm, I'm an expert of, um, of wooden beam door closing scenarios. But, uh, does this violate any beam rules? I think it does. That's my opinion. Uh. I'm sticking to it. Uh, 
I'll try and show it again now. You have to be careful about that. Poppytisms, but uh, you'd think that you could have had maybe something else, some some two chains he could pull that close the doors uh, from the outside that look kind of inconspicuous when they first break in. Because this could just screw up in so many ways. As I said, it just, I, I, I kind of hate it. Uh, even from it's the... One of those situations where that you, you put your, again, you try and put yourself in the mind of, of the writers as they're creating this scene. And so they say, well, we want to have the tower fall on the orcs. And then they sit there probably for several hours. And this is what they come up. So what, uh, uh, well, somehow the, the tower is, is basically held together with gaffer tape. Yeah. And if we have it where he shoots some of the tape and the tape. Is Sam's breaks, gaffer? Did he make the tape? It could Because be. if it was his gaffer, it's probably going to be really sturdy because. And my yeah. old but gaffer. But it can't be too sturdy because it has to be immediately burned away by a single fire. And then the gaffer tape goes and then we have uh, a chain attached to a, a boulder, which is attached to a plank which locks the Beam. doors and how do you how does a sane person create this yeah how do you get like, to the I, end of that part of the script and say yeah that's good i want that it's it's one of those things where it's on that level of i get it but like i get it but i feel like we should have come up with something if, if, well, imagine if they put a big pool of oil at the front door entrance and the orcs even notice it and they're like, what the fuck? And it's like, careful. And then, you well, know, they only gets lit. They could put wine there. Oh, yeah. I would have believed Thick it wine. if... <laughs> Thick wine. No, that's too dangerous. We can't do that. <laughs> if Elfman would have jumped down, ran to the door and pulled it closed and then like wrapped a chain around it real quick that been or there was a beam ready to put down on the outside like hinges or something like that that would be more believable than this this is trying to be too stylistic and why are you bothering to shoot them they're gonna die in a second yeah, he decides he must shoot that one guy and it's just like okay i guess so why not i think it's just for cool factor like i guess so awesome dude He's very cool. But yeah, obviously the orcs can't figure out how any of that works, so they all just get themselves killed by trying to open the door the regular way. Um, then they're a little bit silly, you know. But yeah, uh, just an insane plan where none of it really should have worked. I don't see why it did. And uh, we eventually just discover that, yeah, he was the only dude. There was no backup dude to help him out. There was no real backup plan. And so you're like, so if, if they didn't go to the Orcs and they didn't stay in the Watchtower, where are the people then? We'll find that out soon enough. Before then, the tower is continuously splitting and blowing up. And even a part of the wood splinters off and just impales an Orc. It's just like, it's just, Jesus. It's very important that we got that shown. All because one bit of rope got burnt. The whole thing is falling apart. I just don't understand. I thought when they were setting it up that they would have to then remove several stones from like the side that's closer to the actual compound itself and replace it with like wood or something a lot less sturdy and then break that when they come in to, you know, like damage a whole half a portion of the lower levels of the tower to make it tilt or whatever. Not just that they all knew this whole time all you need to do is break a rope, and that destroys the whole tower. It's like, why? But then, yeah, because my, my first thought was, okay, well, maybe they had enough time to sort of, you know, sap the foundations out. Yeah. Um, and set it up this way. But I don't think they did, given that this is like the night after we just saw the last scene, so that that can't be a thing. So then you're sort of left to believe that the tower has always been like that, in which case you've got the one fail point and the whole thing comes down. And it's been like that for centuries, feasibly anyway. And then it gets to that one, and you guys have just finished with the final destination arc, haven't you? Or you're doing one. The, the, this whole scene with the um, all the falling stuff. Mm -hmm. That is that is uh, that the first thing that came to mind was just uh, it's it's either that or there's that bit in the Exorcist, is it, where the the like, the lightning rod comes off the top of the church and just randomly yeah. pales oh, no, wait. the dude. That's the omen, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it was, no, but that is. It oh. is the omen. Yeah, it, is, it omen. is. Yeah, I remember that. In both the old and the new version. I feel like I'm probably the only person who's seen the new vision, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, uh, Adar has his, like, goth mog moment, 
where uh you know the 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 trebuchet yeah. throws that big old boulder at him and he's like refuses to move i don't understand this like Waldrick is desperately like, please, sir, you know, you're gonna die, father, please don't do it. And he's like, straggles him. I just, I hate the portrayal of bad guys in shitty media. Like, of course Adar starts straggling him. You're like, why? Because he's angry. It's like, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> he's like, this is, he needs to be doing shit right now, Adar. But he's like, throws Waldrick to one side and then... Or, he really looks like he's going to leave, but yeah, the whole tower goes down. What a great plan. It really did work. And it's just it something that... doesn't they... look like he's stepped far enough away to avoid that. I don't think one step is enough to get out of range. Well, a lot of people are saying plot armor. Um, yes. It seems... <laughs> like... it, especially with how much they show Waldrig looking out for his bro, and being like, holy shit, dude, you gotta move, you gotta move, you're gonna die. And then he just doesn't move and doesn't die. Nope, he doesn't. Boy, yeah. this move was super, it was as effective as you could possibly, this is like when, this is one of those critical success yeah. kinds of crazy things that happens. It was more effective than you could have imagined. I was shocked that it was this effective. I was like, damn. And then I was like, wait a minute. You're showing all of our friendly villagers here. <laughs> Celebrating. It's like, was this, this was just an option the whole time. You could have just left. That's what you did. Then, are they just lighting torches there, or they, did they already have torches lit when all this was happening? Because if they already had any torches lit, all it would have taken is one orc scout to look which over they have and be like, to be sensible. Just hang oh, on they're all there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really stupid of them. But uh, we need lights because we're going to do a scene here. So there you go. Uh, hopefully that explains it to you. See, they're all holding the lanterns so that we can see them. But yeah. yeah. They're back in the village, and I think the ex the, the the subtitle is well the, the dialogue is like right quick everybody we got to get going we got to set up you know our defensive of this village we have and to we have to make ready now, the do, village. Um, do they have? How long have their torches been lit? These villagers. Why'd you say that, Rex? It's not very stealthy. Hmm. Interesting <laughs> thought you have there. Did you say it? <laughs> God damn it! It's cool. It, it was ages ago. It's fine. Don't yeah, worry. It was, that's, that's fine. It, was it, was, like, it probably was a long time ago. Everyone yeah, forgot. That's yeah. fine. It's it fine. Like, it was like a whole. It's, it's good that we both arrived at that same thought independent of each other. <laughs> that's all I'm glad to see. Interesting, indeed. I didn't that's even a good think of that when I first saw it. Yeah. No, I, it wasn't me. It was <laughs> little platoon. That was really good, Fringy. You had a really good there observation there. That's great. Um, but yeah, I, was, uh, I was more annoyed at the fact that they're preparing now to defend the village from the orcs when they come down and get them. And it's like, you could just keep running. But, yeah, just okay. keep going. Oh, and then it's over to the Numenorians. My favorite of plot lines. Yeah. I, I think? Um, do, you, do you guys have... Do you th I don't know if there's any of the four that I actually like, so... I don't like any of them. Which one do I hate the least? I think I might hate the Numenorian one the least, just because the city seems it's Galadriel, pretty. though. Ugh. Yeah, I know. That's the balancing act that we have to play. Uh, man, that's actually kind of tough. Um, kind of tough. I don't know. The which tunnel one I would was sort of fun yeah. when they were prisoners. I that was. That's Didn't the most joy that. I've gotten in this show was the fight at the end where they fight the warg and everything. I was I was I was laughing with joy. It was so hilarious. I um hey, I I I don't know how I could actually pick one cuz each of them have like a big sort of just huge asterisk where it's like no, but don't 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 forget like they're all They're more bad. asterisk than plot now. Yeah. Up until the last episode, I'd have said Elrond and Durin, but right. that one is that one has now pissed me off. So, um, well, the only thing they do in that plot line is establish yeah, that their my, relationship is on rocky ground for good reason, like I, constantly. I, they have there's at least there's like an ounce say, of personality there. I will say Elrond and Durin are my favorite plot line. I think it's because Durin is, in I I, I like Deza a bit. Hmm. 
And so there's a chance that we run into her in that plot line. And I don't hate Durin. He just fucking frustrates me because I know that there could be a character there. Um, And between him and his father, that was a that was actually a good scene. True. And when Elrond was talking about his father to Durin, that was that was good. It's just that all of these things are surrounded in muck well, let's and see. awfulness. Disparu, what do you reckon? Which plotline is the least rancid to you out of the four main ones? Being the Harfoots, the Numenorians, the Elfmen, and the, the humans against the Orcs, or uh, Elrond and Durin? Out of those four, which do you find the least piss? Uh, <laughs> it, it, it probably, actually, no matter how evil they are, be the Harfots because they've done the least. Like, there's least actions for them to have actually messed up. Um, I actively despise all of the rest. <laughs> That's my problem. I mean, the, the fact that they're cannibals is entertaining. I ain't gonna deny it. And their scenes are usually over pretty quick. Well, they just kind of move. Yeah, and they just kind of move around. And it's like, you just think, these are horrible people, but they, they've done literally nothing the entire series so far except move around and, like, Explained how they kill their friends, so they really haven't. Uh, this is this That's is part we were trying to talk about yeah. last uh, stream was how you you can you can try and defend them as being like oh it's just the one person saying take their wheels in a rash moment. It's like but there's no other characterization that we've had. So I mean, if anything, we've learned from previous episodes, it's more than that. It's the mockery of the dead, essentially. It's this. <laughs> yeah. It's this kind of how they're in universe. It's one of those bad writing elements where because of the bad writing, we have to assume that all of these Harfoots are compartmentalizing the deaths of friends and in this in this weird quasi religious ceremony of theirs. It's very strange. It's it's like the sort of thing that starts a plot and the characters learn about the evilness and they have to fight against it. But like they're um, like the community they're a part of, they talk about this like ritual and there's thing to it and they just don't quite understand it all until they're much older and then they realize we've been eating our own it's like yes satisfy the god there, there, there needs to be a harfoot skinned version of logan's run that i would watch yeah i'm on board we'll get there. i think wicker the man, harfoots wicker man vibes harfoots. from the harfoots <laughs> sacrificial man, yeah. ritual <laughs> i think Aztec the harfoots style. could have got away with it for sort of well we were doing what we must people would slow us down and <laughs> then everyone would die so we had to leave some people behind Right up until that woman said, we should just take their wheels and leave them. After that, there was no coming back. I, no would, I, I wouldn't do that. They didn't even think about helping them. There was not even anyone <laughs> yes, offering a suggestion to help them. Leaving, so this is the thing. There are tears of evil. Uh, leaving them behind is a little different than going over to them and taking, like, sabotaging, sabotaging them and then yeah. leaving them. It's like, oh, shit. All right. Because they could pretend to be good people who are just like, oh, I'm just so busy with my own stuff that I just can't save you if you fall behind, and that would suck. Oh, when you steal their wheels, it's like, okay, <laughs> you just hate me then. <laughs> you could have just been honest about it. It's like, yeah, well, you got a tall guy with you, and we're pretty sure he's causing all the mushrooms to not be a thing. He's <laughs> evil and dangerous, I guess. Yeah, why not? Even though he's the only even... reason you're alive. What and would he be the next you. step? That's like assume taking their wheels doesn't work and they somehow still keep up. Or they realize they don't actually need their caravan because they could just make another one. So they still manage to keep up. Like what's the next step if you really still want to get rid of them? I, Maybe I, they control I, the wolf. Yeah. Oh my god. Could you imagine? <laughs> they set the wolves on them. Sardox wolves. Oh, that'd be a great Very twist, well, actually. Release the hounds. Why not? Make him the main villain of season one. And, uh, oh, that that book he has? It's a fucking spell book. It yeah. has all the rituals and things to control the... Oh, man, wow. And while he, he, like, sets... Is, he sets an army of wolves on, on not Gandalf, and he's, like, defending everyone from them, and then uh, Nori has to get the dagger of of destiny and stab Sardok in the back. Like, she'll jump out of nowhere. She'll teleport and stab him right there. And, you're like, ah. and then he, like... Yeah, he melts, like, the... <laughs> <laughs> and Indiana Jones. And, and it releases all of the Harfords he's eaten in the past out of him as spirits. <laughs> they all go to Our heaven. Our souls are free! <laughs> 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 and see, that would be good. They would, there you go. There you we did go. it. Plot saved. We fixed it, everybody. You can have that now. one for free, Amazon. Joy. Uh, now, several people have been noting that the ship is indeed much bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. The, of course it is, because they couldn't possibly justify all of the stuff, the stuff they're taking with them otherwise. Uh, um, 
there is a meme that I've seen where like there's like seven layers of ship underneath the ship. Uh, it's quite amusing. But oh yeah, just so you know, we're uh, we're an hour in and we're only as far as uh, we we talked about the watchtower falling apart. Uh, Disparu, you missed that bit. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm I'm so upset. Though. Legendary part of the missed episode that falling over again. The ship. I still being want to know whether that inside. revealed the. The lock. Just a testament to Numenorean boatsmanship. Oh yeah, their shipwrights are—they're that good. They're a seafaring people. Have you seen the pictures people have been drawing on the boats of how they can fit everything in? <laughs> um, I have. Well, if, if one like of you want to, <laughs> if one want to link it, I can put it on screen if you want. Some people I really, really grab one real it. quick. Yeah, just let me know if you got one. I'll, I'll show the people. Because uh, I think it actually makes a lot of sense, you know, and it's it's one of those moments where you, know, you kind of head canning, but you know I think it's reasonable and uh, sort of helps you enjoy the show a bit more when you understand logistically how things work. <laughs> yeah, there. See, there you go. Yeah, the iceberg. Yeah, that's what I saw. Because like, yeah, a lot of people are confused. <laughs> I love the chit chat promenade. <laughs> Mithril-powered high-speed turbo engine. <laughs> Galadriel's room, that's a good touch, yeah. Plastic armor. Yeah, I don't see the problem at this point. There's probably an elevator in the uh, center there as well. The highly flammable wine. They need, like, a scoop on the front, though, so they can carve their way up any river, no matter how shallow it is. <laughs> it just pushes a path. Yeah, that high-speed turbo engine, it just blasts them through no matter the... <laughs> it's not even... Yeah, it's like all-terrain ship. <laughs> like, oh. That's great. So, yeah, we're on the, we're on the new Norian ship, and Isildur's walking around because he's bored, I guess. Uh, as he often is. And unfortunately for him, he bumps into Galadriel. A, a, an awful fate for any character in this show. Because she just can't wait to tell you how much she's better off, whatever way it may be. What is it this time, actually? It's something to do with her... She's able to see over the horizon, right? The oh, yeah, he's just, apparently he's she can see through solid eyes. She, um, he throws away an apple he's barely finished. It was annoying to see. All right, it's wasteful. He also that shared it with annoying. his horse in the preceding scene, which I thought was unhygienic, but what mm. do I know? He loves his horse, all right? He... Clearly. <laughs> I'm trying to get a good shot of this apple. Gosh, me. See, there you go. Look at that. Plenty of apple left. What is this guy doing? Terrible. Does he know is... that they have two less ships to store provisions now? Well, does that change literally anything? I don't think so. What we call magic Apparently at this not. point. Uh, but yeah, she says she can see land already. Um, this, the, yeah, sorry, this, you. this world isn't flat, right? It is, it is currently. It is flat. Yeah. Well, mm, I don't, I, mm. I, thought, I thought it turned spherical after the fall of Numenor. Yeah, the god turns the world round to punish them when they invade <laughs> Valinor, but this then world is how can is there be different. a sunset? Well, the sun, it, the, there it are, literally goes the, above and underneath. Yeah. So it still works in that way, but there's no sort of underside of the earth for it to light up when it's disappeared from the night sky. Uh, and no, but how can it go beneath the horizon if the world is flat? It's still a horizon if the world is flat. I mean, the world isn't unendingly flat, so there's an edge of it somewhere. Oh, like it's like a disc? Yeah, yeah, disc world. And, then and it goes under world. the edge of the disc on the other side? Yeah. It um, yeah. goes, goes around the bottom, comes What's on the up bottom the other end? Side. Bottom side, uh, rather. The void, I think, is the is just that this nothingness. Has anyone peeked there's, over there's, the side and looked at the void? I don't actually know where the edge of the world is in the Silmarillion. I don't know if they ever visit it, but the, the sun and the moon. Well, are NASA has a fleet of ships around it to make sure that no one ever goes there. <laughs> it's all a massive conspiracy. That's why you can't take pictures or no one. Ha there's no witnesses. <laughs> well, they do let you see it, but then they don't let you come back. Yeah. But the, yeah, the world the world should be flat at this point, but I don't think the show is going to do that. So assume for the sake of this that it's round. I I guess. I suppose, yeah. In which case, you can't see. The horizon's in the way. Your elf eyes can't see through the planet. It's just funny. Don't remind me of like good elf senses, considering everything we've seen in this season. It's like just just probably the opposite at this point. It'll make more sense. 
But, uh, Good elf senses do not include common sense. Something I thought was funny in this scene is that she asked him, uh, why'd you join? And he says, because like, I just wanted to get away. How disappointing uh, it would be to hear that as Galadriel if they could keep her in character for five seconds. That she believes this to be an incredibly important and righteous sort of act. And there's this guy who's like, eh, sort of here. Whatever. And yet, yeah, 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 I want to see the world, I guess. <laughs> Not even true. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get out of that amazing, glistening alabaster city. I don't know at what point the I just want to get away thing entered into his character, because that's not how he's introduced to us, and it's not his first drive and motive. He wants to go yeah, to West Yeah, it is Tudor, odd. He just he sort wants... of drops that going to the West bit. Hmm. Yeah. He just sort of the, disappears. There's a line when he says, like, I think I need to earn Doing it. I think it, yeah. there's a line, but now he just wants to get away in total. I, it was almost Who like... They'd written him as a sailor, and then they realized, no, we need him in the cavalry, so we need a reason for him to not to want to be a sailor anymore, and so they just <laughs> made something up. <laughs> we does, need him to switch branches. It comes across as just tangled up, because like, I was actually going to ask for a hand in terms of, like, maybe I've missed something. What is Isildur's character in this, exactly? He's, he's like a brash young guy who wants to go on a... Is it adventures he wants to go on, or is it something else going on? Well, again, it depends which episode you're asking about, because he changes yeah. <laughs> from time to time. His first, his first one is to go back. He has family ties to West Numenor, and it's not ever stated. I don't think exactly what those ties are, but he wants. You know, that's the thing. He hears, he hears the whispers, and it's calling to him. And then, then he wants to be a sailor and just wants to get away. So, though you, I don't, I just, I can't reconcile those two things at all. I think it just depends which episode you're watching, and then. Just go with whatever character they show you in that moment. Well, that's great. That's yeah. uh, super useful and fun. Yeah, I don't know. It's just This conversation with him and Galadriel, I was just thinking, like, if we were to rewrite it, what kind of interesting things can you dig out of it? And it's like, well, unfortunately, both of you suck. Like, there's not much for either of you to dig out of each other. I feel like this is almost filler. Um, I haven't even got much notes for it. Uh... No, it's only when the father appears. Yeah, but Lendil. Elder, she does go, you look like your father. I don't know if it's just me, but I don't think they look anything alike at all. I don't see no. see Lendil in his face at all, no. But whatever, I guess. It's a nice thing to say to somebody, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he says he, he was always told he looked more like his mother, mm. which is the setup then for the, the subsequent conversation. The, the, it, before he departs, though, the, he sees the sun rise over the ocean and seems awestruck by it. But this guy's a sailor. and how, Well, he was until two episodes ago. So... He must have. Why is this wowing? I mean, he must have um, seen this dozens of times. I don't know if anyone has the stream up, but VLC just provided me a horrifying Galadriel face. <laughs> oh. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Oh, God. It's, it's coming up to Halloween. <laughs> that, that's her true face. That, that's like the <laughs> orc beneath. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, it's recovering. We're all right. Yeah. Uh, uh, the best one of that was what we were covering Wonder Woman 84, the, the VLC. We had a whole army of VLC glitch faces. That was, uh, good shit. But yeah, um, the conversation between her and Elendil is, uh, I, if I remember, pretty uneventful except for the part where there's, like, so how'd the mum die? And he's like, um, most of my life I've looked east to see the sun rise. We're sailing into the dawn. It feels like the coming of night. And it's like dot, dot, dot. She drowned. And then Galadriel says, the sea is always right, lol. Yeah, that's, that's the, the meme I've seen everywhere, to be honest with you, because it's just like, why did... You don't think the writers considered that, right? Like, she drowned. The sea is always right, it's the thing we always say, and it's like, ah, oh, sounds like... Uh, it sounds, it sounds, it's, it's fine, it's fine, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> I mean, also, he's just like, things are feeling bad. That's foreboding, everyone, because this episode, kind of, the way it ends, kind of kind of justifies his feeling there, doesn't it? Very clever. They, they keep I doing that. I think when that. he answers, he kind of walks off first and then turns around like he forgot her entire question. <laughs> and this one, no, he's got to actually answer it, you realize. So I have him walk back. Finally, we've progressed from they forget each other's questions to they remember it really late. They're like, oh, no, 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 okay, yeah, 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 uh, she, she drowned. Uh, but yeah, how exciting. They're already near land. Like, wh I, mean, I remember asking um... Rags. I was just like, Dude, I thought this place was far away. Like, how does... Uh... Fuck is the timeline? They did say on the ship, didn't they? It will take us a day to sail to Middle Earth and another day's ride to reach the Southlands. No. 
It was Which a is... day up up the rivers and yeah. then a day's ride. So is that accurate? two days from this point? Yeah. No. <laughs> One day passes for the townspeople, but two days pass for them. Yeah, but then that gets. I bet you the writers would be like, "Well, but, but no, but it, it, some of the stuff we saw with the townspeople was from from earlier on, you know, uh, or later on rather." You, you know, what? just time is subjective. Uh, that's yeah, a Tolkien it could quote. Be days or it could be hours. That's established. So whenever they say days, just interpret it as the plot needs you to. Oh, and I thought it was funny as well. I think there's a line just like, "Signal the other ships, tell them to make haste," and I was just like, "Do." Not that that's somebody you do need to do that. It just it's just like it's not really a fleet, is it? It's not even. Uh, does three count as a fleet? I haven't no. checked my definitions. <laughs> it's uh, it's I'm not sure it's even big enough to be a squadron. I mean, it's that's uh, like a flotilla at best. Mm -hmm. Also, they have established that it's a day from Numenor to the shores of. Middle I think they do say it's a day from Middle Earth, from Numenor to the shores of Middle Earth, which gives us some idea of what Galadriel should have known when she jumped into the ocean and made to swim back because she got further than Numenor. Uh, they, like, she went past it to get to Valinor. So she must have known, and they, A, they've been standing on that ship for over a day in their full armor, and B, she must have known when she jumped in that it was more than a day's sailing to get back. Uh, so she would absolutely have died were yep. it not for incredible luck. Yep. Well, she even says that at one point. When, uh, when the first meets Muriel, she says, your captain saved us from certain death. Yeah, certain suicide. <laughs> that's well, what I was yeah. trying, but <laughs> that's what I mean. I, uh, it's, it's as though I think, I think the rise at that point would say, like, yeah, but Galadriel just, it, she just knew that it, 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 was, it was destiny, or, or some bullshit, because there's just, like, no way to explain that. Why would she just kill herself? That's just stupid. Yeah, it'd Ugh. be something like the, the feeling of the Valar or something sent her into the water. There you go, she yeah. had confidence in them. Let me get something pretty funny. Uh, we see good old Elfman is trying to destroy the sword hilt with a hammer. And he says, when he hits it a couple times, it is beyond our skill to destroy it. Like, oh, you tried a hammer, but like, there's probably a, there's probably a shit ton of other things you could try. Probably some other people you could talk to. And then, of course, you don't even have to destroy it. You could just dig a really big hole in a distant part of the forest. That could be pretty good. Madness. Madness. Drop that would it never work. Or... But, uh, no, it's, it's just, it keeps, keeps hitting it with a hammer. It's like, oh. And, and I'm starting to wonder, I was like, what is this thing made of? Like, this is magic something it, or other. Is there a mithril the hammer special, that would break it? You know? You know? I, I believe the ring is super duper Oh, the ring, definitely, yeah. break it. And now I'm like, okay, I guess this is unbreakable too, which is weird because it's clearly broken. Is that its normal state that it doesn't even have a blade, or is this a broken version of it of what it was before? I don't know. My guess is my guess is it's built like that as a disguise because there's the, there is the secret way to of course reform the blade when you use blood, but no one who doesn't know what it's already for would look at the broken hilt and think that it's any more significant than it is. But that might be me doing work on the writer's behalf because. The, the One Ring, my assumption was like it's part of the creation of it and like spell casting that it's like can only be destroyed in the fires of what created it. It's like, oh, that lines up, yeah, especially for fantasy stuff. This thing is just like, is it it's just equally as indestructible and you have to throw it into Mount Doom as well? It's, and then it's just so like you're argue, diminishing it a little bit. But there's no Mount Doom to throw it into yet. There is. It's just quiet right now, right? No action. Dormant. Filling out. Okay. Because it has similar effects, it, it, it changes the emotions of the wielder, he wants to use it, it makes him feel powerful and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, they could say, well, he didn't exactly, he tried to make a ring fails, but this is sort of um, on his way to learning the power. I guess so. Uh, just like, because I had no idea, by the way, because the thing, I, I didn't know a lot about anything about the show, but when they introduced the sword hill, I had no fucking clue this is what it was going to be about. No, mm. I thought it was going to be um, another Wheel of Time, sort of, well, pinching from Wheel of Time, because there's the dagger in that, isn't there, which corrupts someone, turns them evil, and then that becomes like a, he becomes, in a sense, the MacGuffin, or the, the point of the plot. I just assumed that the dagger would corrupt, what's his name, Theo, is, it, is that his name, the kid who can't act? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, mm -hmm. he would commit some vast betrayal or something, or they'd have to heal him, and then they'd discover what the dagger was, but I didn't know. I mean, I think it's safe to say I don't think anybody predicted what the dagger would actually end up doing. No. No. And I'm assuming there's, there's nothing that they've drawn from the source for that. 
sort of sword in a thing opens up. Oh no, 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 this is this is all bollocks. Like none, none of this actually exists. Are they allowed Mordor to say this? Then because it's it's that they they can't contradict it. It's not that they can't just make shit up, right? Uh, well, I think they can just make shit up. Um, no, sorry, what I'm saying they is can... they're not allowed to contradict. They are allowed to make shit up. Uh, no, I think they're allowed to contradict as well, given that so much of what they make <laughs> up is is contradictory. So from their POV not, question mark, because I think that what they they think because they got haven't they got people legally keeping an eye on them for they're not allowed to step too far out of line for certain things. They're not allowed to utilize any material from the book they don't have the rights to. So they can't trespass on it by... They, they can't depict what happens in the Silmarillion because they don't have the rights to it. Okay. But they can tell an alternative story to the Silmarillion, and by definition, that's going to have to contradict. But given that they've, you know, they've condensed 3,000 years of history, Mordor is, is never like this in the book, um, the dagger doesn't exist, Galadriel isn't who she is, Elrond isn't even alive at this point... Um, yeah, it's it is. I'd say no, it's contradictory, but they're allowed to do it because they're not trespassing on the rights question by doing so. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's really what the estate will let them get away with is what mm. they can do because they've said in about previous things. Well, this wasn't mentioned that it didn't happen, therefore we thought it gave us license to actually do it. So <laughs> they're definitely not concerned about making stuff up. And I, I think the sword hilt was just their version of the ring for this because so many of the other characters and things are just mimicry of uh, what happened in Lord of the Rings. They thought, well, you know. It's not thing without the hobbits. It's not something without a, a, yeah. an attempted fake Aragorn. This is a fake ring. Yeah, the, and uh, there's a couple of lines they they steal as well for just like mm -hmm. different. It's just like they just really want to evoke uh, Lord of the Rings movies and and of course the books. They're just like, you like this, don't you? And you're like, I don't like you though. Mm -hmm. It's different. <laughs> uh, so yeah, she's back to being full on leader again. Uh, I just thought that was funny, right? Because I know that. You can have moments of despair, but it's just it's just for the fact that she had this big public breakdown of how we're all gonna die, we're all evil, it's all over, to now be back to like, alright, everyone listen to exactly what I say. It's like, okay. I feel like Elfman should be leading at this point. Well, he gave the better speech of the two of them. He did. And he's the, the, the most sort of uh, consistent of them, and the most one with the most sort of leadership qualities. But and skill. I guess in universe, I mean, if the people are still sort of skeptical of the um of the elves, maybe they wouldn't trust him. But but they trust her by gum. <laughs> like okay, <laughs> uh, I and guess isn't so. Isn't he kind of in the lead anyway? I mean, he handled the tower thing on his own. On this, he's the one behind all the military strategy. He's the one that will be telling them to fill in the holes, set up things here. This is going to be our plan for the battle. That's basically the leader. What she actually, what does she actually do of leadership in this whole episode? I don't even know. Yeah, I think you're right. Like she sort of just agrees with what are his plans. And by the way, I already wanted them not to do this. I wanted them to fucking leave. But when I found out, it's like, yes, fill the holes. That's gonna be one of our major jobs. It's like, guys, this is not a good place to just. This is just a bad place to defend. You, you <laughs> couldn't be more exposed. <laughs> They just put some wood on it in the end. <laughs> yeah, it's bullshit! Like, look at this huge hole they're trying to fill with soil, and there's many of these. And, like, all you need is one of the digger orcs to fuck it all up really quickly, and that's it. But even that wasn't consistent, because it, was it the digger orcs, or was it the slaves? Because if they had the digger orcs, they didn't need the slaves, and if they had the slaves, they didn't need the digger orcs. As has been uh, highlighted... Why, if you're desperately willing to defend a village, were you not willing to defend the Watchtower? Mm, yeah, especially is... when the Watchtower has, like, this really good choke point they got across the bridge. Yes. Oh, no, the, vill like, the village has the bridge choke point as well, but mm, their actual uh, plan... It's, as, it's not necessary to follow through it. You can go around it, you can go... It, it, the left and right of it, I think, is like a little pool. It's like... It's, it's, uh, you know. yeah, so, no, like, but that doesn't work. Has... Like their own mm -hmm. battle strategy is, as they lay it out for the defense of the village, is that we will wait for all the orcs to cross the bridge. So they, they know that they're going to cross the bridge. The bridge is, is the only route in, route in. The orcs don't like, can't stand water anyway, so they can't ford the stream or anything like that. They could go around it, but they don't choose to do that. Obviously, the sensible thing to do is you surround the village and you starve them out because you know they've got no food, but fuck that, that's sensible. But the, 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 the bridge still serves as the choke point. They identify it when they're explaining their plan. It's just that their plan is to let the orcs all cross the choke point before they engage them. So it's well, not yeah, a I was gonna say, point anymore. Uh, even if the orcs just can't touch water uh, 100%, um, 
they could still there's this forest on the left and right sides there's all the holes they've dug like i don't believe for a second that these coverings are stopping them from using these holes like i just don't and no. the first wave is mostly humans anyway who would also have none that. of those issues and, and they you know have, should have the sense to actually like detect a plan and go around it They've told us that they have a whole day to set this up, and it's like, why didn't the orcs attack you at night when, yeah, they, they were hit, like, the tower hit a bunch of them, but that was what, like, a, not even that many of them at all. That was, like, a quarter at most, even that, probably not. So wouldn't Adar just be like, all right, everybody, go to get them in the village? <laughs> like, that's the next thing we're doing tonight. Because it, it's like they're implying the walk to the watchtower and the tower falling on them cost them the entire night. Like, well, that honestly probably yeah. took about 20 minutes, actually. <laughs> And he has up to, you know, probably a couple of thousand orcs. Would you yeah. not have sent some to the village at the same time? And then just in case they've headed back there or there are some stragglers, just to make sure? And what's crazy is that they had this whole day to prepare, but they had no reason to think they had this day to prepare uh, until they, the day started up, I mean. Like, the orcs could easily have just come down and started attacking them, but they all treated as though, nope, they won't attack us until next night. And it's like, oh, how'd you know that? We are at the section where they are preparing for... Okay, okay, I see. Also, hi, Pex. Your internet went hi. flee me, huh? Oh, that's all right. Okay, yeah, we um, pretty much went through all of the problems of them defending the village and setting up the village, and yeah. That we, it's we... <laughs> not really a defensive place by any stretch of the imagination. There's no walls, fortifications, ways to funnel the enemy into certain directions. When they just decide their tavern like is now going to be their, um, their Alamo, essentially. Which is okay. Um, um, it just, I, I guess... just don't know why we're not running away. Yeah, you should be running away and getting help. The fact that you were able to do that kind of damage probably bought you any time that you might need to get away that would have been the the story is like oh if we if we leave then they'll catch up to us you know they can only move at night but they can move way faster yeah and so, they could have said like the watchtower will be the best chance down. we have of a fortification to defend so either we run and they eventually catch up or we risk that rather or we choose now to stand and fight that's an actual choice right there yes but i mean the, the show really wants to have its helms deep moment and there's so many overt callbacks including like camera work and slow-mo shots and everything to helms deep in this episode but that one is actually set up properly because they they address this exact question when they're under siege and aragon says is there any other way for the women and children to get out of the caves and it's explained that well there is there is one route out but you know it's too tight it's too narrow it's too slow and the Urukai will catch them up and murder them all and it's established that you can't just run away behind yourself because, you know, you are at the Hornberg and behind the Hornberg is just mountains. So that works. Whereas in this one, it's voluntarily picking a random building in the middle of nowhere with a clear path behind you, a forest you can run into. But no, it's going to be, this will be our keep, as she says. Um, uh, you can choose agree. this position. Yeah. And by the way, one where thing are they... that go ahead. One thing that bothers me is that when we see from a long distance the location of the watchtower, I just don't believe you can all make it up there. You're if you have someone who's old or even somewhat elderly, that looks like a very you, it looks like you're climbing up a very very oh, harsh they're, mountain. They don't like the half foot, so they help their elderly get up there. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Um I don't know if there's an answer for this. Where are they getting all of their uh Warfare resources from they have shit tons of arrows, and I know that it's... you're supposed to think they just made them in a that, day. Like, there was that very brief scene of like making a few swords and a few arrows. That's where all this is meant to have come from. They've got shit Make tons. A day. This is a, a day's labor. You know, you've got enough uh, arrows and everything to fortify a town. That's why you don't keep it handy because you know you can just make it in a day anyway. Yeah, they all know how to do it. I guess. Well, whatever. Yeah, it's just because otherwise like, they well, should they have just... taken this to the tower if they'd had them yeah. before. You'd think. There's so many things they You'd should think a lot have of done. Things. Oh man, Rags, look at this image. They're setting it up. When... This is what we call Chekhov's explosion cart. Oh, that that's where it all kicks off. We when they got to like the beginning of that whole fight, and as soon as action happens, it just it just shits itself immediately. It's funny. You can always rely on him for it. Um yeah, there we see Homer is still alive and well, holding his little spear there. Going to be interesting he's to see him. To defend, get involved. yeah, he's uh, he's he's ready to defend his people. Yes. Uh, there's a really funny part where, even though I think Elfman is more inspiring than Lady, uh, he's like, 
Do you believe like do you believe we will make it through this? Or something like that. They all go, Yeah. And he goes, Do you believe we'll make it through this? And they go, Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so like, oh god, we all gonna die. <laughs> It's, uh, and why would I even bother suggesting, like, you guys remember that other movie, other three movies? There's some inspirational speeches in that one you could, you could say. Possibly considered remember. some of the greatest speeches of all time, but this is fine. This is, this is That's fine. All right. This is, this is really cool. I would, you know, I just feel like if I, especially if I was one of the guys who was like, you know, we should just run. We can come back later, but we got to run. We got to tell someone. We got to get an army, a fighting force. We just can't do it ourselves. We have, well, you know, women and old people and children with us. So we, we, we should probably, we're just not ready. I also, we are not warriors. We are farmers and, you know, craftsmen. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to believe in. And if I was a part of this society, I'd probably desperately be like, please, we should leave. Everyone, please. Oh, Why are you all so Mother. crazy? If I was a part of this society, I would have left years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Taught your own. Just be like this I'd be like, fuck these people. I'm out. We had a specific scene in the last episode saying strength isn't enough to fight orcs. You need military strategy. You have to be agile. Know what you're doing. Uh, or, like, it... These aren't just yeah, you don't don't, don't worry about your arms though. Could fight. Yeah, I was gonna say they don't need arms. We know that they got feet, so that's step one. Yeah. Step one is moving them in the right directions. You know, yeah, and they like they really hype up the orcs, and then you've got this, which makes them look absolutely pathetic because people just farmers with no training can beat them. So this fucking dumbass shit happens. He's like, Mum, remember when I used to have nightmares? What did you tell me? And she was like, oh, I remember. When you when you would come to me as a child and be like, having bad dreams, I saw a spooky gremlin, blah, blah, blah. She'll, she'll say to him, in the end, this shadow is a small and passing thing. There is light and high beauty forever beyond its reach. Find the light and the shadow will not find you. Like, what? <laughs> you Mommy, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> I love the idea she tells this to like a five-year-old. They're just like, uh... Anyway, it was a spooky actually, gremlin. He was um, um, it's, it's not real. It's fine. Yeah, I think they it. actually pinched that line from Return of the King. I think the shadow is a small but passing thing is in is in Return of the King. But like this scene, I the first time I had the episode on, I just went and made a coffee. It's so so painfully cringy that I thought I might get cramp, and so I left. Mm. And I had to go and like suffer it when I was more prepared for it. There's a couple of those in this episode. Those sort of long, self-important, very very earnest speeches, which are just. You get a lot of those in this show. Yeah, it, it it's it's those are the things that let you know that this show is trying to be something that it simply isn't. It's so profound. What it wants you to think then? All flat on their face all the time. I I was so distracted by the idea that she told this fucking speech to a kid who had a bad dream all the time. That's so funny. You're insane. And where was this logic just last night? Where you were like, "We're all evil. We're all gonna die. It's fucked." <laughs> <laughs> I feel like she's had a change of heart. That was a long time ago. She's changed. Oh my. Yeah, and she was in a military fortress then. Now she's in a town with no defenses. She's far more confident. Yeah, that makes sense. <sighs> and then th doesn't she say something about like, the light in the darkness defeats the shadow? I'm like, no, that makes shadows. That's how shadows literally <laughs> work. <laughs> she would be like, shut the fuck up. I'm, I'm trying to be all fun and, and wistful. And you're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you go right ahead. Um, uh, so, uh, we get this wonderful payoff, where, uh, uh, she talks to Man- Man Elfman, who's like, remember the seeds from episode one? And it's legit, like, wait, what's the- oh yeah, the seed. Like, it's tradition for elves to plant a seed before a fight, because- and then she just says in response to that, new life in defiance of death. Um, <laughs> uh, no, uh. <laughs> Look, you're dead, but a tree. He told grows. you to say that. It just—it feels like such a huge jump, and he'd just be like, "Did you? Someone Did else you tell you that? that? Like, yeah, because yeah, <laughs> you don't even speak that way. Why would you? Oh, it's so. They just, they, yeah, I don't know how many times I can say they do not know how to write dialogue. Um, but I guess yeah, they they plant it together, and then they have a big old kiss. Uh, this is this is a long time coming. This relationship has been incredible. Absolutely, 
it's would... so well developed. I know why they love each other and how they met and what they see in one another. Mm -hmm. How long they've known each other, everything they share. It was a really emotionally impactful scene. Yeah, no, What's um... weird is that he's been here for 79 years, so like he would have known oh. about her as an infant. Oh. You know? <laughs> no. He would have watched her grow up. <laughs> there was a ticket clock. <laughs> No, that's I didn't even think about that. Why did you tell me that? <laughs> God damn it! I can't wait till she's old enough to fuck. Oh. <laughs> you know he was thinking it for. <laughs> he thought about it. Thought about it for years. He's like, "That's one hot baby." I can't. <laughs> oh, elves! I'm sorry, but what truly really... piss you put on blue? He was like, "Whoa, this she feels is different." The chosen, she is the protagonist. Uh, right, where are we here? Seeds define death. Oh. oh, yeah, he says one of the Valar watches over growing things and those who tend them. The rest we shall plant when the battle is over. A new garden. You, me, and Theo. I'm just thinking, like... Theo? That's the kid in it. I'm almost thankful yeah, that no, the fucking like, volcano like, explodes. No, no, Theo's got a... Theo ain't living with us like that. Yeah, well, he's uh, just he's just like, come on, we're gonna we're gonna get this. It's gonna be great. We're gonna win, and so leads us to the night. The orcs, they're coming. And so, can orcs not touch water at all? Was he, were you saying? Is it like acid to them or what? Yeah, they um, no sort of servant of Sauron can. They they all they have always hated the water, and it goes like right back. But he pours to... the water in his hand in the prison camp. Um, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it then. I don't care. Well, I was gonna say anyway. <laughs> if, if you look at this, right, like, then. there's clearly a way for them to get across this without going over the actual bridge. You know? Yeah, I mean, they could just go around. In theory, they are not supposed to be able to go into water. They hate the water. All evil things hate the water. It's why the Nazgul, you know, they they refuse to go into the river in um, Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, evil distrusts water. The water is into uh, Umwe, I think, is the, the Valor, who's always in the water, and they they've always hated it. But as you say, apparently the show kind of forgot that in the last couple of episodes. But they've remembered it now, so that's why they all have to go across the bridge. But there's I'm pretty sure I could jump that. ways in. <laughs> they don't have to go over the bridge. Also, there's not even water. There, and there's no. So they don't take advantage of them going over the bridge at all, anyway. Like there's nothing bottlenecking them on the bridge. Doesn't <laughs> yeah. doesn't. There's nothing to it. There's if no. We had the exploding Numenorean wine. Yeah. Ale. Oh yeah, yeah. Plant a whole bunch of casks underneath the bridge. Light them up. Boom. That would have been great. But like, the perfect time to attack them would be now. When they're just like two abreast, and you can have your entire village firing arrows at them, and they can't get past. Yeah, they uh, they war games. They don't do like they. They should probably start up that fire cart now, right? But um, oh, it wait, they, depends they... if their plan is to trap them. Then I guess they need to wait. Well, yeah, but that's, all over that plan's it. nowhere near as good as like trying to just. Oh yeah, it's dumb, but I guess with their plan in mind, I suppose they did it at the right time. Because I guess their plan was just to slightly inconvenience the orcs for a moment. Because yeah. the orc just like kicks it down and walks through. And that's that's that. real funny. We're gonna that get was, that. that also, was amusing. I'm just gonna swap us quick that. to Singapore because I'm getting all robots. I noticed it as well. Yeah. Feel of my internet having a tism, but if it's happening for everyone in we, Singapore, Singapore saves the day. This. Looks like it has. How do you Singapore? Singapore is like our. Grey Havens. Yeah. It's our undying land. Singapore. Sweet Singapore. Only the greatest of podcasters can go there one day. So they're coming across the bridge. Getting all spooky. One of the orcs are told to go and inspect the little area here. And it's like, oh god, what's gonna happen? And you know, it's just basic filmmaking stuff. We see the object, they're hiding behind the object. He's coming around, he's about to look. And then there's no one there. Where did Where'd she go? I, I'd be as confused as him. I don't blame the poor guy. He, made, he got done dirty. Yeah. He's uh, one of those situations where you're just like, what in the world are we dealing with? And he climbs up here and looks. Now, there's very, this is quite a field of view he would have here. So keep it in mind, uh, as we go, oh, so this is where they were. Now, they, they framed it in such a way that might fool you into thinking... That this made sense. It doesn't even come close to making sense. He would have seen those two the second he jumped on the little, uh, 
little thing, but they're pretending he didn't because the camera didn't see them yet. That's got to be one of the and most the common dumbass action time. things ever. If the ca if you're not on camera, you don't exist. Yep. Don't worry about the camera. Now he went up there to go check that, and so you're probably thinking like, yeah, if these guys have got a stealth kill him, then why didn't she like go around and try and slit his throat or just get a quick the worst attempt at a stealth kill? <laughs> well, so I was gonna say just right, the most lethal part of the body. <laughs> yeah. Chat, for those of you who aren't ready for this, look at this image. She's like, and she's got clearly got a Rawr! weapon in her hand. Where, where are we going with this? What's going to happen? Where are we? And yeah, she is screaming, by the way, which she really fucking shouldn't be. But okay, come on. Let's get this insta-kill. Where's it going? Oh, and... Um, fucking VLC flumed, but you can probably see what that was. Uh, she stabbed him in his foot. Yep. Um, My works are an existential threat to the world. I'm being told simultaneously. Look, he's fighting with his feet, so that's the most important part of the body. <laughs> oh yeah, that's Absolutely. right. Yeah, if you disable the feet, that's ba you've basically won. He has planted him like he's planted his roots, you could say. Now what will he do? I this was hilarious, and I can't believe they thought this was worthwhile. Like they would have filmed this. This whole scene, yeah. You you defined this action moment as her getting a free shot, and she chose to hit his toes. Arguably his foot. Like I just... She didn't even twist stab gut. No. Or stab twist gut. She didn't even do that. What that the advanced. fuck? I, I just it's it's incredible. And so yeah, she does that, and then he goes, Ooh That hurts. You know, so that's another big old that's sound. That's the exact sound that he made. Yeah. It's uncanny. And then uh <laughs> That wasn't predictable. Wait, he doesn't <laughs> even swing at her. And then that happens. I, me and Ryan are losing bitch. our shit with this already. It was so funny. <laughs> she this was hilarious. Started. We had he so just, much fun. He jumps down. It's like, I'm gonna kill you. Slice. And this woman is just dead now. <laughs> like, She's dead. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> Never mentioned again. Probably Never mentioned again. There's she... no horror at her death. There's no like expression that your friend was just killed next to you. It's again, it's, one, it's just like the Harfoot thing. A small community where everyone knows everybody and you grow up together and someone dies in front of you and you're like eh, you just don't even have a reaction to it whatever it's fine especially if the only reason that person died is because you stupidly stabbed the orc in the foot rather than exactly. killing exactly I mean, she is the reason this woman is dead what was she doing Should when have you stabbed her for in the, the head foot? moment why wasn't she doing anything she doesn't even have a weapon yeah, she was just like hi i'm here <laughs> that's great so he swings the torch at her and it doesn't work he swings his sword at her and she I don't know what that was, editing wise. And then she swings, and now he's yeah, dead. She's like a master fighter now. She's and... really good, especially considering she's fighting with a farming tool. And it's such a like, the choreography wise, like I swing and miss, you swing and hit, and now you win. It's like, oh. I would have thought you'd want to try and argue like she did something. Okay, I guess he's dead. Um, and the most bizarre part is she can now continue the plan. The stealth mission. And it's like, oh, did nobody no other orcs notice this? All the <laughs> the war cries and the, the, the swords clanging and stuff? No? Okay, that's fine. No. It's like it is it's absolutely entirely unnecessary. Like that entire thing changes nothing about what then follows. You could have It actually does damage. It. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes things make less sense. Our... I mean, our main character just doesn't give a fuck that this, I assume, friend of hers that she's protecting just got killed in front of her eyes and she has no reaction to it. In all of that, well, by the way, biggest... all of the orcs are now across the, uh, the bridge in that amount of time. There was, like, plenty to come. Then we have that crazy nonsense 30-second action scene and now all of them are across. It's like, oh, not bad. Um, and yeah, none of them have noticed this is happening. There's even a guy who's walking away from it. How he, he is so close to this thing that's just happened, but apparently he didn't hear anything. Nobody seems to be alerted by this giant flaming cart that just got started up as well. It's fine. It's fine. And then if it's established that the orcs have to go across the bridge, which it seems like the show has decided they do, why would you not have done that so the fiery cart hits like the entrance to the bridge before they get across and then sets the bridge on fire for a while? And then the orcs are kind of stuck. Yeah, no it seems like you'd knock out quite a few it. of them, yeah. That's sort of the point of a bridge as a choke point, is it's very tactically useful. But it's not tactically useful if your plan is to let them all get across it before you do anything. It's, 
Bottlenecking your enemies is a really good idea. It means so that... It's like they thought about it as if it was a map, and so the bridge is just the entrance to the map, but you can't do anything... <laughs> yeah, the you're not actually well, allowed to attack them, enter yeah. the battle they, zone. They could have designed this whole... All of this village was designed by these riders and everything. They could have just had it to where it's by a river, or where the bridge yeah. is like a substantial... It's big enough to hold all the orcs. Like, all of the terrain, it's only here because the riders and everything were like, yeah, this is fine place for it. You know what I just noticed? The body language of a lot of these enemies. They're very much in orc body language mode. You know, the way they walk and lumber around and stuff. When there's a reveal coming that I think wouldn't quite match that. Um, anyway. They crash the other side, so now they're trapped in this yeah, big old Yeah, that would have been a pit. subtle little hint. Because they're all little wearing detail. masks, or a lot of them are anyway. But uh, I have a feeling that when they were filming it, they probably were all orcs. Something, I, I get that impression too, honestly. But yeah, uh, they did this, and and what was weird at this point for me was that I immediately realized like so this this either it's a fuck up on the filming side of things or something because like this is nowhere near their their whole forces, nor should it be believed this is their whole forces. This is like a very small amount of orcs, so I would probably be stressed the fuck out right now as the leader because I'd be like, we've just trapped what looks to be a rather small amount actually of a fraction of their men. So we should be looking around, because I have a feeling any smart commander like Adar is probably going to have it so that they're going to attack us from other places while these guys are just like the, the fall guys almost. But nobody thinks about that. Why would they? No, uh, they don't. Why blatantly they? Small it's only a life or death situation, whatever. Don't spend time thinking about it a little bit. It's fine. You'll be fine. <sighs> you, got, you have arrows. <gasps> um, but yeah, so no, when we were watching this, uh, Rags, I think you, you were like... I mean, yeah, they've thrown a carriage on one side and the other, but it's wood. So if you're going to be killed, surely you'd be willing to kick some of this stuff, maybe, and yeah. even jump over Fire it. Fire is know. hot, sure. However, you can just jump over. It's not actually that mm -hmm. big of a deal to jump over a campfire. It, it's 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 quite a mundane thing, really. Um, you could just fight, especially if you realize that you there are archers popping up left and right. And you're clearly wrangled in this fire to lines. You can just you can just leave, really. You can just leave with you can just use your legs and leave. That's just how people watch. walk over hot coals, because it takes time for the heat transfer to apply to your skin. And so if you do it fast enough, it's it's not gonna be that big a deal. Especially when yeah. in the middle of one of these you can even see there's a big gap between the yeah. fire. Just jump through yeah, it. You can just leave. Well, so this you is... can just actually leave. It's a, 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 dare I say, a rare W. It's like a minor W among a huge L for the Wait, show. did you see that where that arrow went? I didn't actually. What, what was it? He's like aiming at the sky. <laughs> <laughs> the other, other thing is, if your entire strategy revolves on, you know, setting fire to your enemies, maybe, just a thought, I'm not going to be putting my archers on top of a thatched roof next to all of the fire. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually a really that's great point. Point. We did it, Patrick. We saved the town. But uh, you see this? There's a clear place for them to just escape already. But this oh, yeah. this Chad Orc is like, why don't I just it. kick this? It's do you know what I really like this because it reminds me of like in shitty media, and and I, I say this this is very harsh. It happens in video games a lot, right? Where it'll be like, you can't pass here because there's a log in the way. And it's like, but I can go over the log, and the game's like, no, you can't. Oh, oh, you went for a different uh, video um, game thing than I did. I, I thought you were going to say, I hate it in video games where if there's something on fire and you just like brush against it or walk over it, now you are on fire. I also hate that, yeah. Uh, it is very, it is one of my but, least favorite things. It's in Battlefield 1. As much as I love that game, I fucking hate how if you just, on the map, if there's a, there's a little bit of fire on the map and you sprint over it, you are now on fire. And you have to like prone and put yourself out. So you got this guy who's like, I could just kick this open, and then he does, and then they all get out. And it's like, oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> like, I just never would have thought you guys would have that level of intelligence because of this show. Um, but good for you, I guess. And the thing is, it's still a huge disadvantage because they can only get out from that small area, and you've still got a shit ton of archers all shooting that choke point, so... Yeah, there's, uh... And there's already not that many to begin with. We're looking like, what, 20 left? Uh, not really much. Uh, I'm probably underestimating that actually, but yeah. 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, probably 40. 
I mean, by the time they get the Sorry. next volley of arrows out, and they, there's not many archers left among them, but the big reason I'm trying to highlight this is that they are now preparing their battering ram, and it's like, guys... I'm sorry, but there's an archer. There's archers up here firing one arrow per, let's say, three seconds or so. Yeah, do um, that next. You, you're all gonna die. <laughs> like, it doesn't really. What? Well, so I was there, saying I to Rags. I appreciate your dedication to the craft, but uh, you gotta go. When watching this, it really felt like a video game where the enemies are all attacking this place. That if it if it breaks, then you lose, and that you're just trying to kill the enemy before they can do that. And the uh, as you put it, Rags, like it's like the building has a health bar and. For every hit with the ram, it goes down, it goes down, it goes down. We've all played these levels before, it always happens, but it doesn't really make sense in, in TV show world. Like, these guys are desperately trying to break in here, presumably to get the hilt, but it's just like, yeah, but if, if they get shot and killed, they got, you got to kill the archers first, guys. You have no chance otherwise. So, uh, this is just... It's like they watched, uh, like, a castle assault, and, and they, because, well, what happens first? Well, they always set the barricades on fire at first, then they get past that. Then they break through the keep gate, and like, well, we don't have walls, so we don't need to break through the gates. No, no, just do it anyway. So <laughs> the battering ram comes first, and then after the battering ram, that's when we kill the people. Yeah, it's like we could. These these rooftops are actually easy to get up on. We find that out very soon, actually, that they can just get up on them. So we should try that. But uh, yeah, they're trying to create tension here of like, oh gosh, if they if they break into the tavern, and I was just like, why don't they go to the tavern? Yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. And besides, the tavern people. Hopefully they have some spears, because the second that they even dent the wall, um, the, well, yeah, the five you remaining there orcs... With spears and sharp sticks to poke through the windows and poke yeah. through the door. Like, that's gonna, that's gonna provide a pretty decent amount of resistance. You would um, think, it's however... Otherwise they'd be sensible, <laughs> and I think all they did was they gave Theo alone, like, one kid, one spear, and he's the only person in that room with any kind of weapon. But then we get this Even shot. though there's, inside there were clearly, like, fighting age men. But before we progress, um... Why do they have such an investment in barricade or breaking down the door of the tavern? To get the hill. I already went over this just now. What the fuck? Oh, is, do they know the hilt is in the tavern? We know no. that that's their goal. They, they're trying to get that. Yeah, but they, do they, 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 they told know the that audience. It's in the tavern. They have to, well, they shouldn't, but the characters told the audience that the tavern was the keep. And because the audience knows, the orcs must know as well. So I was well. I was already fast forwarding to know. even if they know the hilts in there, they shouldn't be attacking the tavern yet, because it's just no. it's just doom. Because they're just going to get killed. You have to kill all the defenders. But like, yeah. if you look at this shot that comes soon after, it's like I feel like our numbers have grown now. The orcs, I mean. Um, and then it's like, oh, but they get flanked by uh, a whole bunch of people with spears and stuff, and then they Peasants. drop their. Uh, <laughs> They drop their battering ram, and it's like, but didn't they just... I thought that they were showing us that they'd been using... God, whatever, fine. I like how they set it down, they don't actually drop it. They just, like, set it down like they know it's a prop <laughs> they can't damage. Yeah. It's really fragile to be so expensive. <laughs> uh, but what's pretty cool about this moment, I will say, is that this, this crowd of people is led by Homer Simpson himself. He's getting right, yes, he's getting stuck Homer. in. Doing a great job. Un un Ironically, the character that I care about the twist. most in the series is this ho <laughs> is is Homer here stabbing an orc. He's not a fighter. He's not a warrior. He's just defending his people Mama with his and cow. his land. He's just doing his best. He just had a chocolate cow, and that was upsetting. Yeah, <laughs> the, he's just getting real stuck in. He's doing a great job, and the archers still fucking people up. And at this point, it's just like, have you guys won now? Surely it's over. Like there was really not that many of them left. But then oh. They are backstabbed, one of the archers, and it's like, oh, yeah, this, I'm surprised this didn't happen faster. This is an actual thing the enemies were doing, was sending more people up to get the archers from behind. It's like, god, timing, guys. If you'd done this a little bit earlier, you may have saved like a shit ton of your own orcs. And then I was thinking, is that what this is, or is this just one stray orc that decided to go up into the, into the rooftops? He just took it upon himself to, well, he was like, wow, know, we're idiots. We should I go get the something. archers. Yeah, we should have brought shields. I don't. I, uh... <laughs> oh, is this the moment? I think it is. Yeah, this is it. So uh, our elfman is trying to get this guy, this one guy in front of him. He seems to be winning. Suddenly, <laughs> a fucking <laughs> cenobite fires their hook chain at him from behind. Look at that legendary cenobite. throw. What he, an absolute mad lad. If you can see, yeah, that the, the, the amount of gap there is between Elfman's head and the actual like thing that he's wearing, they call it armor, I guess. To hook around that, 
the throw has to be perfect. That is incredibly difficult to get. But then it gets even they funnier. They should have had the hook go into him. That would have been, like, if he if it tugged on his leg or something, or his shoulder. Like, it's it's an orc throwing a hook at you well, to pull you. They physics. should have just done that. It would have shown him actually getting some... For a, for a no hook damage. throw, you're going to have to, like, dig that in your personally, right? You can't just toss it and it would do that to a human. Like, it's going to... Well, if you are if you hook it around him and then you pull, you know, depending on where it lands... Yeah, I think the, it, it, it would could drag and then, get yeah, into you. there's a chance. But anyway... Yeah, it could have gone in his, like, collarbone or something. Here or it are. hooks around his male or something. Something more believable this than that. Yeah, this was one of the many times me and Rags <laughs> had to pause because I lost my shit laughing at this, so... Yeah. <laughs> This is, before we even approach what happens next, this guy had all of the advantages, okay? This was great. Elfman was fighting some random dude, and you're there on the top of the roof, and you, you, you have, you, I, I assume you have a fucking pocket knife at least, something. You could have just stabbed him in the back, slit his throat. But instead you were like, no, it's time for the chain hook. That's, this, is my, this is my whole thing, I've trained so long, I'm gonna do it. And so it's like a two meter distance, looks like. He gets the perfect throw. Now what? You might think it in chat. Like, I guess he yanks him, and uh, whatever happens as a result of that is whatever happens. It's like, sure, all right. I think he's gonna go for it. Here he goes. He, y uh, <laughs> and all three of them fall down. I just, I don't understand what. <laughs> like, it's he, like it's, it's like Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> Is the, I feel like this is one of the few moments where I don't need to say anything. I just show you it. It's just so funny. He was really committed to pulling <laughs> that elf down. Yeah. You know his direction was like, there would be a bit of a tussle, you pull the chain, but you'll lose your footing and you'll and you'll fall. And he's and you just like he just throws himself off the roof. <laughs> was that good enough? And the director was like, Yes. Yes, it was. Yeah, it's fine. No one will notice. No, he. Not even. No one would notice. It's. It's. That's what I wanted. <laughs> that's good. Perfect. Now, did you, you got it? You know it. Did you grab this part? Uh, oh, it's so quick. This is. This is mm, why I enjoy Waller, this. Waller, we loved watching this so much. It's, this was so fun to watch. Yeah. Um. I'll do A B for this. Okay. Brought us joy. Okay, that's probably good enough as a selection. How many seconds is that? Two. Three. Four, five, gotten it close, but that should be copyright free. So yeah, falls off the little uh, little rooftop there, and then hits the ground. But uh, our chainman, look at him, he's getting back up straight away. There he is, and he just sort of leaves. Off he goes, out of out of frame. And you're like, oh, that's weird. He probably should just follow up and you know kill the elfman. And it's like, oh yeah, well. He is! He's back! It's just like, what was that? What What was, what's the, what? He's just like, I'm out of here, fuck this. No, I'm not, I'm back, here I go! <laughs> it's, uh... I don't know what would have been told to him when they were filming this that would make this make sense. I don't know what he's doing. Do you think it was like, I need to give Elfman a chance to sort of refocus? I think he realized he was in front of the camera. So he's like, I've got to come off at the left so I'm not blocking the camera's on oh, the side. You, you can you, see the moves. This would make some sense if, yeah, the, the original way they were supposed to film this is that the, the chainman falls off so far that he goes behind the camera, like you just said, and so then he can, we can imagine he rolled off way further, and now he's running back to hit yeah, Elman. Unfortunately, to back, yeah. we can see him, he's in front of the camera, so he gets up, r walks away, and then walks back in. I think that's it. And they just didn't care. Cause that, they just didn't care. That would actually perfectly explain this, because that is the kind of thing that a... Uh, that, you know that you do in filming right that that stuff makes sense but we have to not see him do this for that to make sense that's great i, I think uh, they're just so obsessed with it all being one cut they yeah know what that'll do we we don't want to all roll off again i think that's it yeah so you know we're doing great and uh by the way elfman already just staggering plot armor that's how you can tell he's an amazing warrior he doesn't plant his roots, Rags. He'll happily get thrown off the That's what training roof. does. The more, the more soldier training you get, the more plot armor. That's what it's for. It's to create plot armor around you. Well, did the chain disappear? I actually think it did. I was going to ask that myself. But, uh... 
You know, there's so much for them to keep track of. Can you really expect them to keep the chain going too? I don't think so. It pro it might not have even been a real chain, honestly. Probably isn't. There might not have ever been a chain. Not even a prop. It, it was all CGI. Oh, they make it so it flings over the other side of the roof. What? How? Oh, How? yeah, it, like, oh, it no. flies away. Oh, no, no, it, it is trailing them behind us. For oh, fuck, I can't tell. Oh, yeah, is no, it, it's on I don't him. even think yeah. it's a real... He's holding it's it. not even a real chain, is it? It's all CGI. There it is. It goes off to the right there. I think it's all CGI, and then I, I think we're supposed to believe... Oh, there it is on the floor, I think. Yeah, I think it's there. It survived. Exchange. All right, guys. No worries. Still got that chain. Uh... Oh, yeah, and then um, an enormous orc turns up. This all feels so disconnected from, like, the actual fight. Like, he's just, we want Elfman to have his all He's having his scene. own adventures. Yeah. Yeah, he's having his own little adventures over here. Because while this is all happening, you'd have thought by now that all the other orcs have been wiped out. Uh, you'd think, at the rate that we'd seen them being killed before. That's the thing, man. If you're able to fire that many arrows that fast and you have that big of a quiver, it's just like... Yeah, you'd be surprised how many you can kill. They made memes out of it with Legolas, okay? Killed a lot of Show people. makes me quiver. Ew. What? I mean, it just means to tremble. Yeah, I said ew. Am I not allowed my own opinion, Rags, really? I think it's a perfectly fine thing to have a, a shibi dog trembling in excitement, quivering in anticipation over what new scenes and adventures we have next in Amazon's Rings of Power. I think it'd be strange to do otherwise. I like that we, we stay true to the thing we've learned from covering so many bad movies and TV shows at this point. When the huge creature grabs your hero and they could break their neck or strangle them, break some bones, punch them to death, that's bad. You don't throw. want Throw! Yeah. yeah. Throw him away. Throw him around. It's, it's, it's so lame. <laughs> it's just like, yep, yeah, of course. That's exactly what would happen. Uh... I still don't know why this is the only <laughs> orc with no weapon. Yeah, he doesn't have a fucking knife. He could have won already, but no. This is the one orc that didn't bring a weapon because he is the weapon. Or he's the guy they could have given the biggest weapon to. And no. He is the weapon. He's he he took he's a black belt and belt and <laughs> orc jutsu. Well, that's great, Rags, but he just seems to throw people around. I don't even think orc jutsu is that what good. It's, it it isn't because they are orcs <laughs> and they're not they're not really great at anything. Oh, that's just the, cool that's flip, their though. word for throwing things. Uh, oh um, yeah, this is, a, is it. Always <laughs> makes me laugh when he does these flips. It, it's just... meant to be like um, some kind of Brazilian fighting dance move. Someone did name it on Twitter, but I forgot what it is. Really, like capoeira <laughs> fighting or something. Yeah. When he's like, I wanted to bring a lot of myself and my culture to the role, that's the sort of stuff he's talking about. I think oh. he's fighting with his feet, so it's consistent. Dude, <laughs> he does all these, like, so he's like, oh, look at, like, I, I, I'm just so fluid in how <laughs> I can do all this punch. stuff. And then he just takes the punch, look. It's like, <laughs> nice, dude. Like, <laughs> trying to sell me as this like character Wait, that can jump all around. Into it? Yeah, because he's preparing to give the sense that he was punched, right? So he needs to go forward and then go, whoa! Like, but because he's not actually punched, but it's so funny because it just when you slow it down, it looks like he's like, punch me, do it, yeah. He but does just sort of do all this. He just he just is, he gets <laughs> punched in the face. And uh, not very clever. Punch that hard from a dude like this, it's just like, man. Ow. Staying, staying conscious is going to be tough with that one, but yeah, sure, fine, it's possible. Surely the next move would be to punch him in the face again. No, it's to throw him. Which, funnily enough, you'd be like, what an idiot, but he does throw him pretty hard into a, you know, stone wall. But he's fine. fine. Do you remember when that happened to the the, the random girl in Moon Knight, and it, we were all just like, so she's dead. Like, <laughs> she gets, like, tossed by one of the monsters into a brick wall. Tom seems to think that you can throw a human being... Hard enough, like, throwing them through the air into, like, a brick wall, it's like, oh, man, oh, it winded me a little bit, yep. as opposed to shattering many bones. It's the, it's like the, it's the pugilist equivalent of when you get shot in, like, the shoulder. Yeah, yeah pretty much, where it's like, ah, you're good. 
Yeah, like I've even fine. seen those meme those meme formats where they'll show all the body parts and highlight. It's like if you're not a main character, you know, but if you're a main character, which parts you're allowed to be hidden? Shoulders usually one of them. I guess it's um. I think it's, uh, the human body is simultaneously very resistant to harm while also being very frail. And, yeah. like, throwing somebody Location, into your... location, location. Location is a big part of it. But it just seems that, um, it's almost because of movies. It's like you see people fly around because of wire work and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, yeah, I guess if you do just get thrown so hard that you go flying through the air and then you hit a brick wall that you're just going to be fine. And it's not going to destroy you. One force never killed anyone. Well, yeah, it it seems to be that people understand stabbing and shooting, but blunt force. It's like, oh yeah, hit them in the back of the head, knock them out, as opposed to much more like killing that. them. Well, it's one of it's my least favorite tropes where you you kick someone in the head or you hit them in the head when you want to pause them, put them in stasis until the next scene. Yeah, when in reality you you run a real good risk of uh, of either giving that person like permanent brain damage or killing them. Um, or, or it's like when, when people, in, they smash a bottle over their head, it's like, you're probably not going to smash the bottle, but you probably have probably seriously maimed that person. <laughs> like, you've, you've, you've done some, I don't know, just stop throwing characters into brick walls and then expecting them to be fine. Random, if it doesn't kill them, at the very least, they're not getting up for a while. Random, I don't even know if this counts, this would count as a physics question, I think. Um, if, when you hit someone with a bottle and it, doesn't smash versus does smash. Is there a sense of which one would do more damage to you? Um, I'm pretty sure that. Well, so you know, I'm pretty sure that they use breakaway like prop bottles for uh for films to make them smash. Sugar because glass, in reality, yeah. in reality, if you smack someone over the back of a head with a glass bottle, the bottle's probably not them. gonna. Yeah. Yeah. The, the bottle's probably not gonna crack, and it's probably gonna kill them. Yeah. Or, or at the very least. It's a real, a real possibility. My understanding is that I the think... force transfers to your head almost fully if it doesn't smash, right? But if it does smash, it's like dampened. Uh, yeah, I think. I, I yeah. mean, that's, I think. However, I think it... there's also the element of you have to be ha hit harder in the first place for it to have enough force to shatter or energy mm -hmm. to shatter the bottle. Well, well I don't know. I can see both. Uh, presumably, it's dependent on a lot of variables, right? Like not just the integrity. Oh yeah, the kind of bottle, where it hits on the bottle. Yeah. The thickness, the, the durability of the person Im yeah. themselves. I actually don't know the answer. I could see it making sense either way. Like I think you probably have why... to hit harder to break, but the break might dissipate the force. Well, so I'm... which one comes out in the end? I think it be... might just be a matter of... Because like, I think the reason why they use the breakaway like smash is because I think it just... It seems more impactful visually when it smashes, when in reality, yeah. I think if you hit someone... Don't... And then it thunked them, and then they they fell down. It, it would actually just be a lot more raw and scary uh, compared to when the bottle smashes. I think you're right. There's a there's a funnier element when the shards like go. Uh, uh, it's, yeah. it's uh, it makes me think yeah, of Pirates it, of the Caribbean like, where they hit uh, hit Jack in the first one. You remember the? It was kind of like um you know when people like smash chairs or smash something when they fling it into someone like when Bart smashes Homer over the head with a yeah. chair. It's Audio when it breaks. If it didn't yeah. break, it would it would be like really awkward. <laughs> that joke. <laughs> what was the reason why he did that? Again, isn't that something he, to do with? Uh, it's something to do with like his new potential dad, who he says like he's strong enough to have a chair broken over him or something. Oh uh, yeah, and then he just got home and <laughs> taken apart. <No. laughs> Which... Why the? <laughs> why did? Oh, that was, you remember, that was, uh, so that was the episode where, wasn't it at the aquarium, and then, like, Homer decides to be part, it's like the, what's it called, like, the big brother, like, where, like, some kid in need, and then they've got, like, an older father figure, and then, and then he yeah. meets, he meets Bart's one, and then it's like, for your information, I'm his father, and then the guy's like, his father, the drunken gambler? That's right, and who might you be? <laughs> it just gets punched in the face. <laughs> there were a lot of good jokes in that fight. He threw the starfish at him like a shuriken. The other guy caught him all, put him in a little tank. He's like, there you go, little fella. Shark immediately eats them. Yeah. And then the fight comes to an end when he punches Homer and he falls over. His back lands in the middle of a fire, uh, fire hydrant. <laughs> This is even more painful than it looks. <laughs> so many good jokes. True.
in like less than a minute. And it's good. I got home on screen when we were saying all that too. That's right. So really, it, it all it all came full circle. I'd, hopefully, he doesn't fall on a fire hydrant. Yeah, <laughs> that would be really sad. Or they, they, a they similarly even, cruel fate. Do you see? They give Homer the moment of like my people, they're dying, sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> it's just like really okay. <laughs> like, if you want to, he's the one who gets these moments, not like our not main character lady. or anything. Yeah. Not Lady or Elfman, no. I, I, I phase in and out no, of remembering. Their story's way more, I think their story's just way more insular. Like, the, the writers don't care that much about their relationship with the village. It's only about them and the son. That's it. Yeah, because the equivalent scene in Helm's Deep, it's Haldir, isn't it, who sees yeah. all the elves around him dying. But that has much more sort of tie-in with the world, because he's turned up with his elves, they are his people. And it's sort of symbolic of the, the fading of the elves as well. Whereas in this case, it's just, well, we kind of liked it when they did that in the Jackson film. How can we do that? How can we do that here? Uh, Homer. Bit, Homer's yeah. kind of a villager. So <laughs> we'll give it to him. We'll give it to Homer's Homer, kind of a villager. Yeah. I can believe they actually said, yeah, Homer's kind of a villager. He's the most significant <laughs> one because they've done nothing for the characterization of the entire village. It's a, unreal. I just do. around. I do just like that on the script it says Homer above every line of dialogue yep. that he has. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he gets thrown again, and then he just spots this little splinter of wood that he's like, ah, this is perfect. Stabs him in the leg with it. And he, he, keeps, he like stabs him over and over again. For some reason, the, this giant orc man is just like unable to attack him this whole time. He's just like, ah, I'm, I'm getting staggered by you hitting me with this twig. Oof. Ouchies. Oh no. Gets him in the back of his, I think it's like his ankle, I'm not sure. And then kicks him. God, do you remember Aragorn versus Lurtz? Sword. I was thinking Lurtz, yeah. That fucking it was is legendary. So better, yeah. He fucking oh, fires his shield great, into Aragorn, and you think for a second there, he's decapitated him. You're like, Jesus Christ. Well, again, <laughs> throws an actual real knife at the... Viggo Mortensen. So cool. <laughs> But then he gets, yeah. stabs it in his eye, and I remember watching this and being like, oh, you're probably not going to oh. die now. The, the elves Orkman, have this path Elfman. of, if, if your character, because in this, you, of course, you choose your class, but also your race. And the, the elves passive is that they could just randomly look around and find wood <laughs> to use as a weapon. Because yeah, you're right. Like it's the not... second or third time he's, just, he's spawned a twig, and the twig has been Saved incredibly his important to him. I, I really do think that would be one of the things, if you could have a conversation with the writers for the show, he's like, I need to sit you down. Twigs are not knives, okay? <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, I don't understand what's happening. If it was only stabbing him in the eye, okay, I'll give you that. Yeah, but it's yeah. like the leg and everything. I'm like, no, stop. I want to know what his thought process is for this. Just having a piggyback ride. I'm going to jump on you. I got gotcha. you. He's having <laughs> fun. And look at him, he's just holding on. He's not actually doing anything. Yeah, other people try and break the neck or something in this position, but he's just <laughs> hugging him. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah, so... He's trying to break the neck, but he has to look around gently. and find a twig first. <laughs> he's just like, let go, please. Get off! <laughs> this, is a, this is a fair fight. Uh, yeah, he no. forgets that he can just pull him off until this next bit. And he's like, oh, I remember, no. I'm big and strong. I guess I can do things. Uh, but yeah, I was really glad he didn't just toss him straight into the well. That would have been funny. I thought that's <laughs> what they were gonna do, and then but then I was like, oh, but what's gonna happen after that? That makes things awkward. But, by the way, that is the second time he's been harshly tossed into a very hard rock wall on the back, and he's like, ah, I'm alright. We're fine. Fine. I'm a protagonist. I fear no blunt force trauma. Well, not when he has his twig, right? That's that's how he knows he's safe. Do you think he's gonna get a twig shield too? He's a security twig. A twig shield. <laughs> um. Yeah, and then they have what I would could only describe as possibly the goriest thing in this entire show. Randomly. Yeah. Uh, it goes on forever. But I, I just, I didn't understand where they were, like, why, why did you want this moment? Mm -hmm. Basically, he yanks Be the twig out of his own eye. And he starts bleeding profusely out of it, and he just like he's just dribbling it all onto the elfman's mouth. And it goes on for quite a while as well. Yeah. It's not even a short thing. Like, my guess was that this is the Lurtz moment, you know, when Aragorn stabs him and he pulls himself along the sword. Oh, and that's the thing they were going be, for. Yeah. 
This is a parallel they're trying to make. Like, remember when Aragorn far, fought Lurtz? This is way as cool. So There's I, so uh, many other scenes, though, where the, like the, the connections of the sword with the person that are off camera, and you think, well, maybe they're doing that because they want to preserve an age range, or they said this was a family show. And then they put a scene like this in, you're like, this is not family friendly. <laughs> Because we have like three people getting cut on the neck with knives or something, and we don't see. And it's not even this part either. It's also when such and such gets uh, hit by an arrow later, and they're just like showing blood pouring out. I'm like, what are we doing? I just, they, they're not very consistent on it at all because they seem to try and avoid it, and then suddenly it's like, no, we're not avoiding it at all. And you're like, oh. Oh, okay. Right. Then, okay. Because I, I think Lord of the Rings has consistent gore. You know, like, um, one of the things that comes to mind, is it Aragorn or Boromir that chops the head off an orc in Moria and, like, you see a big blood fountain comes out? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's Aragorn, maybe. They might have avoided a blood fountain. Because I know that's why Lurts and stuff, there's no blood coming out of him because they had to get that PG-13 rating. And they had mentioned specifically that when Lurts gets chopped up, they don't have any blood coming out of him to avoid the rating. Interesting, because it's pretty quick. The uh, the one with the Aragorn where he kills it, and a yeah, lot of people assume that was if it's darker. Uh, yeah, that's it true. helps too. Uh, but they use leftover from uh, almost Peter Jackson's history of the more flattery horror movies he'd made as well, and it was just like a cool uh, aspect being mixed in. Because there's a lot of this, you know, a lot of the fights in Lord of the Rings they have like some pretty harsh stuff happening, but. Not quite like this. It's kind of hard for me to categorize, but look at that blood. It's just pouring out. It doesn't even look qu quite like it's doing it in a way that it would actually happen. It, it's chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, and, it gelatin. looks pretty bad. And yeah. they really wanted it to go into the elfman's mouth. Like, why? <laughs> yeah. He doesn't close it at any point. He's like, oh, chocolate. <laughs> it's just like that cow. Bonus of the scene. So weird, and, uh, I, yeah. Like I said, I just don't. I, just, I don't know who on on set was like, "We gotta do this. This is really good. We gotta do it like this." You're like, okay. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't I've die. Seen Fight Club, where there's blood that will pause over one of the guy's faces. I'm sure there's a scene like that in Fight Club, where Brad Pitt's on top of a guy and he bleeds all over him. Um, yes, I'm just trying yeah. to like um, inspiration scene wise. I don't know if there's a different director right? like. For, this uh, yeah yeah fight club rings of power there's, there's very little to choose between them but i don't know if there is a different director between i have a feeling they did swap directors at some point either this episode or the previous one maybe like part of it is just stylistic choice and sort of different inspiration but besides all the, the overt sort of jackson film callbacks i wouldn't be surprised if they were also looking at you know other things and saying well that was kind of a cool scene in, in fight club how, how can we make something equivalently sort of visceral and disgusting yeah and he just won't turn his head, by the way. That this this orc is like an inch away from stabbing Elfman through the eye, probably because he's like, "You stab my eye, you little bitch. Now I'm gonna get yours." And uh, it's crazy because if you turn your head, you can actually make it so that he will instead be putting it through something else, I guess. But at least you have your eye. Most people do that basically, like they try and protect their eyes, you know. Well, he could move his head. He could just move to the left and let exactly. this. You could also do that. You could also do that. There, there are these. This great. You can move your head, turn your head. This, just being human is cool. Because yeah, the moment he releases <laughs> his pressure, well. that's gonna hit the well. I, I just. There's no tension here when I know that he could be saving himself and he refuses to. It's just like that's weird. And I'm also just waiting for someone else to bail him out. Of which it does happen. Uh, I think stabbed. they just wanted this shot because it's renowned for making people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm. But look at this. He gets hit, and then he just has to bleed just a little bit more all over his teeth. <laughs> like, okay. Isn't that gr yeah. is it is it to gross out audiences, or is it just because they just like that's cool? Like, I, I assume it's yeah. Cool. We're a we're a mature show. We're like Game of Thrones. It's it's lady. Lady did oh, it. Titty though. Lady saved him. How did she even reach that high? I don't know, I mean, looking, <laughs> that's why they, they make it look this way. She had to, like, really get up there. Which probably wouldn't be at all how you would do it, right? Her leverage isn't too fantastic like that. You'd probably expect her to just try and stab him upward, if, if that makes sense, right? Like, from the back Why does she just stab him in the foot again? I mean, that seems to be... <laughs> <laughs> it's a special move. Go for the weak point. <laughs> the orcs actually have a, a glowing weak spot on their back. Yeah, like a Zelda boss or something. <laughs> or like a Star Fox enemy. So, um, that I think, is like, sort of 
it's it's close to the end of the fight. They did it. Everyone's like cheering and and hugging. They're like, we did it, everybody. We beat them. And uh, I'll I'll admit, I was like, all right, thank fuck. We're at the end. And then I looked at the time code and I was like, oh shit, we've got more than half an episode we're, left. We're oh Jesus. <laughs> Uh, there is a cool moment here where Elfman appreciates Homer's work. You are one of the best dudes here. Great guy. What are you doing? Excellent stuff. And uh, you you think like this is time for an elation, right? We've done amazing, right? And then Elfman realizes something. And I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, I I spoke with Rags at length about this. When we watched it. I was like, Yeah, didn't we already know this? Yes. I thought we already knew this. And so the realization was, is we've been fighting our own yeah. this whole time. We've been fighting the villagers. The villagers were sent in to attack us and we've attacked them and killed them. That is the realization. Go ahead. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, this should be a moment where there's not a... It's not like a... Uh, it, it, like we knew this was coming and now we're facing the fact that we had to kill people who used to be our friends it, and we already have issues with them so quickly turning against their own people i think uh yeah but well we've actually yeah, got like seven it, issues here all at once like first of all they were all orcs all we've been killing is orcs suddenly it's like no actually they were humans like yeah okay <laughs> like, i think th i think you did a, bit, a little bit of filming trickery there but that's fine you know whatever um, secondly, this implies, then, that all the people who went to swear fealty to the orcs were told by Adar, I'ma send you in to kill your own, bitches. And then they're like, oh. Maybe it's that whole blood pact, blood bond thing. Go kill him, Something. prove it, whatever. And turns out, not a single fucker of all of these were like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't actually want to, and not a single fucker was like, when I get here, I'm gonna take my shit off and go. I am actually on your team. I'm on your team. I'm on your team. I got information. I can help you out or try and sabotage the orcs or anything. It's like, nope. All of them committed. They all were fully committed to this course of action. They were like, I'm gonna die trying to kill my friends from the village. It's like, huh? Okay. And they must have known because it's not as though they've been sent as part of a much larger force. They've been sent in pretty much on their own as cannon fodder. With no support, yeah. They must have known that they were just cannon fodder and that they were yeah. certain to die. Which, given the whole reason they left the village in the first place was to survive, you might, and as you die, say, make yeah. them think, yeah, maybe maybe we're not going to go along with this. There's infinite ways out we could take. But no. You could have drama then, between the ones who stayed and the ones who came back. and Yeah. You could have but done things. It's, it's also not entirely clear whether... At least it wasn't. I, I haven't watched it for a couple of days, but when I saw it, it's like, is is the massive import in this scene? Oh shit, we've just killed the people that we used to call our friends, which I think it kind of wants you to think. Yes. Or is it that, oh shit, we realize we've just only killed a really small force of people we weren't expecting to have to kill, and actually all I, of the orcs are still out there. I think we have to go benefit of the doubt, and I think one of those makes more sense than the other. The one that makes more sense probably is, oh god, we've been killing people we knew from our village because mm -hmm. how the fuck didn't they figure out that this force was tiny? Like, just by the fact that it's tiny, compared to the, what they saw in terms of the, the huge horde. So, I don't know. But then surely, yeah, but that, that revelation then should be, in their minds, wouldn't that be more important? than well, remember... Just, okay, fine, the shock of killing your friends, but also, you've just come to realize that actually, it's A, it's a really tiny force, we seem to have won, but we must know we haven't won, because we haven't killed any of the orcs yet. Yeah, so I was actually no, going to say, say, you that are... for the next scene. You are correct, and incorrect at the same time because the show is both correct and incorrect in terms of what it's trying to portray right now it's that we're not okay. seeing them have this grand realization of how there's clearly more but we should be because mm -hmm. they clearly have behaved like this is the end of the fight when they shouldn't be they should be reforming and, and getting everything ready because there's nowhere near that they've killed enough but simultaneously they have the line of like oh, we've been killing our own but yeah they they didn't realize they'd be fighting their own apparently it's like Okay, you probably could have put two and two together on that one, but that's fine if you didn't. I, I, if I were a villager there, I'd be like, you guys probably shouldn't feel too bad. They were trying to kill us. Um, so, you know, like I, 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 I guess I wouldn't take it away from you. Corpses. But um, I gotta admit, four... were you gonna say sorry? They show you four different corpses just to make sure that you do realize that this isn't just like one human in the group; it's <laughs> like their entire town. And then they, yeah, they immediately go over to the next guy where they have to get an orc to go. You know. There are still orcs around, <laughs> so this entire thing yeah. is literally, you debate, what are they thinking? No, the, you don't even have to, the show tells you at which point they the, they actually realize what's going on, because they always get told about it. And Yeah, I just, I'm surprised nobody said, like, 
Yeah, I guess it's sad that we killed the people who were trying to murder us. I don't know. I guess. It's a shame that they decided to do that, I guess. And then maybe it would work if we'd had some history on some of these people. And but the thing is, they've killed any of the ones that had lines already. Like the kid, he he's already got killed. Waldrig has got a different plot thing to do, so he can't be here. So it's just like, there's just all these faceless fuckers who, I don't, like, I don't know who you are. It's like, yeah, but it will just accept the fact that it's sad. They used to be a part of a big old village. It's like, yeah, but the village was terrible. They were all extremely stupid. They keep making choices I don't understand. Yeah. You gay I cared more about the random people in the Shire and Fellowship than oh, I ever yeah. did about anyone in this village. You just never characterized anybody as having, like, lives and relationships. It was a boyhood friend, someone said in chat. It's like, if there was a line for that, I missed it. Oh, what, between, um, Theo and the dead kid in the other scene? No, uh, sorry, I thought they meant, because uh, they said it was her boyhood friend. Um, one, one of the bodies, but I, like I said, I, I didn't pick that up if that was... I missed that, I mean, I can see the friend relationship between the other two, but he's not on this scene, so no, that wouldn't make any sense. I, no, I, I didn't pick up on that either. But yeah, I, um, I was completely out of sync with the scene at this point. Like, they were like, how sad is this? And I was like... I don't know. I, mean, I, mean, I, I like I guess they chose to so. attack and they got killed. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. And, and and I think part of the component that's missing for me that the show probably thought was there was that they were forced to do this, which I don't agree with. They weren't really. They could have ran away. But they didn't know them, and I have to sympathize with why they did it. And none yeah. of those, you know, gets a check mark. So yeah, it just oh, we doesn't... saw from the head guy. It was like proposed to him, and it took about what five seconds to decide to kill his friend anyway from that yeah. same group. So we can only assume everyone else was the same. Well, and so that's the thing. If they're establishing in that scene, then that all of the ones that left to go and serve the orcs are like the bad descendants of the humans that served Morgoth, and they have like the bad juju in their heart, then it's just like, oh, I guess why would I care that they're dead then? They're all evil, apparently, according to you. They're like, what is the difference between them and the orcs, really? Like, if they just, they're gonna function exactly the same way. They have no, like, individual thought. They'll just do anything Adar says, and they're happy to kill their own friends. Like, why should I care? Mind you, it's a little difficult to episode, sympathize. Yeah, but they, they turn on a dime, though. I mean, the woman in the previous episode is like, yeah, no, stay, we'll live. Oh, no, maybe we're dicks. We should go and join them anyway. So I guess that they're different from the orcs in the sense that there is at least the question of, of volition <laughs> that comes into it, but... I don't know, I man. Know, How long did they think them. about it when they were offered the chance? They just leave the watchtower immediately. They're like, let's do it! Let's go join the orcs! Woo! <laughs> Woo, alright, even... yeah, this is a valid strategy that we... Does, does it even matter? Like, if someone's trying to kill you, and they're being forced, you're still going to defend yourself. Exactly. And so, you're morally justified in either situation. Yeah, it's just, you feel sad about it, because it's almost like the, the tragic element is, I wish I didn't have to kill you. Yeah, that's it's that's I think what that, the show is know, going for. Yeah. It just it just doesn't hit I me. Mean, just like oh, it absolutely doesn't hit. None of the components are in place to get me to sympathize. They then have their Shaku moment. Uh, you guys remember Shaku from Two Towers? Took a little tumble off the cliff. Yeah, where he's he's the I last orc remember. who's bleeding, and then he gets to tell us a little bit more about what happened to Aragorn to let the characters know. But this 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 orc dies. here says, um, wait, wait, what does this orc say actually? Um, I don't remember. He said that you all are very smelly people, and <laughs> I'm an orc. <laughs> yeah, it, it was and that something is the like greatest the... insult to be called smelly by an orc. It it, it was. I, I know he ends before he finishes the last word, and he's just literally just. You're all going to. I'm like, what did he mean? What could he possibly have meant? <laughs> going to what? The the like, going show. to what? Tell me, you bastard. Join our book club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they had apparently it's because they had Next to pay week the toll. We're reading Wuthering Heights. <laughs> yeah, they they had to pay the toll. Is something he said. Okay, so I guess he's referring to the whole Bloodborne thing. They have to. They got to kill you guys to join us. It's just like, oh my god, oh. stop telling me this. It makes me think they're horrible. <laughs> the fifth time. I, I it. is that what he meant? But I yeah. assume so. Yeah. Oh, because I. So they're in. They're not in, but they're in. You know? Um, yeah. Like, Waldreg, he had to kill a guy right there. But the others, apparently, are they're all suited up and ready to go. Well, imagine being an orc, where you're like, ah, uh, you know, you can't you join us just like on. that. And they're like, well, you gotta kill one of your friends to do it. Ah, oh, okay, so I'm gonna join the other orcs in attacking the village. I'm, I'm Functionally, I'm just, yeah, I'm just a part of you guys. It's yeah, like, you're, you're in the club. You're there. Officially, you made it. Nuh-uh. 
is that the only reason Baldrick wasn't sent back with them? Is that he's already done? I this? think so. Yeah, that so, was yeah. that was proof to Adar that he's uh, he's loyal. I, I think no. the other. So proof that means was... that uh, his idea, but Waldrug was given the he said when the. Surely, so he was, so Adar wasn't reserving Waldreg at this point to go and stick the thingy in the thingy? I think he was. No, he was, but he'd already proven his loyalty. When the tower falls, there's a moment where he runs up to Adar, and he could have just run off. And he says, no, you need to get out of here, you need to get out of here. So, so I think was that was him proving uh, extra yeah. loyalty. I read that as the blood thing, because he's proven himself, he's already, he's already paid the toll, as the orc has just established. Yeah. So he can then be held back, he doesn't need to pay it again by being sent into the village. Which is just very convenient because, of course, they need him to do the, the evil thing later. And so, uh, they get well, that flanked. Makes sense. They get flanked from all the other orcs, and they start getting hit with arrows. And I was just like, "Yeah, of course." This, I, this is what I mean when I, when I, uh, when was the last time we watched like a, a battle that was good? Well, I had the. And they could have done the this at any earlier, time. So. We had that what, doesn't sorry? count. Mm -hmm. What was the suggestion? What? He was watching Fellowship of the Ring. Oh, that definitely does. I'm oh, saying yeah, new yeah, stuff. No. <laughs> new stuff. Damn. Um, because man, um, I'm so bored of all these. Like, because it, it made me just. It just reminds me of um, Game of Thrones season eight, and I was like, oh god. Since then, has there been like, have there been a thing where we can watch it and go, that's not shit? Northman is probably one. Yeah, I still need to see that. That's my bad. I have to see that as well. Like it'd be, it'd be neat to have like a full on tactical defense of a thing and a, and a good oh yeah with stakes and you could you tell how the battle's going by the way that they execute the plan and where they go and stuff like that. There goes Homer. Just attack. Yeah. There he goes. Gone. A hero. Nothing. We've lost a hero today. The village is lesser for his loss. Two arrows in the back too. They had to, that's what they had to, that's what it would take to kill Homer. You had to shoot him in the back. He would have, he would have fucked them all up. Work treachery. He would have, he would have stabbed them one out, he would have made shish kebabs out of them all. And so, a whole bunch of arrows are coming in, and I will admit, the show does something pretty cool here. It, uh, it has a lady get hit with an arrow. I was like, ooh! Yes. yes. Yeah, this, this is cool right up until One the moment. Step to ruin. <laughs> well, I was, was going to say, they've done this a decent amount of times with the main characters. Like, there's a, there's a good reason that they'll get killed, and then they don't. And it's like, can you excuse me? Why she would you bait... She two arrows as well. But only gets hit by one. Or they forget about one. Oh, does she? Yeah, there's a first one. What, like, when she collapses to the floor, there's this, an audio cue of a first arrow. See, there you go. That's the first one. Oh, and then she right. gets hit by a second when she's down. There you Wait, go, that's that the second one. Your leg? That doesn't even that's look like a up. shoulder, too. That looks... And they only pull one arrow out of her. <laughs> yeah! But you're right, she totally looks like she gets shot by two. Yeah, there's the audio cue of the, the first leg. arrow as well. Did it miss? Is that the implication? And she just got spooked by it? No, because she reacts to it. She collapses to the ground, and then she gets hit again. I, I think they literally just forgot. <laughs> or realized we can't quarterize her all over the body. <laughs> There was a miscommunication between the Arrow CGI people and the actors. Yeah, the, the Arrow comes in and she's like, ah. But which yeah, one? She, Where did that she even... definitely reacts to it. I there can't even tell where that hit her. I don't even know. And then the second one is in her shoulder. Yeah. So Homer gets hit by two arrows, wiped out. She gets hit by two it. arrows and saved. What's, what's the deal? What's the joke here? I don't understand. They didn't own enough seeds for him. Uh, I thought it was. The, yeah, right, because she's going to make a garden or whatever, so she has the, the, the god of growth looking after her or something. That's what he said. <sighs> so they, they, all, uh, they all go in to the keep. But, uh, there's one thing I thought was kind of funny here. Um, if you can see here as they're heading in, you see this guy on the furthest left here realizes there's a guy behind him who's like struggling. He's got an arrow in him, but, you know, up him out, and he's like, okay, you know what, I will. I think he even tosses his weapon to do it. He's like, I'm gonna help you up. Here I go. Come on, buddy, you can make it. But then that very guy gets, uh, unfortunately, hit by an arrow. Ooh. So he loses his footing. Down he goes. And you know the guy he helped up? It's just like, uh, okay, bye. <laughs> I guess, I guess yeah. you're done. <laughs> 
and just abandons him. <laughs> you know that the I don't want to end up like him. No, it's uh, that's what that was. I I don't know. Just the way that looks is so <laughs> funny. So uh, yeah, they're in the they're in the keep. Chill out here for a bit. Um, the orcs are surrounding, and I just uh, I just don't see how this is gonna work even for a, a split second. And the uh, the the obvious payoff you'd expect is like, well, I guess the Numenorians are gonna come in just before everything goes to shit. And man, they've got a huge window of time before that's gonna happen. Uh, I uh, when I say they, I mean Adar and his his orcs. So they've got to waste a shit ton of time, and by gum do they waste a lot of time. Because uh, the orcs are our surrounded. Time waste our time. They've surrounded the place, okay? It's, it's donezo. We've lost. Unquote. But we still have time for a whole quarterization scene that has loads of, like, gaps and delays. Uh, and I don't also, what how. is everyone else doing? Yeah. There's even a point where uh, the whole place goes silent to watch them trying to save her life or whether or not she's going to make it, as if nobody else has been she's hit with arrows. She's very important. As so if, yeah, annoying. Exactly. doesn't earn that at we all. She's a main character, so true, everyone cares what's true. going on with her. So then we get this really great comedy bit. This lady opens up a little window here. She's like, "What's going on?" And then an orc just runs past, <laughs> and the door closes again. It's a they jump scare you with this shit, and it's just like, "Was the orc waiting there?" Peek in. He was like, "Someone's gonna open it any second now." <laughs> <laughs> and like, oh my god! And it, I never understand that. Oh shit. my god, there are orcs outside. Whoa. Everybody be careful. I could have foreseen this. Um Yeah, we realize that uh, Homer passes in, in, in this thing def def definitively, and then we're worried that yeah. she might too, and it's like, yeah, of course, she totally will. We said uh, we're worried she might. Uh, I was kind of we're worried she, she might live. Yes. I mean she I meant. she uh, I was watching this with my dad the first time and because she seems to die. And there's a, there's a nice sort of little pause when you think, oh my god, she's actually dead. And my dad said, said that's the first thing the show's done that I've kind of enjoyed. You know, they had the courage to kill her off. Mm -hmm. Slight pause. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. She's, <gasps> oh no, no, you, you worked so hard for that, and now it's been ruined. In a good show, this would have been... In pe assuming that all of these characters were good and she died in defense of her village, which is not, you know, unreasonable, because she's just a peasant, yeah. you know? And, you know, we, we would be legitimately sorrowful because she's a character and she has a relationship with another character. And so we're like, oh, that's sad. You know, I hope that he's going to take it well. But that would be a different show in an alternate universe where we care about characters and the relationships they've presented to us. Yeah, I mean, hell, her son's in the room as well. I mean, you could have you could actually killed her off. Yeah. You could have forced her son and elf guy closer together as a result of that and sort of shared. That would have been cool. And, yeah. You know, there's loads you can do with that. Especially if the sun was like a, a like a super racist against elves, yeah, and it, yeah, yeah. it kind of forces them together. That's the first step to bringing those two, you know, towards one another. And they're both kind of prejudiced against each other, but they learn to drop it, you know, because they they already they did the setup when the sun is kind of distrustful of of the elf. You know, he complains that he spent all of his time watching the humans cutlery draw in the last episode. And then, so so they're sort of doing that, but they're taking the least emotionally impactful way of doing that, like, and the least believable one, and the least meaningful one as well. But if you, yeah, like, shared trauma like this would have actually d accomplished so much more in such less time, or so little time by comparison. But again, as you say, that would be a different show, and unfortunately we don't have that one. We ain't got time for drama. Yeah, and it's only once the quarterization scene is complete and we know that she is going to make it, woohoo, that they, we then cut back to the orcs who are now picking up the battering ram and starting to use it. What have you been doing this whole time, guys? You Waiting should have gotten in by now. to have that dramatic, sad moment. And then, of course, they are actually making progress. The door is coming down, and no one is prepared with spears or anything. They're just like, well, that sucks. Yes, this is it. When Helm's Deep, when they had to fall back, they got the door and they barricaded it up and they had people there pressed back against it. It felt yeah. very desperate. Remember when Theoden got hit with the, the spear they were putting in and then he helped direct one coming back to fuck up that Urukai? Good shit. Absolutely. Theoden's a f absolute Chad. Uh, <laughs> the only Chad in this is Hyde, so in this scene. unfortunately he, the Chad had a heroic death. Homer is no longer with us. Homer deserves We're out to be of characters to get a show about. You know, 
hanging out with them a lot. He deserves, yeah, he deserves a better people. He should have he really ridden is. his cow into battle at uh, Pernal Fields. <laughs> <laughs> now for Ralph, now for Ruin. It's just squirting <laughs> chocolate everywhere as it runs. <laughs> Like he slides down the chocolate stream to get really build up speed, and just crash into loads of Urukai. Oh, legendary! <laughs> yeah, the music. Oh. Don't you what fret, everybody! Had. Look, it's the new Minorians. They've landed and now they're charging over they're the here. Southlands. Well, not I'm, quite wait, yet. Mahler, I'm so confused. Not quite yet. <laughs> See, we're seeing this, which gives you a real good, strong understanding of just how much was on those three ships. By the way. Um, Man, no way. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe How you. long would it have taken them to crane all of those horses off? Oh god, could you imagine the the absolute like the, the guy who's operating that crane is probably just like I don't I don't know guys this this seems crazy I'm gonna be honest with you we should set up a different thing the horse crane or the the camera crane oh both a minute oh I think VLC was just fucking up there flash frames. You don't often ever see that in uh, in anything TV show or, or film related, like like editing fuck ups to the point of them accidentally leaving in really really bad frames. You get some stuff like the Zack Snyder dead pixel thing or um all the deliberate frame in in Fight Club, but that's right. Uh, really ever because because we've been doing this for a while, you don't really see the like a screwed up fuckery directing thing like that. Maybe they actually. Well, we was... were watching. What was that we were watching? Where one of the Oh, never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, they're on the way. Like where one of the cameras is just blurry for some reason, and then it goes back to being clear. Oh. Oh, was that Batwoman that did that a lot? Or are you talking? No, about... oh, no, 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 no. It You're... was uh, Thor. Did you say Thor? I think I it said wasn't Thor. Thor. No, I know what it was, but well, it's part of our uh... it's Thor, right? With tremors. Was it Tremor or was it uh was it Friday the thirteenth? Yeah, it was that. You got Nightmare it. Nightmare on Elm Street, I think, maybe. Oh, it could have been Nightmare on Elm Street, that's true. Listen, we watch maybe films in secret I sometimes, see... okay everybody? <laughs> yeah, she's looking great on this horse, by the way. I got big old I'm sitting on the toilet vibes and I'm concentrating pretty hard. <laughs> I, I will say I'm I'm like so it's like the sun is rising behind them or setting behind them as they're galloping across the field. When is the what is the timeline here? <laughs> like, oh, where are they? Fool. How far you away fool. are they? I know I'm a fool for because <laughs> foolish I, fool that you I are like to ask at this time. Is. is the guy at to the right of Holbrad became... slouching? He looks like he's slouching. He's just like, eh. He's leaning back <laughs> a little bit. He's not actually the ho He's not quite the horseman. He's waking the up like, oh shit, I'm on screen, damn it. Ugh. And see, there are people out there, I believe this, there are people out there who saw this and they got really excited. I was just like, oh, what nonsense bullshit, man. Like, this is so impossible. How could this possibly have taken place? Well, you're supposed to think they kept up this years. speed for a full day. To travel the like, distance that they needed just to Just saying that, yeah, like, all, all this time playing Total War games, and the thing you learn is that you don't set your units sprinting for miles before you actually hit your opposition, because your horse will be knackered by the time you get there. So, are they going at full speed for these days are, on end? These I mean, are Numenorean horses, horses. To be fair, Numenorean horses are supposed to be much stronger and faster, but even so, I think... They didn't they have their limits. That. They didn't tell us that either. Oh, sorry as well. They they decided to get the kid to cauterize the other end of her wound, and he's like, "It's yeah, it's his mum. He's terrified, and he's young. Like, why the fuck are you getting him to do it? Let let an adult do it, please." He drops that thing. Jesus. Um. So yeah, I don't know. It's all it's all absurd, but we're finally getting there. It's all madness. They break all in. Madness. Ah, all these people here and all these weapons, and they just they ain't using any of them. Just, they just break in. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're, we're at the wit's end now. What's gonna happen? Everyone's like arrested. It's all over and Adar's walking in. Can you believe it? What's gonna happen? What is the conclusion here? I don't know. Because really anything can yeah, happen. That's where we're know. at now. <laughs> yes, anything can happen for any reason, which is just the stakes killer. Oh yeah, did you enjoy, by the way, that uh, out of everybody in that little horse army, Everyone's wearing helmets except Holbrand and Galadriel. 
Of they course, don't need it. They're main characters. It's like the tro- uh, when you you know like you in a police show or something where the the police are doing a little. They're gonna go and raid, uh, raid a place. Everybody else is wearing full body armor. They got rifles, but the main characters just have a vest and pistols. <laughs> this is the medieval version of that. If you're a main character, you can't wear a helmet because we got to see your face. You can't emote with a helmet on. Um, it's the same thinking that. The well, it's funny because Isildur and Elendil, I think, have their helmets on, but they get taken off like straight away in the fight. That's another yeah, thing they do. Yeah, of course, because they're main characters. We got to see their yeah. face. We got. Be able to distinguish them, couldn't have them wear like I don't know, like something on their armor to distinguish them, or alternatively, just shoot it just... in a way that we could see their face. Yeah, know... I mean, helmets don't have to necessarily cover up the face much. I mean, the Numenorean helmets, you could clearly tell who's who in the helmet. Yeah, this this medieval times with these big open. Well, I mean, some medieval helmets. It, the point is, you can see their faces. You don't need. Yeah, to not take every helmet is a full helmet. I just find, I don't know, I, there's something about it that bugs me, like that choice that we've got to always take the helmet off. I like, mm-hmm. I like a lot of helmets and masks and things that they can be really cool, and it's always like, well, no, but we got to see their face, because that's like something that they got taught or something in like a film class. <laughs> Do you think that's them or the actors? They have to wear yeah, helmets? Like, I want well, to be seen. Could be in the contract. Yeah, I mean, you might, you might have a point there, right? Like, I, I wouldn't surprise me at this point if there is like some some agreements that are in place where it's like, well, there's a certain amount of. I'm pretty sure that was the reason why in the Halo show, right? Because the actor, yes. or maybe it was part of their contract, is like, well, we got to see their face. And if if that's the reason, that's really lame, isn't it? That is lame. That as well. It makes you Pedro appreciate Carl Urban as dread. Hell yeah. Um, you appreciate a lot of, like i don't know it, it's kind of funny right because you could have had steve downs this is a total tangent you could have had steve downs play master chief again could have just had some guy in the armor and then just have him do the voice, the voice yeah but uh, I mean, same with mario you could have so well you mario could have someone else wear the mask <laughs> <laughs> and then, Mario, yeah, you can have, have. He has to have the mask on. You can have Chris Pratt oh, dress Mario up Max. as Mario, but you keep Charles Martinet, of course. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that movie. <laughs> keep saying it. That'd be I'm hilarious not. if they overdone oh, Chris Pratt with his voice. They're releasing the trailer in a few days. I just run, 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 excited. run go to the forest. I'm, I'm not excited at all. Go to the I'm, forest I'm with your animal friend. <laughs> yeah, but they, they can tell me it's all okay. The animals don't have to worry about being disappointed by Mario. No, they've already been let down by him because it's Sonic who has to save them, not Mario. He doesn't care about saving animals. He wears their skin. He <laughs> does. Tanuki <laughs> suits and, yeah. Truly, ever the Italian. So, uh, Adar is like, give me my hilt. And then Elfman's like, um, only if you let us go. And I, and, and I, again, this is one of those, those tiny things I actually like, where Adol's just like, eh, fuck you, man. After everything we've just gone through, really? No, I'm just gonna start killing people. Give me the thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's probably, probably fair. Um, and then, uh, he kills some people as to be like, I'm a threatening person. And then, and then Elfman is, uh, says, um, uh, why, why kill people for such a small thing? Or something like that. Which, uh, isn't Elfman the one that explained it's going to turn him into a god? Yeah, like, he he uh, knows that it's important, right? Like, he understands I thought, I thought he understood how important this thing was, so just like, it's like, yeah, of course he cares a lot about this thing. He said he needs it a yeah, lot. I think when he's, um, when he's captured by the orcs in episode two, is it, I think it is? Or three, whichever one it is. And, you know, he the first conversation he has with the warden guy is that the orcs have been ransacking villages looking for a weapon. And then, you know, he gradually understands that that is what the weapon is, and then he recognizes it has a connection with the statue thing. All the people in this room, the person who has probably the most understanding of what the sword is, is probably Don Lemon. Hmm. Well, people keep getting stabbed. So he's, he's gonna have to act, you know? It's getting bad. Uh, they're all, so they're all secondary <laughs> backed round characters, no main well, characters yet. What was funny is, as some they people kind of pointed out, killing a main character like they'll be fine. Most of them are just getting stabbed. Nobody's twisting or gutting. They're just stabbing. No, and That's they true. didn't take the Galadriel class on 101, fighting yeah. people. Um, and yeah, so then something confusing happens, and I, I, I don't know if it's like just 
are we were we unaware of something or something? Because uh, Lady is is threatened, and so Elfman's like, oh jeez, oh no, oh god. And then Theo is like, I know where it is, and I shall give it to you. And then I was like, why, uh, yeah. why does he we know where it Theo is? We saw Theo like the unsexiest foreplay when ever. <laughs> when he was talking to Bronwyn about it and said, I'm going to go hide it, as he walks off, the camera changes focus onto the kid who's just like poking rocks or something, and that's your hint that he was watching him. Oh, nice job, Elfman. Nice. Because, you know, kind of the whole point was like, hide it in a way. Find the state of the world or whatever. Yeah. Like, oh shit, someone was I watching mean, He literally world. hides it. He hides it in the one place that he knows the orcs are about to attack. Because that's where they'll all be. Yeah, because they, they actually they they decided after he'd hidden it there that they would make that building the keep. Yeah. So you'd think you'd move it or hide it somewhere else. Just dig a hole. <laughs> dig, a hole. <laughs> dig a hole. Throw it in the deep, deep lake. Do something. Take a guy with a horse. Go to the ocean. It can't be that far away. The fucking Numenorians are on their way. Absolutely painful. And yeah, uh, nice job, man, because you understand that the fate of the world is tied to this thing. And he's just like, well, I got it now. And it's like, nice. Good mm, job. All right, well, could today get any worse? <laughs> well, I think everyone's days get worse when Galadriel shows up. But, That's uh, true. Just having to be around her. The yeah. smug aura she exudes. And then... And the, the moment that guy gets the sword, he, he must know they're all dead. Because... He's got exactly what he wanted, so th you'd assume his next move, be with him being evil, would be to kill all of you. So you would immediately start fighting, because you're dead anyway at that point. But no one does anything. No, and it's interesting because uh, there's no kill order until uh, much later. But nothing changed. Like, the, the only thing that changes, I guess, is the Numenorians invade, but at the same time, it's just like, why? Were you intending to leave them alive? What, what's, what's. I don't understand. Like, yeah, it's, it's really weird. They. He picks it up and we're supposed to believe that Adar just walks outside. Oh, this is another thing that happened that's so fucking weird. Everyone can hear that the Numenorians are arriving. Like, it's it's really loud. It's it's rumbling the earth. And, like, nobody's It's reacting. like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. You got Waldrick who's like, oh, look at that. They're on their way. And all the other guys are just like, eh. And it's just like, did nobody hear what was just in the soundtrack? I thought that... Were they just trying to tell us that this, this like, literally Godzilla's just on the, the way? Just the audience. And... No one else. <laughs> okay. Just the audience. All right, then. Um, yeah, you got... Waldrig was real near Adar there, and Adar was holding the little little hill. Oh, look at that. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's a thing to flag up for later that we'll finally be able to talk about. But yes, here come the Numenorians. Yay! Yay! Isn't it crazy? You guys probably thought when you were watching the last episode that for, like, Elfman and Galadriel yep, to fight planet, together would maybe. probably be something that may happen even in next season. Not literally the fucking next episode. They had a conversation in the workshop. I just can't believe it. Like, uh, th this, this show might have the worst pacing in history. It goes from incredibly snail pace slow to, like, Hyper fast in terms of this is like the one episode where loads of important things just happen one by one by one by one. By one. It's like oh, shit. Um, and yeah, with the sound of that, they announced, "Let's kill everybody now in the tavern." And uh, the two orcs that have a tied up elfman just they they can't kill him. They just can't. He just can't do it. He's got this aura about him. Yeah. I can't. Nothing works. And there was a dude who had a, a, a knife to Theo's neck, and he he's somehow now not able to kill him. Oh. Just lets it go, yeah. <sighs> I mean, if you could win this fight now, why didn't you just initiate the fight earlier? Why did you wait for them to start stabbing you? Yeah, why were they stabbing when the orcs were breaking in? You all suck. So hard to keep track of, like, how anything has... They, they even pretend to have stakes in this hole. But, uh, yeah, here they come. They even crossed the little bridge. Good thing they didn't blow up the little bridge with wine, you know? Otherwise, the Numenorians wouldn't have been able to get across it. <laughs> well, they knew that they were coming, so, you know. Exactly. And you see so many more cavalry enter this fight than ever actually partake in the fight. In that first yeah. one, there was, like, hundreds on that one screen. Now look at all these! Yeah, now, and then when the fight actually starts, it's, like, 20, maybe. <laughs> like, 20 <laughs> or 30 people at most. The unending oh, line of horses goes back chain. to the tree line. I mean, that's a huge number. 
That's another thing, uh... The orcs, like... Well, I, I never know how many there were. I never know. And I don't know how many there are now, and I don't know how many they need to kill right now. There's no sense of, like... Scale. For any of it. Sort of have action happen. We had the really cool moment coming up soon where they, 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 they hit a bunch of them with a chain. You guys remember that? That was pretty legendary. Oh, God. Um... But yeah, uh, got some style points coming in here for a lot of characters. Cause this this was the this was the masterpiece scene, right? For a lot of people. Oh, they were so proud of this. They put it in the trailers. This bit, which is an interesting choice. Cause like, fuck me, it's episode six, and it's a it's a big old twist or thing for. I mean, for people who are invested in this story, I guess they actually consider this to be some something of a a wonderful thing. But this happens mm. in terms of just like, oh, what a great payoff. Yeah, this whole chain thing is weird. This is the They're thing. This is what it. it's all been building up to, you know? Like this scene where our, all of our characters come together and... So are those chains, are they attached to the horses? Because there's no way if you're just holding the chain in your hand... You wouldn't get dragged you're off gonna... by... Yeah. Correct. yeah. Or even just drop the chain. That's because yeah, the orcs aren't fighting with it. their feet. Oh. If the orcs indeed. were fighting with their feet, then and they would be like, they didn't plant them their them roots. More. They listened to Galadriel, and look what happened. They were, uh, yeah, they had the stability buff. They were unaffected by crowd control skills and effects. Yeah, man, imagine being an elfman. You'd be like, fuck, I'm lucky. Incredible. Luck, I'm fucky. <laughs> is is uh, what even is gonna happen in episode seven and eight? That in terms of just like, is it all settling down and accepting reality sort of things? I guess it is two hours, possibly more. So seven will be like the discovery of Galadriel, like one of the the corpses in Pompeii, and then she'll be revived <laughs> and break out of the rug. Someone will cast a spell <laughs> she on it. Comes out of it, yeah. Like she's been deep fried, but she breaks out of it, yeah. Cause yeah, we doing we gonna join up the the Harfoot storyline to these guys before this season ends? Oh, I don't think so. I think they'll be there on their own little separate thing. I mean, because like this oh, yeah, happens. That's my yeah. of women will find him probably. This happens so fast that uh, I I wouldn't keep anything off the table now in terms of what they could just randomly do. Maybe Durin will fight with Galadriel and Nori against uh, Adar next episode, right? You're right. I have no fucking clue. Oh, sweet. We finally got this moment. So, if you guys didn't know, Galadriel's pretty damn cool. I would even go as far <laughs> as saying... Cool. Possibly I, I never of, picked that up. Well, get ready for some proof. She saw the arrow was getting ready to hit her. It was fired, and she does this. Oh, my God. And she only had to do that. It, like, it's past her now. She could just get back on the horse. But no, well, no, no. This is <laughs> this is cool actually enough. what they teach you in horse school. They say this is the best way to decapitate a person. And you might be like, "What?" <laughs> she is miles away from him. Boom! Off goes oh, his it's head. Even worse in slow motion. Look at that distance. <laughs> it's just like what she was is that? Absolutely she like explodes in range. <sighs> and yeah, yeah, you know, it shows uh, one of the dudes. Uh, it's the lieutenant, and he's like, as soon as he enters <laughs> the that. battle, he falls off his horse. It's like, eh, all right. <laughs> No, he dives off. I he wish I didn't get that like promotion. He does it deliberately. Well, it's funny because I'm pretty sure him, Elendil, and Isildur all come off their horses in this fight, don't they? Like, I think they need to knock good. at least one of them off because they need to give Adar one later and he didn't bring one with him. So it's kind of necessary because he has to steal oh. something. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm just Elendil, pointing out though, that at like, least he's backflipping all over a horse and on. stuff while the rest of these guys are just like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm going to tackle you, you specifically <laughs> to the ground. It's worth it. I don't need a horse. And also his helmet <laughs> comes off, because now we can recognize who this character is. Yay! I mean, that's gotta hurt. Falling off a horse like that. Yeah. Or diving off the horse. It's like and, a rugby tackle from altitude. Well, and at this point, I was really realizing, I was like, fuck, these guys haven't seen warfare at all in their entire lives, right? These, these guys in particular, because they're all young'uns. They're, as they're far training. as we know, this is their first battle. 
And they've gone from being like, war was established as a thing, like, a couple days ago, and now they're, they like, about the in concept the of war, yeah. actually fighting for their lives right now, in the thick of it. It's just like, god, this... I think I said to you, Rice, like, there's so much story here to tell, and they don't tell it. Like, imagine the, the experiences for all these guys. It's just yeah, what it war means. actually... I know we try to make Galadriel super cool and amazing, but, like, actually... This is a, a rough experience for some people who haven't gotten trained. Look at that blood. It what looks so fuck? bad. Yeah, I was about to point that out. The way out. it just like spurts out of him. It's like, that's not what would happen, I don't think. He did. He um, would just I think spurt he, out of you like a fountain. He did twist, though, maybe, and, and then got. So oh my he's God. learned his lesson. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, that makes sense. It just seemed like to me as well that they, they really want to... It, it reminds me of the, the, the blood coming out of the dude's eye, which is like... <laughs> Just like the CG department were really enjoying their time with this. Yeah, more blood. All right, whatever. That probably is very deliberate, by the way. The stab twist and the gut. Good on Galadriel for making sure our guys know how to kill. Oh, so he picked up like an orc weapon. He does not even use in his own sidearm. I guess he lost it. I guess it. I. I guess. Or something. Get off that horse. I, I, you should resist that more, being pulled off your horse. Yeah, you'd want to stay on the horse, actually. That's the, one of those big realizations most people don't realize, actually. You bring in a horse, you... Some people want to jump off them immediately. It's an interesting choice, like this guy had. But recommend against it, I think. I love how that guy's getting blocked, and he just keeps doing the same move over and over. Like, you could just stab him. Yeah. You couldn't block it from that position. No. It's just, to me, it's just like, look, fighting is happening. Isn't this war amazing? Because I'm pretty sure it's already, like, half over. Um, but yeah, this guy, who's, like, terrified and sort of weaselly as, we, as he's been characterized Whoa! up to this point. Um, we get a conversation after this fight where he's just like, I have, uh, war's not my thing. I'm good. I'm gonna stay <laughs> oh, here. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Sorry, you, you signed up, man. <laughs> yeah. we, we still got it. <laughs> The war is not done. Like that that was one skirmish. And Literally volunteered. We, <laughs> you I don't like I, I sympathize, but we we actually have to keep fighting. <laughs> it's not over. When you see the volcano erupt, he's like, I'm not into this. This is not me. I don't I don't, I don't want to fight a volcano. <laughs> I didn't sign up for a volcano. I'm like, well, that is technically true, yeah. Um oh yeah, there's this moment where so uh, he is a member of the Queen's Guard, then, is Yildor, and then she signals to him, you can go play if you want. Is that what this is? Um, yes. I, I, I think you're meant to think he's, like, being impetuous, and he's, he's, like, wants to gallop off, and she notices, and so lets him go. Because he breaks rank. Yeah, because I couldn't tell if it was that he'd been given permission, or if he's just fucking off. Oh no, she definitely nods at him for him to go, but I think the first bit is meant to be him, like, he just can't keep in position because he's so, so desperate to go in and fight. I think they might have just been incompetent. I think what he was supposed to be looking at was his dad struggling, but they show us his dad struggling after he seems to make that decision. It was like, continuity yeah, just feels off. But uh, yeah, Elendil is getting tackled by like three orcs at once at one moment, and none of them decide to do anything permanent to him, let's just put it that way. They're just, they're weaponless, and they're just there to grab him. Which we've seen before with orcs, you know, they just, What's they're like grabbing. What's the bottom doing? Is he just holding the horse? Yeah, he's trying to keep the horse steady. He doesn't want it to be too, you know. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. I guess it'll make it easier for his friends if he keeps the horse still, so they can work on pulling the guy off. That's very, that's very thoughtful. I Teamwork. expect this kind of thoughtfulness from Adar, but from the rest, you know, I guess I'm surprised. So yeah, we got this epic moment of Elendil could be dead, who knows what's gonna happen, and uh he does get saved. And you'd all have expected it to be a sealed or wouldn't you? But it was Hullbrand. Oh <gasps> what? What? Was a little paper cut. I don't really know what to make of it like in terms of what what do they want us to conclude from it? It's just I guess overall that he's still thinking about whether or not he's a good guy. Is that what this whole thing is? Yeah. I've got no fucking clue. There are I don't four. even think he's thinking about being a bad person at this point, as far as I know. Elendil is dealing with four orcs at once, by the way. The problem is, and the show's going to have this problem going forward, is that so many of its main characters cannot die. 
Elendil can't die, Isildur can't die, Galadriel can't die. A couple of the, the, the new creations can oh, die, but yeah, no, none of these other people can. So if they're gonna if they're gonna keep wasting time by trying to, you know, it's the solo problem when they try and make it seem like he's about to fall off the train or Chewie's about to fall off the train, and you know that they're not gonna. So is there even any point trying to tease that prospect? We know it's not going to happen. Yeah, the conclusions on stuff what? like that are like. Well, on one hand, avoid being incompetent enough to put him in positions where they should die, and we know that they can't because of not just that, but also just because you bought armor. But simultaneously, yeah, why try and create action scenes based around characters being put in peril that are absolutely safe as opposed to the ones that aren't safe, and then using the safe ones to, you know, do the saving? Yeah, they're never or going to have to the risk emotionally the... reacting to those potential tragedies or working to prevent them. Or just show, like, Elendil, just show him as being really competent as yeah. a fighter, so I don't cool. have to worry about him constantly getting swallowed by orcs all the time. I'll They're be like, oh, Elendil's a really good warrior, I don't have to worry about him too much. Mm -hmm. They're so proud of the new characters, the new characters are the ones they pitched in all the interviews the most. They're, like, they're, the, they're kind of babies. If anything, they probably care least about um, the original ones. They can't kill them yeah, for more, but I bet if they had to sacrifice any of them first, <laughs> they're the ones they'd want to choose. They'd be like, can we kill Frodo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They'll be inserted a little fake Frodo. Frodo learns one. Oh, oh, okay. I remember Frodo. Frodo. He seems nice. Frodo, no. Frodo, no. Oh, why, Frodo? Oh, why? Oh, Luigi. Oh, this ring is such a burden to carry. Oh, mamma mia. What is this weapon he's Can't throwing here? Is it a spear? I think it is a spear. Oh, it's like a stick it's with a, it's a... a... It's a fucky spear. Like, it, it's like the one from earlier. It might be the same prop. It looks like the one from earlier. Yeah, she did the I exact same, the same fucking thing. move again. So cool. Um... But yeah, uh, I don't I, think she actually needs to do that. If she just leant sideways, yep, it would have that it. would solve a problem. But it doesn't look as cool. No, and point. she does it so these people can it's look on and oh, she's so amazing. Who is that? Um, so we, uh, yeah, Galadriel met up with uh, little Mister Elfman, and and she was like, "Where's the leader? I just want to kill the fucking leader." And he's like, "Oh, he's over there. Don't let him escape with the thing that he's he's hanging on to there." And uh. They don't show us him saying anything else. It's not impossible he didn't say anything else, but I was just like, why didn't you tell her that literally the fate of the world is in the hands of him having that object? Just saying, like, don't let him escape yeah. with it is like, it doesn't really like, encompass yeah, he, the issue, does it? Yeah, we need to be... <laughs> we need to be working harder to convey this information. And we get... We've had so many logistical issues at this show, but this one is pretty fucking great. What did they just show us? It was Adar's run off into the forest, Galadriel's following him, and then Holbrand spots this happening, and he is, let's just say, they are, they, are, they are moving away from him. And they've got quite a head start. That's what we see. So then he's like, I'm going to get involved too, grabs a spear, and starts heading towards, presumably, where they are. Um, they start up their horse chase, and it looks pretty straight. It doesn't look like they're going in some big half circle or something. Um, and, uh, then we have this shot happen where somehow Hullbrand has gotten in front of them. Was anyone else baffled I, by this? I'm going to be There's honest, no I think your guess is going to be as good as mine, because that don't make no fucking sense. How do you try to catch up with someone and then get ahead of them? Uh, I feel like we've missed seeds. You fast travel. <laughs> I don't see how it would work at all because the guy would be escaping. At what point would he go in a direction that would put him on the path of somebody who was from the battle? You know, like how do you get cut off by somebody who was from the battle unless you turned around? I don't like, think logically, no logically, you'd have him moving, like a w not only just away from the battle, but probably away from the keyhole as well, because he wants to buy time for the guy who, at this point, is running over there. So, the, yeah, he would avoid turning at any point because he wants to get right. as much distance as he can. The, to delay the reality him. is, we have to the the possibilities that have to be eliminated is that Halbrand's like horse is just way faster. That's stupid. So, like, so <laughs> it's so much faster, like. 
Or, double the speed. Is she on a special white horse? That's a, you just assume catch that's up. a special one. Yeah. I just don't understand. So, like, like, this is too much for me. In even. A different direction. They failed logistics all the time, but this one just seems so simple and straightforward that you couldn't have made this mistake, right? They must have known when they made it. They were like, yeah, yeah, this is dumb, but whatever. But who cares? It's, we're only make, spending $50 million an episode. <laughs> yeah, they needed Halbrand to reach him first so that they could have the conversation scene. Because the only other thing would be Galadriel reaching him first, and then they couldn't have had that conversation. So the story needed him to reach him. Like, I find it, because, like, during the exchange that plays out afterward, like, she's right there, but she just kind of doesn't, like, say anything or do anything. Oh, my she God. Just that conversation. She's she's right off at this point. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, Look at this shot. Yeah, where are you going? Yeah, where are you going? <laughs> she's caught up to it. How did they <laughs> put this up? She's direction. Yeah, Hi. she's just going off in her own direction. What the hell? How do you fuck that Maybe up? That's why she was just not there for like a thirty second spell, so that these two could have their little conversation. And look at look at the the way that like her body language. She's darting forward. She's not like. I'll go around to the side to see how this plays out. It's oh, that's like... a full gallop, it looks like. Oh, God. Just galloping away. How are you fucking this stuff up? <laughs> so, yeah, they have this, this very specific <laughs> shot to be like, the horse, he's okay. He's okay, he's fine, don't worry about him. Like, oh, that hi. definitely felt like a shot to let us know that he's okay, which I appreciate. I've never tried this before, but so Halbrand is, is hanging off of his saddle, and he's holding a spear in one hand, and he puts it flat, and the horse runs it. He has enough wrist strength. Yeah, the, the spear he has, has no leverage strength. at this point. So To tank a horse, to trip the horse over, but he hasn't lost his arm, and the spear hasn't snapped, and the horse actually did fall over. Yeah, he's extended the arm out fully. He's holding the spear at the end, like... The I'm surprised the horse's legs weren't strong enough to just bash the spear away. Because this is uh this such little strength holding that spear there. No, it worked perfectly. Yeah, it's just gonna We saw earlier a horse run through a wooden fence. Yeah. So that this yeah, no. No, I'm with you. I, I, he does it in such a way that's just like uh, I'm not sure about that. Um but yeah, they have a little chat. Uh Holbrand is in a position where you can kill Adar, and he's like, "Do you remember me?" And, and Adar literally just goes, "No." Oh. <laughs> it's just like, "All right." <laughs> I've always found Should that I? music in anything. Where it's just, it was always the second they had in Endgame, Thanos say, "I don't even know who you are." I was like, "How do you not know that that's that's funny?" Like, it's just amusing. <laughs> it is funny, yeah. Um, and fuck me, this is so annoying. He's like, I really want to fucking kill this guy, and then Galadriel's like, one does not satisfy thirst by drinking seawater. Terrible. <laughs> why would- why? Wait, shut the fuck up, Jesus it's Christ. so good we said it twice. What, like- It's so <laughs> crap. This is <laughs> terrible. Um... So, yeah. Uh, it's like revenge isn't really what you're after. Like, seawater isn't really water. My best, yeah, that, my best guess would be that what you, what you think you're getting here is tainted. But, like, I don't really see how that quite follows here. Because what you're saying is this is not what you want, like, at all, completely. I mean, there are pragmatic well, like, reasons I don't know. to it end this like man's life. But simultaneously, she should just be arguing we need to, we need to interrogate him. There's actual practical reasons to keep him alive. What does he know? Yeah. Just say that. You're gonna be like, seawater! Halbrad, remember the seawater! Remember the seawater analogy. Why does the stone sink? <laughs> stones, they look down, Halbrad! They look down! They look down, don't look down like the stones. <laughs> Can you just tell me what to do, please? <laughs> like, speak English, Does it Jesus. take you longer to come up with these analogies than it would be to just tell me what the lesson is? Um... But yeah, this kind of annoys me. We have this, like, moment of, ah, oh, us three, us friends, we did it, we made it through this fight. One of us has come out of it yeah. not really wanting the fight. The other, you know, proving his zeal and that he, he he's he's you know we are friend. Woohoo! We're we're joining the queen's expedition to find the orcs who have ran off. It's like oh great cool. And it's like fuck you, show you haven't earned this at all. These guys have spent barely any time together. And, 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 uh, as far as I know, they hate each other. Yeah, or should. But we won't get any fucking info on that at all. 
anyway, it's time for the interrogation. Galadriel's gonna talk to Adar, figure out what the hell's going on here. And, uh... Not... Yeah, it's it, she gets to be, be the one doing the talking, I guess? Yeah, you would have thought the Queen Regent would be present. Uh... Yeah, maybe not. Maybe the queen's just like you do it, Galadriel. I trust you. For some reason, I trust you in every way, shape, and form. Just... Yeah, we're not gonna have a Lindel here or my soldiers. I mean, we're not gonna have any guards. That would be ridiculous. And something quite amazing happens. That, to be honest with you, yeah, it's in character at this point. Galadriel's like, "Where is Sauron?" And Ada does a sort of like, eh. you know, like a non-answer. And then she goes, "Hmm, perhaps we should put some orcs in the sunlight." Like, wow! <laughs> Just Why have they even torturing taken orcs your prisoners, prisoners of war? Jeez. I, uh, Why are orcs it's, prisoners of war? It's, it's built on one after, because isn't this after the point at which she they, they've had the conversation about whether the orcs were slaves, and she said she's acknowledged that the orcs were slaves, and I think she even used that against him at one point. So she's not just advocating torturing prisoners of war, she's advocating torturing slaves who had no choice but to be in that war. Uh, it's not... It's not the most sort of pleasant it, um, suggestion to have come out of her mouth. It reminds me of Thor Love and Thunder, where you've got this character who hates the person they're, they're against right now. Like, so Gore hates Thor, and he's like, I hate you because you're a god, and gods suck. Gods don't care about, uh, you know, their people. However, in order to kill you and take your weapon, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bait you by hurting your own people, because you'll care about that. And it's like, <laughs> oh... I feel like you fucked someone uh, up there. Yeah. This is a scene where we have the hero trying to get information out of the villain, and she's going to do it by making him feel bad about his people being tortured. I tortured. just, yeah. I feel like we've crossed a wire at some point here. It's like something's going on that's not quite right. Gladriel, are we the baddies? This is definitely <laughs> a we the baddies moment. Uh, but yeah, I guess with that one, uh, he he does submit that. He's like, okay, Jesus, if I uh, Sauron wants to heal the world and craft a power not of the flesh, but over flesh, a power unseen. He bid as many people as possible follow him north, try as he might, something was missing. A shadow of dark knowledge kept itself hidden, even from him, no matter how much blood was spilt in its pursuit. This is all gobbledygook to me. I don't know if anyone... Is grabbing stuff from it. I something about spells and rituals, shadows, unseen worlds, p blood, darkness. They're basically Side talking about him. To many abilities. Researching the ring of the flesh, not of the flesh, but to control the flesh. I'm, I think that's like th in the first episode when they discover those orcs and walls and stuff. It's what they're referring to, mm. and I think it is. Well, they show it. The, a, the oh, look, altar ring. and everything. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I'm, I guess I'll just have to wait for things to sort of settle out. I don't know what, what's really being set up here. I just, whatever. Um, but something funny happens. She says, okay, okay, whatever. Where is Sara? He's like, I killed him. I split him in two after he... Uh, he says, like, I sacrificed enough children for his aspirations. I, I killed him. And she just goes, I don't believe you. And he goes, ah, you don't believe an Uruk did it where your army couldn't? It's like, well, no, they've never had the chance to kill Sauron. Have she even met Sauron? I don't think she ever actually... Yeah, we've been looking for him. Yeah, it's like, when you say could, it's like, well, I mean, we've never even... We barely even know if he's actually around. Um, uh, she, I mean, I guess the, the fight at the beginning of episode one, when they first arrive, is, I think, by implication, it's against Sauron, because, of course, Sauron had to kill her brother, so... there well, is, she wasn't there. Like, oh, no, she wasn't, but, I mean, he's saying... It depends who he's referring to when he says where your armies couldn't. I mean, if he's talking about the elves generally... I thought he meant her, that's... like, a group of elves who were doing whatever. But maybe you're right, yeah, it could be that. And it's an entirely different situation. Like, to actually attack someone's army with your army, win, and then kill them, compared to him, who he might have just stabbed him in his sleep or something. You're right. Like, it I was may not say, have even been impressive at all. They won. The orc, the, the, the elves won. Sauron went into hiding. Morgoth was defeated. You can't really say, like, ah, you couldn't do it. It's like, well, no, Sauron ran off. Uh, if you can tell us where he is, I'll finish the job. <laughs> like, that's, like, her whole point. Yeah, I don't know. This is this whole, he split him. Open, it's like in Twain, and there's there's another weird sort of outgrowth from this, which I, again I don't think they'll ever really explore. But like, so we're led to believe that Adar is he, he's not purely villainous because he attacked he by his own account anyway and killed Sauron because he was sick of sacrificing his brothers right. from the orcs that is. So you kill him. So so Adar is not a villain. He actually all he wants is is a land for his own people. Um. 
why then are his orcs portrayed as being and, and his actions in commanding them as being massively evil for the sake of it? Would it not have made more sense for him to make peace with the men of that land and to work together to build this new world? Because his antipathy isn't toward the men whom he was fighting in the last war or you know, allies of those he was fighting in the last war. Like, there's no... I, I'm, I'm sort of struggling to see why everyone... Like we're, on the, we're on the same team and you don't know it. Kind of yeah, thing. or at least well, there's no not... reason for them not to be. Well, except the fact that he wants to explode a volcano which will destroy their entire area. Well, there is that crops. slightly inconvenient fact. But, I mean, there's, there's no reason that the men can't be encouraged to move or to take part. I mean, hell, half the men went and joined him earlier anyway. The men were on the side, on these people's side up until this point, or in the previous war anyway. There, there could have been a workaround for that. And even then, he could have used them to get what he wanted and then sacrificed them afterwards. I mean, it's just... They're portraying the orcs as being as evil and bad and uncomplicatedly so as Sauron's orcs were, but actually the motives of their leader are much more ambiguous than that, no? Yeah, I think it's that it's not that he deliberately wants all of the humans to die, he just doesn't care if they do. So he'll use them for his own ends, like send them in in the first wave of a fight and stuff, but mm. it's not that he intentionally wants them, he just, if they die, they die, and he only cares about the orcs. But if he'd been even superficially nicer to the humans until this point, he might have actually had a much easier job of finding the sword. Seems that way. We're actually getting very close to all that now. I cannot remember if it was yesterday or when we watched it, Mahler, when I asked, does this show want us? Is it a goal of this show to have us sympathize with Adar? I think so. At least mm. the, think of them as grey. I don't know, he seems like, overall, a cunt. Like, yeah, he seems very evil. Trying to blot out the sun. But I don't, <laughs> That's pretty mean. I don't know if this is the idea behind the character, or if this is just the confusion that comes alongside bad writing, where you can't really tell what it is the writers want you to feel about something they've written. I, I think it is sort of the idea, because they, they, they big up his elvenness quite often in this. So he speaks elvish, he still looks like an elf. At the beginning of this episode, I think, is you see him planting the seeds, and that, of course, links later on when yeah. we learn what the point of that is. The orcs, as we know, and Galadriel actually pinches almost word for word Saruman's line when they're talking about how the orcs came into being. Elves once, taken by the dark powers, tortured and mutilated, a ruined and hideous form of life. Galadriel swaps a couple of words around from that, but she basically uses the same shtick. But because they're portraying him as, as the first of the fallen elves, essentially, and they are showing him turning against the brute force evil of Sauron because he still has a familial kinship with the orcs who were also fallen elves, I think we are supposed to read that as, as tragic fallen hero as opposed to mere villain. I think they do intend that, but they don't necessarily deliver it very well, but I think that was the, the plan. Well, when she threatened yeah, to torture could... his men to get him to reveal the information, I was getting conflicted because I was just like, damn, I feel bad for him, kind of. Yeah, I... I think you, you meant, like, putting Galadriel as that bad person is meant to make him look better, relatively. And he also yeah. bigs up the whole idea of, well, we just, we're just trying to survive. We're coming over the hills doing what we can in a land where everyone hates us and would try and kill us. So there's definitely uh, sympathetic roots there trying to lay. They just, just stumbled that idea in the most horrific way possible because I can't feel sympathy for you. If you just want a homeland for your people, first off, where were you before? Where'd you come from? Why, why was that not sufficient? The place where you were at hiding from everyone? Can you not be there? All right, I guess if you can't, does it have to be here in the Southlands? Why here in particular? Is it literally just a dormant volcano that you need? Um, and, yeah, and wasn't that Sauron's plan anyway? So are you are you borrowing from his idea to make a world for your own people, or are you actually fulfilling his ambitions knowingly? Or like, where does where does he stand in relation to the the whole reason they'd come here to begin with? Well, it seems like Sauron's plan was he made the key to make all the volcanic stuff happen, and then just rather than do the last bit, which was digging the ditch, decided to leave and take all of the orcs up north into this snowy area and start working on his whole ring idea. So maybe that was an unfinished plan of his that he never really put into action because mm. he wanted to discover that kind of magic first. And I'm assuming where they came from is from where Galadriel was at the start, that whole base up in the snow. So anyway, she threatens to kill everybody in his bloodline. <laughs> As you do. It was a bit awkward. Uh, she goes on this big old rant. like. She is one of the edgiest people ever. She talks about for a while just how much I can't wait to fucking kill you. 
make you suffer, make everyone you love suffer. Just, you know, standard stuff like that. And uh, I always thought it was weird because this comes after him basically arguing like orcs kind of just want their own land, which is quite an interesting thing to say because you might be inclined to be like, oh, well, can we work with them a little bit? And it's like, no, 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 no. Just highlight the fact that the orcs keep killing everyone and destroying everything. Just say that to Adar. You seem be to like, be evil all the time. Yeah, everywhere. you seem to do evil shit all the time. What's that about? And Adar could be like, oh, you know, we do it because you guys deserve it. Or fucking whatever. Just get some like out of him. But, um, but instead, her response to him saying, like, the orcs would like their own land is, I'm going to fucking kill all of you. Like, okay. She can't even keep that consistent. because So she saves his life in the first place because she wants to interrogate him. And then he pisses her off. So she says... Well, I'm going to keep you alive and make you watch as all of your bloodline dies. And then she pivots again to say, well, I'm going to kill you first. And I, I would like her to pick one and maybe follow that one through. Yeah. She does actually, like, almost cut his throat as well. Well, she does cut it, but, you know, I like, slit it fully. Um, yeah, I vow yeah, to eradicate her. every last one of you. It's like, all right, buddy. It's funny as well because I Adar's just kind of... He's just kind of chill this whole scene. He's just like, yeah, whatever. And uh, I guess it's because we know that he knows. He's already won! <laughs> what a villain. What a great villain. He's gotta be pretty worried here, expecting, like, for the boom to happen at any point, and it still hasn't gone off. Oh, yeah, that would be really tense. It's like, oh, what if that fucking old man tripped on, like, a <laughs> little bit of mud or something? And what if he got dead? stopped by someone? What if the soldiers found him? What if something? So, um, yeah, this is obviously the scene where they kiss. Sorry, this image just looks like it, okay? I was kidding. I, I realized just as, as I said that, I was like, oh god, these people in chat would be like, wait, really? It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she's... I know the show's bad, it's not that bad. Give him a season. Yes. Uh, so yeah, uh, she's, she's told, like, by Holbrand, hey, don't you do that. And, uh, yeah, and yeah, so it's like, well, gosh darn, you know, this whole scene is we just find out that this guy, Adar, he's definitely not Sauron. Who could it be? And Holbrand is like, Meh. and I, I really like. I'm getting them vibes, you know. I, at this point, I'm ninety nine point eight three six sure that he is Sauron. You know, there's still a chance that he's not. And then they get their scene, which is pretty cringy. Uh, they both talk about how they've never felt more at peace than when they were killing things side by side or something. Yep. <laughs> the bloodthirst. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what to make of that. I'm just like, oh, that's great, you guys. Uh, hope you're doing okay, I awesome. guess, in your heads. You know, I hope this is all therapy for you, just annihilating people. And then I was thinking to myself, this fight wasn't too difficult. It was, it was still, you know, it was not exactly like you know, tutorial level, but... It's it's something that they kind of did pretty it's quickly. First level easy. Yeah, and uh, that presents them a little bit of an issue, I think, because the Queen Regent was selling that this war was it was essentially an existential threat. Like the the Southlands were going to get overtaken by this horrible darkness. Let's be honest. It was a couple of it looked like what like forty orcs they killed, and they seemed pretty just yeah running around, and they just all get killed. It's like so this was going to threaten all of Middle Earth. You're saying now we know that there's more to it than that in a moment, but for now, shouldn't this be like, Queen, we, we've come a long way, and we, what we've done, it seems like we saved, like, a really small village. And to be honest with you, we saved, like, a third of them. So, I don't know, like, have you, did, what did Galadriel say? It's like, well, she kind of said, like, the, this was, this was like, the whole world was ending sort of thing, and we had to do this. It's like, do you really feel like we've we've done that? Do you do anything? Do anything think there's, there's a little bit more to this story than we haven't? We go back to Numenor, I guess. That's what I mean. It's just like Galadriel. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to the report back to Numenor when someone goes and tells Farazon, you know, what's gone down, and Farazon says, "Yes." So I've opened up these massive trading opportunities. Finally, what have we got? <laughs> um, you got Homer's got black cow milk from his cow. <laughs> you got. We, but we Galadriel, found a village. Half of them are dead. Had no reason. Gladriel had no reason to think that it, there was a big major force down there. All she had was Halbrand saying, yeah, orcs wiped out my village. That was the only information she had. Now, she thought maybe Sauron was there because it was orcs, but from numbers or direction, no idea at all. 
But yeah, I, I just I find this all bizarre, uh, and it doesn't fit at all with what the Numenorians were expecting. Or, to be honest with you, oh my god, look at that! Look at that mail that she's wearing. That quote unquote mail. Right. Oh. <laughs> Feels I like. Have too much money. It's not. Shouldn't. This shouldn't be happening. Oh, that crease is unacceptable. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so disappointing. I mean, other arms worse. There's an actual. Yeah, fold. you're right. We've got like a vertical crease oh, going on there. You can see it on the right. On, yeah, on the left. Oh, oh my! Wow, that's a that's a shirt. Yeah, they've pr they've <laughs> printed the mail that onto they just it. Printed scale. On that it. nah. That no. You had too much money. That's not. That's not okay. For what? For your most one of your most prominent characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for one of your main characters. Wearing a T-shirt. This isn't a guy in the back. <laughs> this isn't an extra in the back. You know, that's a shirt. So now I'm wondering, is the is the is the breastplate a T-shirt or is it real? I think that's real. The breastplate's real. You could see but the little shadows underneath. I was actually going to ask, right? I was like, they didn't they didn't print it with a shadow or something, right? That's not the think, level. I think that the it looks like the chest plate is real. The Shoulder the kind of real, and then I think that looks, yeah, yeah, you can see that's real. The shoulders yeah. real, yeah. you can see, you can see, yeah. Whereas on the arms, that's clearly a shirt. Oh, <laughs> damn, it's really bad. Yeah, how much did this episode cost? This one specifically, I just it's gross. Like it's, seeing that's gross. Stop it. It hurts my eyes. Maybe well, just to remind me. you that this is a television show, not like a real... I mean, of course, none of it's real, but it's hard to... Mean, yeah. It just hurts your immersion a little bit. You you just reminded, oh, there's like cameras filming this and a whole crew, like, just that I can't see, but they were there. So, uh, Lady <laughs> says... 55 million? Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the Queen says, as I understand it... These townspeople are alive because of you. And she's talking to Lady, not to Elfman, by the way. Which is just... <laughs> yeah. Really, Elfman <laughs> did a lot of the heavy lifting. <laughs> Elfman was exactly. clearly the guy. It. But it's even worse. Yeah. She doesn't say, oh, it, this was a group effort. This was the whole community coming together. Homer was super important. Elfman, pretty much, if he wasn't here, we'd all definitely be... No, she says... Yeah, many, many people died in its defense. Yeah, like that's that. what she should be saying. But she says, a burden I never wanted. And it's like... Yeah, like... Fuck you! <laughs> you selling I didn't want to be here. Throw away in the last episode when I thought, well, maybe I'm just yeah, gonna not were, take this up. Yeah, you were with everyone dying. Oh, it's it's the it's it's when you have your superhero try to save people or acknowledge when he can't save people with just even like a glance or like if, if somebody falls in battle and you just get that glance. It's the little things, and here it could have just been, yeah, I didn't do this alone. Like you know. The the it's the village saved themselves. And but no. uh, so that's like a one two punch of cringe. They throw in a third punch. Her response yeah, to the queen do. is as like that that is what most people who are good at it feel. You the, just want to the die. The greatest of leaders. <laughs> like she's You're so fucking the greatest amazing. <laughs> I guess I I could imagine that if they wanted to write it better, it would be the point that like a lot of the best leaders are people who don't want to lead but are thrust into it. Like yeah. they accept the yeah. responsibility. And you don't have that it. person saying that about themselves. No, you, they would never say it about <laughs> themselves. This is basic <laughs> shit. It's, it, it's you, the thing. It's like, because of course the, the line would be like, if, if you wanted her to still talk about herself, she could have said, I don't know, just doing the best I can. Like, that's it. If you like, were forced oh, to get the real heroes are the... I didn't, I didn't save everybody. The kind I of character you everybody. want, again, Theoden is just top tier, man. But it's just like the kind of character who believes themselves that really, as a component, they're really not important. It's really the people. It's really the other individuals. It's not them. Mm -hmm. And of well, course... Theoden openly lamented the fact that these dark days are his, you yeah. know? Yeah, he, well, he says it's not, it was not Theoden of Rohan that led our people to victory, right? That's a line from him. Yeah, but at least he's, you know, he's, there's a different dynamic, obviously, he, he being royalty and the king anyway, but with this woman, if you wanted to actually portray her as this demure, reluctant hero, and you also wanted to establish quite a good sort of first relationship between, or like, what the Numenorians were expecting to find when they got here, 
if Queenie goes and she just she automatically approaches the elf man on the assumption that he's the one who led all of the defense and this reluctant hero here has said you know she's she is taking this first opportunity to go back to doing what she is good at she's mm. just healing people she's being a normal woman and then elfman says well, actually it wasn't me it was it was her but she's not playing up her own sort of victory in this she's immediately gone back to her normal life or she's doing what comes naturally to her which is being the healer and tending to the sick and the wounded and then you've automatically it's like you you've taught the numenorean something about these people you've not overindulged in in bigging this character up mm. you've shown her to be a genuinely demure and reluctant hero and then you can take it from there and that's a more character rich way of doing things that establishes more and teaches all the characters more about each other but nah it's easier just to say yeah you're brilliant yes i am thank you she doesn't take the opportunity yet to say no the real heroes were the villagers who against all odds you know you're removing the leaders entirely instead of run you're done even... alone you know Back. <sighs> Yeah, that's what I mean. So like I, the, or, first, or the elf, the first you have either Gladriel saying that, oh, I can't, I wouldn't have expected this kind of valor from Southland peasantry, or you have the queen saying something like, oh, I didn't know that, you know, they, the people of the Southlands were this brave, and you know, that sort of thing that never comes into the play. The peasantry just, oh, well, fuck them, don't even mention them. It's fine. First statement establishes she did great. Her, and it's like that's already re reduced everyone else's role and the fact that to be honest with you she didn't do great she nearly tanked everything last night second <laughs> statement she she chooses to make it about i all i not only did great i did it when i didn't even want to and it's like yeah how cool nice. am i and then the third statement is uh, well yeah i mean that's that's kind of the components that make you great you know it's just like i i, I can't take it i can't just take the point. lame amazing. characters telling I each mean, other they're I great What's really lame is that I I would I imagine that like if you said this to the writers they'd be baffled like they wouldn't yeah. even realize that that's what you can it's uh, any any given line of dialogue no matter how important or unimportant you think it is can say a lot about a character because it's about it, it's it's not just about what they said it's about what they didn't say or or I guess more aptly what they chose not to say yeah. uh, like w the other things that they could have said and this is what they said. And what does that tell us about who they are? And it's not hard. It's really not hard. Like, all it takes is just, instead of that, just, yeah, like, I couldn't do it alone, or uh, the village saved, you know, the villagers saved themselves, or, like, I was just a small cog. Uh, well, I guess, I don't know if they, you know, I'm just, like, a smaller part of a larger, yeah, um, a larger group. Just, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I also like the suggestion as well of her assuming that the elf uh, man was in charge. And then him deferring to her. That would have been cool. That's just another opportunity to characterize yeah, and, him. There's this, like, in the conversation, you know, the queen wants to know who's most responsible, and he says it's her, and then she's like, no, it was, it, it's, it's everyone. And the elf guy's reluctant to take appreciation, but she drags him back in to be like, no, this fucker helped us a lot. You don't understand. Yeah. That sort of stuff, which like, just shows humility. It's, it's a great way to make us like the characters. They fumble humility. every time. Yeah. Also, Mel was it's, just it's, uh, it's, mentioning, it's like, wasn't she dying of blood loss like two hours ago? <laughs> <laughs> nah, she's hopping at him, up and about. It's nah, so funny because she's even she in a world... She made a few quarts while everyone was, you know... Even in a world where they, like, plug a fucking uh, IV of blood into you to get it all pumped back in, like, you can't do that in this world. So she should just be pale and just like, uh, I need to sit down. And you know what? That would be another way to do some great characterization. If she was sort of hobbling around, checking on people to see if they were okay when yeah. she's lost a shit ton of blood, and everyone's like, "You need to sit down." She's like, "No, not until I check. Like, I will. I will. I just, I need to know." I'm like, yeah, don't worry. We got it under control. You need to rest yourself. You know, gotta take. Yeah. Got to make sure the doctor's all right. Just seize the opportunities before you. <laughs> <laughs> They're all right there. I guess just do something. Instead, they're like, as someone just said in chat, actually, she's like, I'm narcissistic. And then the queen's response, I admire that. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> really I see myself in you. I, I'm something attending. of a narcissist myself. You <laughs> 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 to think Muriel is a great leader, but the only thing she's done this entire battle is sit on a hill and watch other people do things. Yeah. So wow, from Muriel's yeah. perspective, you're like, well, we've done the yeah, same job and we're man. both leaders. And the, the craziest part as well is that I think that the show might actually, the writers might actually think, like, when she says a lot of great leaders, you know, they reluctantly do well for their people. It's like, 
the writers would probably say, like, you see, Muriel's talking about herself. They'd be like, that's <laughs> awful. That is awful. <laughs> She's just like, like yeah, exactly. It's like, you know what? In in this moment of mainly your triumph, I figure I want to talk about <laughs> myself a bit. Stop it. I mean, it's really, good thing it's it, awesome. People showed up to help you. That would be a fucking amazing though if they both hyper narcissistic. And so when the elephant is like, "Yeah, yeah, you know what? It was, it was a uh, Broadwin. She did everything." And the queen's like, "Well, it was really the Numenorians that won the fight." Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> show up to be fair, to be fed <laughs> ass. But yeah, so really, it was more so because I I led them here. It was more my choice, you know. Yeah, yeah. like people didn't believe that that was a good decision, but look <laughs> at me now. <laughs> and, and and that would be a legitimate scene in The Office, a, a show about narcissistic yeah. characters awkwardly trying to get their praise mixed in. But this show would do it genuinely and th think like, see, they're both awesome. They're almost fighting over how Take awesome they are. Take a different angle. Are. It's a comedy scene where two characters are arguing over who is the most humble amongst them. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and then it is like kind of nuts because what do we know about Muriel at all? I don't know who she is, basically. That's the Queen Regent, right? Just to be, just to. Oh make God! Her... And then, okay. she, and then she's just like, "Hey, if you were looking for some relief, this over here is Lord Holbrand. He's your king. He's your king. <laughs> <laughs> You're a great leader. Now give it up." Yeah, uh, like... and everyone's luckily everyone's really happy about this instead of being like, "I didn't fucking vote for yeah, you." Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Who's this guy? Where has he been this whole fucking time? Our this king, okay, I mean, that's good you showed up, I suppose, but I, and then, are you sure? It's so good, because you know that if there was just one guy, he's just, he's around, and he goes, oh, hey, you look, you look pretty neat, and you're a king, huh? And he's like, yeah, and he's like, uh, why? And then Galadriel's like, what do you mean, why? And he's like, look, what, why, why, why that guy? Is, is, yeah, is why is it him? And then Galadriel's like, like, well, he's well, got the pouch. The pouch. Well, he's got the pouch, it's like, oh, where'd he get it? Oh, <laughs> the pouch, what? Why should? Like, no, I think you told me. Like, <laughs> what makes him king? The pouch. <laughs> like they just assumed she'd misunderstood. Your yeah. elders yeah, like, didn't hear me. That you don't understand. When I ask what makes him king, I'm asking about his qualities, not just that he is a human being. <laughs> no, I, I said, what yeah. makes him king? Not where does he keep his bling? And then, <laughs> oh, -ho! nice. <laughs> And, and I just love the idea that they would have been like, he got Why it off, down, right? he, he may have stolen it off someone, and then the guy just picks it up and goes, am I king now? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, because well, he found and it And then they do a whole thing, like, oh yeah, but we know you stole it. And <laughs> yeah. he's like, allegedly. This is all alleged. So you, don't, you, don't, you don't know. Maybe we tell the people in the next village that it's mine, then our stories are virtually identical, just to be clear. But like, yeah, when you hang on the pouch for that log, I just, I start laughing. I just like, I can't believe this. You've just established all these people have to serve this guy because he has the pouch. Yeah. No one funny. else can make that symbol. Ever. Oh, God. That's the joke. Like, it's, it's like the shoe in the gourd from Life of Brian, but instead it's the pouch. Everyone just, there's this unspoken, understood thing that, oh yes, the, the royal pouch. I don't know if I could take it seriously, man. I'd just be like, I don't know the fuck you are. It's difficult to take serious. Yeah. It's it's amazing how little you have to tweak this to make it a comedy. Yeah. Yeah. In my mind, watching this, my mind just immediately goes to the peasants in, in Holy Grail again. So you complain about being <laughs> oppressed or something. You've got the equivalent relationship oh, with the people. Oh, being repressed! <laughs> You are all individuals. I mean, if I went around I'm saying not. that some... Yes, we're all individuals. <laughs> <laughs> I Is it a hot take to say that Life of Brian is funnier than my, uh, Holy Grail? Um... I thought most people I don't know if it's a hot take. take. I think, yeah. I think uh, most people, I, I, I don't know, people choose whatever, right? Which one's Cause funnier? Because I... Th I th Oh, it's hard. Which one? I, I need to rewatch oh, them. I don't know which one's funnier. I need to rewatch yeah. them too. I happily rewatch them, by the way. That's, that is something I'm every... more than happy yep. to do. Yep. Likewise. <sighs> so, um, if you thought we were done with the cringe, no. Oh, uh, oh, we're about we to get to <laughs> one of the most fucking batshit scenes uh, ever, and it's done so quickly. Um, so Galadriel hands it. back the hilt, and I am, I am, yes, I am calling it the hilt for now. Okay, I'm, I'm going to. We'll get to the, the other thing. What do you it's mean the, it is the hilt? It's, it's the, the hilt for now. 
Of and course it's in there. Of course, it's of the hill course it is. Uh, so Elfman's holding it, and he walks over to Theo, and he's like, oh boy, you know, we've done it, here we are. And he's like, you know, don't torment yourself over the fact that you, you, you gave up the hill. You know, don't worry about it. Don't feel guilty. And I was just thinking to myself, like, I don't know, he's not really got anything necessarily too guilty to, th to, to be over in the sense of, um, if they were going to ransack that whole place, they would have found it. So if, if, if the logic you're going to run with is that, then maybe you, you could just say, like, either we die one by one as he's trying to get the hilt, or I give the hilt up and we take our chances on whether or not we'll die. But um, it makes me think, like, so he, he is, once again, he is aware that it is, the world is in the balance by giving up the hilt, right? That is the Elfman's perspective. Just, as far as I know, I mean, that's what he should have been it, telling the Galadriel. It always feels just... like we go in and out of that being a realization or not. I'm never quite clear on it. I don't know if he knows, maybe not the world in the balance. I think he knows that it's very important, but I don't, well, I don't, I don't think even he would have predicted what it actually did. No, but I don't nobody, know if he knows that it would. Even the audience would have predicted it. Like, <laughs> nope. Um, I think he tells Bronwyn Sauron what it was been. designed, Jeez. it was designed to bind the Southlands to Sauron. So that's what he knows. Right. Which I would have assumed, like, it lets you cast a spell of mind control? Maybe. That's, that could be one interpretation, yeah. Anyway, uh, Theo explains that's not why he's feeling down. And oh, uh, what we're about to get is what I would call an enormous red flag. Theo says, when I was holding that thing, when it was in my hands, I felt power. Like, oh. <laughs> so the, the, when I hit him, so I was just like, oh, so we're doing like the one ring sort of stuff. This guy's in trouble. He's getting a bit of that addiction. You gotta, you gotta look out. You gotta be careful. And so Elfman says, all right. We'll rid yourself of it, once and for all. Get rid of it. And he's like, how? He says, here, hands him the hilt. Go and give it to oh. Numenor, and they can toss it into the sea. And it's like, what the... And then he walks off. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rags is muted right now, which is unfortunate, but the, 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 when we were watching it, we paused, because I just fucking no, lost my I'm shit. Here, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you made a, you made a, you made a comparison, right? Uh... You wanted to, or I could just repeat it for you if you want. Um, you know what? You go ahead. You go ahead. You said, it's like someone explaining to you, man, you know that meth I tried? It was really fucking good, to the point where I'm actually kind of worried about myself. And then this guy just comes up to you and says, you hate meth? You want to get off meth because you're so addicted? Well, here's a whole brick of meth. Why don't you go throw it in the ocean? <laughs> Like, what? <laughs> like, why would you it's do like, that? Meth makes me feel powerful. Meth makes me feel really good. <laughs> Here, then. Have this brick of meth. You, you, how about you go get rid of this for us? I couldn't... Like, it's <laughs> unbelievable. If someone is addicted to it, you might be like, you know what? I'm gonna go make sure it's rid of this world. You have nothing to worry about. We're, we're getting rid of this thing. I'll sort it out for you. Don't you worry. Thanks for telling me, buddy. But, I'll, yeah, I'll sort this one out. But instead he's like, here it is, you, you go ahead. And he just, he fucking hands it to him. And I, like, I was yeah. absolutely losing it. I couldn't believe it, because I was like, this is going to facilitate some crazy shit, isn't it? How could Elfman be so fucking stupid? But well, I was, funnily enough, it doesn't even facilitate. It doesn't facilitate anything. <laughs> doesn't I was subverted. That. Well, oh, dude, look, it doesn't facilitate that specific brand of bullshit. Well, yeah. so it doesn't change. This is kind of the thing we were talking about last stream, right? With the whole drunk driving thing. It's like, just because it didn't have the consequence it probably would have had, doesn't it doesn't change you're... the Elfman's decision yeah. being incredibly fucking dis just horrible, reckless, insane. Literally, before Elfman has left, uh, Theo is looking at his scars from having used it. Which is like, it's almost like track lines or something. Yeah. I can't believe this shit. But, uh, yeah, sure, whatever. No, oh. and they're all holding it by like the sword end as well because they know yeah. none of them can hold it by the handle, which would be natural <laughs> because then you'd immediately feel that it wasn't the right one. So yeah, the reason why this doesn't have the consequences you might imagine, <laughs> the because you know there's something else to realize here. I was I was uh, confused for a second when I first saw this. I had no idea how they could possibly be saying this is reality, sort of thing. It's one of those moments. Uh, where the show thinks it's very clever, right? It's like, ah, we, we've put things in place. Got him! Know? Like, if you're paying close attention, you might have spotted that this is a potential. But you could already tell as he's unwrapping this, wait a second. No, that's <laughs> that doesn't, not a... that doesn't that look does... at all like it should. Uh... <laughs> he still hasn't realized himself yet, though. 
No, nobody <laughs> has, uh, which is, I suppose, the first thing to talk about, but... Um, we have an issue. <laughs> this, there is an issue. Oh. It, it might, you might be... I'd be remiss in not saying there are several issues. This is, uh, this is like, wait a minute. That's not the hilt at all. That's... But it was the bag. What? I'm kind of... What's, what has happened here? It's what? a sword-like weapon, so I think you can sort of forgive them for that. Oh, yeah. I guess there's just Nax many is a questions -like weapon. That, is that this, this particular development raises. Did nobody check to see what was in this the rag? This has passed several people's hands for a decent Including... chunk of time. Yeah, for for uh, yeah, for some time, and it's not one of them. Nobody thought to see what was in it. What was I was going to say nobody felt the difference in weight nobody or size and shape, or yeah. just none of that. But the bigger insanity is that yeah, Galadriel was not curious to look at this thing. This thing that she was told must not be allowed in enemies' hands. Yeah, just never cared to look at it. It's like we got it. We're good. This is it. I'm not gonna check, just to make sure. I'm, not like I'm the accurate. whole mission hinges on this particular object. Nope. You well, see, she wouldn't know, would that she? just shows She's the arrogance it. of the characters and their pride and how that's their undoing, that they wouldn't take these simple Whoa. steps because they were so self-assured in their certainty, you see. The, you see, because Elf Man told her that she had to not let him escape with that object. Yeah. So even if she doesn't quite know what it is, that is more reason to look and see what it That's is. That's true. Yeah, that is true. It's like you don't even know what it is. What do you mean? Yeah, what the yeah fuck is like, this thing? you told me to chase him, and it was just a tomahawk. Like what? <laughs> what? Oh. Is this a magic evil tomahawk that will awaken yeah. Sauron? Like, is this no, Sauron's just... tomahawk? Was um, he an avid tomahawk thrower? Uh, yeah. Uh... Did he tie a rope? Maximum effectiveness. Elfman is pretty familiar with this thing, and he managed to hold this without even realizing. I like, not noticed. Beyond, and so you're like, where's the real one? Waldrick <laughs> has it, and he's yeah. gone back to the watchtower. He's activated the sword, and he's plunged it into this this thing. Is this big old slot on the floor underneath the uh, the little statue that depicts the, the sword as a key, which brings us. To, I think I should just summarize the whole event first, and then we can yeah, spend the next it. ten yeah. years talking about this, because it's <laughs> unreal. Mm -hmm. He stabs it down. It opens up a little spillway the, the, for a dam, essentially, for water. It piles out, and it all flows down uh, a big, the big old trench that we saw them building this whole time. And the trench ends in, a, in, in an opening to a volcano that is dormant, and it plows all the water in there which activates the volcano, it erupts like fucking crazy, and uh, it's, it seems like it's there's some level of supernatural shit going on here, it's like turning the world to darkness as well, like the ground is even becoming, you know, I think we're going Mordor mode, is the idea. You guys remember Mordor, it's quite dark. It's I remember deep. Mordor, I clapped, I clapped when I saw um, Mordor. Uh, there's a couple of other things that happen as well, uh, including but not limited to the pyroclastic flow, Adar escaping, a conversation between Elendil and his son. We'll get to all those things. We are now going to just discuss this insane shit uh, um, as best we can, I suppose. Where to start? Uh, this kind of just it recontextualizes everything we've seen up to this point in terms of uh, what Adar's plan was, which is, I need to build up my orcs, capture some humans, dig up that trench ready to open up the, the dam to activate Mount Doom, and to do that, I'm going to need to get the hilt, of which I don't know where it is at all, I just hope I'll eventually find it, and then put it... Presumably he knew he was going to put it here the whole time, or did he discover that this episode? I'm not sure. But that is the plan in full. Is that key all meant to be the Eye of Sauron? <laughs> Probably. I don't know why the elf, when they pulled all the trees and stuff away from the wall, didn't immediately just see this. Because it's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's pretty. And, and as was said, it's if you fill that yeah. with any old thing, it's going to fuck up the whole plan. Fill it up with concrete, man. This is evil shit. If you drop a whole bunch of little stones in there until it fills it all the way up. Yeah. You know? Like, that's it. You've, you've won. Just, you've just, stopped wait, them. Just take hammers and break the whole mechanism. Yeah. yeah, you could also do that, unless it's all immune to being hit by anything, like all the evil stuff is for some reason. 
I, I still don't know why he's made this complex key to begin with because it's not like he didn't even because no, if it was just a lever you could be like well anyone could set it off so he wanted a locking mechanism but he wanted this to happen to the area so surely it doesn't matter who set it off it didn't need protecting it wasn't meant to be top secret or anything it just seems really over engineered for what could have just been a button well so we have to imagine that back when they were having their big old war was mordor or sorry Mount doom not like it goes dormant, and then they're like, we'll need to reactivate that one day, and we're going to do that by piling loads of water in there. So what's the best way to do that? And it's like, well, there's a stream over here. If we if we jam it up, dam it up, I mean, um, and then release it all, and we, we, our future generations dig a big trench, we can line it all up to go straight in. There you go, that's great. We'll, we'll design this mechanism to lock it all up and unlock it, and we'll make the key this big old sword. I'm just sitting here like, so if you have an army of orcs, and you're actually near the coastline, sort of, I mean, judging from the Numerorians, you're telling me then that with all the work the orcs did, they could have just had loads of buckets, right? And just sort of <laughs> tossed all the water in there? Tossed them in. <laughs> I don't know. Is that reasonable or not? I don't know. Uh... There is actually um, an article, I don't remember which website it's doing it, discussing the science of this scene um, and whether it's actually possible. Uh, buckets wouldn't have worked because there's not enough water in there and it probably would have evaporated. But Vaporized before it even hit, yeah. Yeah, so you need to get a trench going down, to, I think it's three kilometers or four kilometers deep, which is where the magma chamber is, and you need a lot of water in there, which would then create an awful lot of steam, which would create an eruption of sorts, and it just happened in real life occasionally, but steel, uh, steam eruptions are like very different from normal volcanic eruptions. They happen all the time. It would happen at really once, pays attention right? to them. Yeah, and they don't spew magma everywhere. They don't create dark clouds yeah, that linger for all of history. It wouldn't. None of that. It wouldn't be this a volcano magical. where magmas just or lavas oozing out of it cons uh, constantly. You know, it would just be like, oh, it explodes because of the steam and the pressure, and then, yeah. and then it's done. And the but volcanoes do this go periodically anyway, because there's always a buildup of pressure in a volcano, and it just sort of occasionally just spurts a little bit of it out, and then it's fine again. But you wouldn't be able to do it with buckets, is the point. You would need you would need a trench. It would need to be a lot of water. But then, again, it sort of poses the, the question, you know, who built the dam in the first place? And then, if it wasn't the elves who built the dam, might they have asked why the dam had the been built? But if, you see, yeah, because yeah, you have to have not just the dam being built, being built with this mechanism, because the mechanism is clearly integral to the whole design. Yeah, yeah. It, It's not Which, just an addition. It has to be done with that, you know, it needs to be built with that in mind. Which means it can't have been the elves who built it, because the elves would have had no reason to build it with the mechanism leading water into the volcano. Correct. Which means they would surely have asked, well, what is the, what is the purpose and point of this dam ex even existing anyway? And is it not perhaps notable that this massive trench that we would definitely have spotted from our watchtowers seems to be leading directly to this dam? Is that they not a little bit that, suspicious? Dude. They didn't spot anything. In fact, because, I don't know who... Yeah, he wasn't talking uh, until... No. Elfman reported to, or who the other people reported to, whoever that was, it doesn't exist in this show. They're like Elf Command. Is this supposed to be Gilgalad? Elf Command. Um, I don't no, know. I don't, they, recalls they, them. They're like, oh, we've been recalled. Yeah, but it's like, by who? And why don't those people care about you for the fact that you, all of them are dead now except Elfman? Also, the Gilgalad is as far away from this place as it's possible to be, because Lindon is far south, the far northwest. And then you have the Southlands, which are far southeast. It's like the entirety of Middle Earth is the distance. And you should have, you'd think, well, you, you do in the lore have, but you should even in this universe have like multiple different elvish kingdoms, factions, fortresses, outposts, whatever, between the far uh, northwest and the far southeast that you would be reporting to. It, it doesn't really make a huge amount of logistical sense to have them reporting straight back to Gilgalad and Linden because you couldn't get further away from where you are here. The reason why they get recalled is because Gilgalad sends uh, Galadriel away, and then he says, that's it, the war's over, the there's war's peace in our over. time, and then that cancels everything around the whole area. So, and so nobody cared passed down the chain, that it they was his never, decision. The nobody cared that they never came back. Like, nobody no. checked. No yeah, <laughs> we, we're just going to have to accept that that's a thing that happened. Because we see Gilgalad later, and the elves later, and they just don't ask, there's no inquiry, there's no investigation. They're like, yeah. Whatever. So, I guess the writers just didn't think about it. Um, this... I just don't know why, if you made a big locking mechanism and a dam and all this sort of magical keys and stuff, 
why you wouldn't have just dug the tunnels at the same time. Why you needed a load of orcs to come in and finish your plan for you. Yeah, why didn't you have secret tunnels underneath that it could... Like, you they just have to, well. like you have to remove the door or mine a boulder or something, and then it opens up the tunnels that you dug ages ago. Because that shit will last. Yeah, it's really weird that they built all this knowing that our future generations will have to build an absurdly huge trench that's incredibly long to make this work. Like, uh, Which is huh. the more difficult part than a yeah. dam. As well, you say that, but the thing is, if you're Adar and you're like, oh, right, we can build that dam, we can, oh, sorry, we can, we can uh, dig that trench and we can unlock that dam. The hardest component of all of this from his perspective, I guess you were talking about from when they set this whole thing ages ago, I was just going to say, like, they have no idea where the hilt is up until it's quote unquote found. And it's like, so that could have been anywhere, literally anywhere. Building that whole trench yeah, would have been they, really they... awkward if they never found the hilt, huh? Breaking down the dam. Yeah, also easy, it all relies on him finding <laughs> the hilt. Yeah, I guess they could break down the dam. Is there anything stopping them from doing it's that? Is it magical rock. stone that can't, you know, I don't know. I assume you could just chisel it away. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, uh, you know how in, like, the Ents, they fucked up the dam? Yeah. Two towers, mm -hmm. you know? Like, it, they could go for the supports of the dam. And, yeah, they didn't have to get a spooky sword. Or... That's true. The spooky sword just was... I don't know. I guess it's nice to be looking for it. It's really great if you do find it. It does make that work easier. And so, yeah, everything really did hinge on this hilt. Um, we'll have to assume that Adar understood the entire system well ahead of time. And so this is in service of creating a world for his orcs to be happy in, right? That's the idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, Ash goes into the sky, blocks out the sun, then they can run right. around. So, uh, he finally defeats the villagers, gets a hold of that hilt, and he's like, no, I'm too clever. I'm going to hand it to Waldrig and get him to enact the plan while I will become the decoy. I thought that was kind of strange. I thought maybe you would want to give it to your like most trusted person, which I doubt is the guy you met yesterday. Um... How does he have time? Because if I remember that scene correctly, he comes out of the tavern, Adar comes out of the tavern, and Baldrick is just standing there, and Adar has time to say, I need you to do something for me. But then the Numenorians attack. So how in, in between the, the horse charge and the horse arrival, does he have time to say, take this hill, go to this specific place, find this thing, this is what it looks like, this is what you do with the sword, this is where you put the sword, this is how you twist the sword, and this is what will then happen. Does he, he have time to do all of that before the horse is hit? I think he would have recorded an explanation on his mobile phone and handed it to him and said, play this video when you get there. <laughs> that, would have, that would have handled it. But yeah, and then you have to believe that Waldrick managed to sneak past everyone and everything to get there. Um, I suppose if he just sprinted into yeah. the forest, that's probably likely, I guess, I don't know. But he's like he's the most noticeable of the villagers, uh, to the other villagers. Like the this other is villagers, the guy who yeah. led the revolt. So the other villagers would surely have been on the lookout, or they'd at least spotted um, him there and maybe said. Maybe that's the one part I would give them some level of benefit of the doubt because most of the villagers are I currently so. stuck in the tavern. Meanwhile, if he's just uh, yeah, yeah. if he comes across as a random villager running into the forest to the Numenorians or the orcs, I don't think either side will care that much, right? Let's be like, whatever, fuck that guy. Mm -hmm. Um. And even if the villagers saw Baldrig running off into the forest, I doubt they would be like, we must stop him. They'd probably be like, oh, that piece of shit. Anyway, moving on. Because, like, yeah. Oh, he's running like a coward. Yeah. So, it's just unfucking real that old man Waldrig with his stupid little spooky <laughs> hilt is the reason Mount Doom exists. <laughs> it's pretty insane, isn't it? I can't. The and the, this, is, this is like Jackson films. It's all because of, it's all because of Baldrig. He is. He is the key to everything. The key to Mordor. <laughs> they create... Fucking hell. <laughs> and so, yeah, none of the fucking plan makes any sense at all in terms of when they would have set this up originally and how they've approached it at this point. It's incredibly lucky that everything rolled out the way that it did. I, um, and, they, and then you start to have these little bonus questions like, did Waldrig know how important that hilt was? And if he did, why the hell did he let Theo hang on to it when Theo's not even, like, you know, in... Drinking the Kool Aid. He's not. He's not in the. You can't vouch cult. for him. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't. He see it. Didn't Theo show it to him in like episode three? Was he, it? Well, he, I'm he sure explicitly he... says like you took it from my barn. Like he he knows that Theo's got it and that he took it. 
But then, so we have to assume that he doesn't know really how important it is, because otherwise he would never have let Theo keep Just it. Just that it is important? Just that it for is important. Some that alone should have been enough reason for him to not let him keep it, if, you know? Yeah. Doesn't work. Can't work, no matter how how they... Uh... And then there was a problem, I don't know if it was the last stream or yesterday's stream, but you know when he goes to... He leads the revolt, and then he just asks Theo to go with him, rather than stealing the sword first and taking it off with him. Like, none of that makes any sense. Yeah, but you can't let things not making sense get in the way of a good story. <laughs> in the way of rings yeah. of power, especially. You know, soldier on. And yeah, what is uh, their plan here? Why are they just running up to the orcs randomly? Uh, I don't know, but I thought it was funny that the orcs just casually were like, we're going to break out now and kill you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, oh, we you have can do that? Now, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, the form in which that they had them captured was just they're in like a little zone and they're told to behave. I think that's it. And Is that meant to be behaving. them demonstrating how much powerful they are now? There's no sun. Well, there like, is the sun at this sun. point's already been blocked out. <laughs> it's still here but a little the sun bit. Is well, yeah, to be but they out, direct so sun. So. It, yeah. All right. I get, yeah, maybe like, the orcs improve. Yeah, they get a boosted power level. Also, uh, they show, see this guy here, near the center of the camera. Oh, oof, look at that. Boom, boom, boom. And vaporized. <laughs> no, he just does the weird tism. He's like, oh, no. Um, with a volcano just fully launching to that degree in front of these people within that distance, I was just like, so all of you are dead. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's it's how that over. works. Yeah. Especially in this day and age, you ain't got... You, this ain't 2012 where you John Cusack in your little car and you can just escape the entire situation, okay? You do. And there's no cover because. Possible, yeah. I'd believe there's that. There's nowhere to hide except if there's like a cellar. And even then, like, you're not going to be having a good time once the smoke, because it's the smoke that's the big problem for you, really. Like, all of this is bad, but once that smoke reaches you, like, yeah, you're done. Gotta breathe. It's over. You got it. Yeah, at the end of the day, you got to be able to breathe. That's right. Airway breathing circulation. Oh, this is one bit by here that I was like, uh, if you can see, that's Theo near the center of the camera. Just see him by there. That like detonates and look at him in reference to this. It's like, oh, he's fucked. That's just, that's annihilate him. And then you get another shot that's here and he's like, whoa, that was close. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. I nearly hit the queen as well, by the way. And Elfman. That would have been so funny if, like, one little comet just wiped out Theo, Elfman, and Queen Regent. And Bronwyn. That, that, oh, that would have been great. Oh, and Holbrand was we there as well. We have to have new characters, yay. Reroll on new characters. Yeah, maybe it's for the best. Be okay. right. yeah, Why does um, he still have no expression about what's going on? I don't know. Look, same with her. Same with Galadriel. This, She's come this... out and said something really stupid, though. This was her moment of peace. She was just exhausted, and this gave her a moment of peace. What? Wait, wait, sorry, yeah, what? I can get a quote if you want, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, please do, I please need to do. know now. <laughs> a moment of peace? <laughs> like, I have questions. <laughs> By the way, this is not something you want to be seeing. This is one of those moments of like, ooh. Ooh, ooh. I should, I need to leave, I need to run. I you see, you see the old man to the left there, who's who's heading towards us. That's a that's a good move. You see the people He's to like, the fuck, right fuck, who fuck, are fuck. running towards the smog. The... <laughs> uh, that's a bad move. That that that's because they don't actually know what's in front of them. That's a big old green screen. They have no idea. Nobody told them while they were filming. I guess. So he's just sprinting into the fucking smog. Cause that's that's what you do. <laughs> It's vaporizing everything. What are they gonna do to justify this? I told you I... they'll have. She'll be a little dirty. But like, do they understand? Am I to believe that this is no, just a magic, me, a magical explosion that does that is actually less harmful to you than a real person? Like, if a real, because in a real world volcanic eruption, if this um, happens to you, you it this that's it. It's it is over. Evil volcano, so that they'll freeze. So it'll than be less. Rest. It'll be less violent and dangerous and potent. A friend of mine who's a big old fan of uh, Lord of the Rings was Caps Lock ranting to me after seeing this episode. Um, one of the things was he just sort of went on a tangent about how fucking bad he thinks Morvith Clark is at acting, and um, <laughs> I don't blame him. What am I supposed to draw out of this expression? I actually have no idea. Well, she's a she's awake. 
That's true. <laughs> Well, well, some people can sleep with their eyes Something open, to... like Gandalf. I, I guess I don't. <laughs> that I don't was know me what... during half the show. Mm. It, I don't it know. Doesn't really juxtapose with the, the quote. I think because I think I saw the one that Disbury retweeted, and like you juxtapose what she chat, says. Yeah. yeah, juxtapose what she says there with the expression on her face here, and see how much of that you picked up. Wait. So what is? Have we got a quote we can read out? Uh... Yeah, it's in the. Yeah. It was. Utterly spent and so exhausted and so regretful that she's completely immobilized and almost is kind of grateful to have a moment of peace. I think she's just utterly uh, paralyzed by guilt, fear, rage, and thousands of years of it. Guilt. So, so like I didn't, I didn't get any of that. Guilt, fear, rage. <laughs> the, the crazy thing is that uh, before this is what I mean about listening to actors talk about this shit. I would have said best faith interpretation that she thought we were on the verge of finally getting the victory she's always wanted, and then she sees this, which annihilates everything. And this is so. This yeah. is like one of the worst she's moments for ever, and she's absolutely frozen by it. Uh, that's the best faith interpretation I'd have. But she's just I added this whole dumbass one on top of it. So, well, I think that the best faith one is is the only one that can work. That this is a complete moment of resignation, essentially of dread. Oh well, I guess she could have twofold, right? Either dread or resignation, but it would probably be dread, right? Like on the cusp of victory, it all falls apart. And you, but you fail so, why would you permanently. Walk into it. Well, I, that's what gets uh, me. Yeah, She's dead. I, I, She's so dead. Well, everybody <laughs> yeah. is. I don't know how. I don't. I, I, is because people are chatting, memeing like, "Well, it's evil, so it's not hot." It's like I guess. I guess I have to <laughs> presume that that's the way that it works in this show because it's over. I, 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 but, but from like a pure visual storytelling standpoint, what are the what do the writers actually think I'm meant to believe here? Because. When I watch this, it's like, oh, is that the end of the show? <laughs> like, that's it. They lost, um, and got consumed by a, no a giant No are of going ash. home. Absolutely, none of them. Nobody's going home. It's over. Even the ash doesn't make sense because ash is black. But in the all the trailers and stuff, that whole scene where she's covered in red—that's this. That's the next. Yeah, episode, she, so, right? so I just realized from that, that, that preview Latrium. image, she's going to be this, that scene. I remember seeing clips of that shit before. She's going to be in red soot for everybody, basically. Right, but how, can you... how is she breathing? How can she breathe? How It's so unreal. Why? And just, I know that the writers and directors will be like, this is Lord of the Rings. It's a magical world. It's like, yeah. shut up! I know it's... <laughs> it's I know it's, I know it's somewhat, I, yeah, like, I know it's the Lord of the Rings, but, like, I presume that when a fucking volcano erupts and you get blasted with ash... Like, that that's not gonna be- you're not gonna be okay. No, 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 no. Elves, unless you elves work to tell me they're magical. Like, 1300 degree Fahrenheit, the elves can take that, because that's how they're made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that whole Meteor height. Man scene with the Hobbit, where she falls in and goes, Oh, this is cold. That might just be, the, like, their setup for this. So, every, everyone's beaming about it. I would not be surprised if they, would... they think that's so clever. Why would somebody watch this and go like ten out of ten? I don't know what it is that would be cool to them about this. Like, they oh, want to get a job at Amazon. In Mordor. The future. Is that it? Epic. Like Mount epic, Doom epic, epic, Mordor? epic, tragedy, epic yeah. tragedy. And you have a lot of money, and there was a fight scene, a big action scene that wasn't very good. I guess I just don't see. I don't see how this could be fun for anybody. That that the mortal was created because like what was the guy's name the uh, crazy old man put a sword in, in a little <laughs> hole and then a dev and then mount doom was created well, like like this is why what I mean would about anybody this... be happy about that like they if they went to watch sing. return of the king and they're there there's mount doom and you're like ah yeah i remember when the old man <laughs> put the sword in old the man waldrick the legend <laughs> crazy old man waldrick about him the men will sing songs about him forevermore. The song of old man. <laughs> You'll be an orc the hero. Song of old man. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that's the thing that baffles me about this whole fucking show. It's insane. The first five hours, and I, I'm legitimately trying to like be of some level of fairness here. Is like summarize them stories. Like the Harfords. Guy falls out of space. He's chilling out with our main character, who's a part of a community that are trying to migrate. That's it. Full done. Flash All of it. There. Dwarves. And it's like, well, uh, they were mining really deep, and they, they've come across Mithril, they've discovered it, and uh, it's a bit awkward because it cost them a few uh, mining areas, it's like they're not sure about it. Okay, elves. Oh, they, they're having trouble, they're losing the, the light of the Eldar, and uh, they, they might need Mithril to sort that out, they've started an alliance in terms of building some stuff with the dwarves. Okay, um, Southlands? 
Yeah, well, uh, the orcs are attacking them. Um, and so they went to the watchtower to hide out. Okay, and bear in mind, I'm describing the first five hours. It's like, right, so what else we got left now? It's like, uh, Numenorians. Well, I guess Galadriel the Numenorians. She is trying to hunt Sauron. She is almost sent away, but then she decides to come back, and she convinces the Numenorians to go to the Southlands and attack the orc incursion that's there. That is that is that it? Have we done is that everything? And then yeah, and then it's like and then in episode six what happens? Oh, just like Mount Doom gets created. Yeah, just Mordor is, what, is you know is created, Mordor has an origin is point. All those like we have two big isn't battles. That insane? Five we had five episodes where like it, we wasted so much time and then in episode six it's like, oh yeah, Mordor and Mount Doom <laughs> like, like they created. realized they had to catch up what? and things had to happen. Again, leaving the docks of Numenor and at the end of the next episode the war has been completed. Like what yeah, do you mean? The war has been completed and then no it wasn't, everything goes horrible and now we got Mount Doom and Mordor. <laughs> like we are racing like in episode six. Yeah. <laughs> look at this look at this repeating like this is this is the experience of watching this show. <laughs> <laughs> Just standing there as you're consumed by this cloud of death. How can she survive this? How can anybody survive this? How Surely is she the force of that as well? Like that oh, yeah. you alone would take There's, there's so apart. much physics here, like temperature, the lack of oxygen, as you just said, even just the blowing away of what's happening here. It's showing us that all of the, the, the other objects it's just plowing through, the buildings, the fences, the grass, it's all getting annihilated. There's, there is electricity in this thing. Like, I, I don't see... It has its own weather systems. I don't understand how this... getting totally still. They want to be like, how... Did, did they want to bait that she's died from this? And then be like, she made it, everybody. And that's like a catharsis moment for the audience to be like, oh, thank goodness but our I mean, hero didn't how die. Could how, it possibly, can how can you bait that Galadriel died? Because well, they're, they're a special kind of people, goes, okay? Goes. Because the people who like this are dumb. Well, do they not know yeah. who she is? And that no. she's very much... is not dead? <laughs> like... It's a different Galadriel. I was about to say, do we really believe uh, this right. is Galadriel after everything we've seen? <laughs> well, right. Who <laughs> yeah, is this imposter? Well, yeah, because I, I guess we <laughs> haven't Sauron talked about it that much, but like this isn't this is like not tethered to Peter Jackson's like Lord of the Rings at all, right? Like it's not even continuity it's wise. Well, I think is it's it meant to be? to be? I think it's yeah. meant to well, be. Is yeah. it not? It, it's not allowed to be like legally connected to it, but as it's all in the same universe and it's all meant to be canon, yes, oh, it should I be. guess because because I've been watching this like this ain't no, this is just like totally different. It's like totally not connected. Um, I mean, they, they keep doing those those callback, very overt callbacks to those films, including stealing some lines. Sort oh, of sure, that was, I, I guess it's it's more so that in no official sense, in you know, in the sense that like um. Disney Star Wars like is the sequel to the original trilogy as upsetting as that might be because you've got you've got the same actors same continuity timeline directly and and like the studio that created it is the studio that owns all of it whereas here it's like uh you know like nobody who made the original this except like Howard opinion. Shaw is involved you know it's very easy to divorce it yeah, I've been treating it basically in my head well, like I, that this I, is not connected actually to said, the like, films. The first time it became clear to me that it's actually annoyed me more than ever is seeing Mount Doom being activated. It's just like, ew, get the yeah. fuck away from me. Yeah, <laughs> for, for for everything that we've seen so far, there's a level of like disconnect that you can have. But here it's yeah. like, no, I no. Calling shit. her Galadriel is one thing, but she's so unlike her and doesn't look anything like her. So I'm just like, it's fine. I can I can just ignore that. Elrond, same deal. I I you're not him. It's fine. None of that's going on. And it's like Mount Doom is just a big old volcano. It's kind of hard for me to be like, <laughs> you don't look like volcano. <laughs> you, you yeah. Look um, why would anybody be happy with this though as like the way that it the I guess I guess that's I guess I'm just baffled by the 10 out of 10 um and I'm not well, like I being hyperbolic up. so like I just I don't understand what would be cool and appealing about any of this IGN gave episode 5 a 7 out of 10 as well so so I was starting from a relatively high mark I don't even well yeah IGN when they do reviews for like media skew higher than Video games skew higher for review scores than films and TV shows, generally. Like, if a game gets a 7, that's kind of the equivalent of if a film gets a 5 in a lot of people's minds. I think IGN does the same thing with their film reviews. They scale up big time. But even then, like, a 7. So, this is 3 points higher. This is a good 
a good, you know, 30%. What? Wait, shit, I'm, I'm messing up my damn probabilities and statistics. We talked about this yesterday. They think it's markedly better than the last episode. Significantly Why? Better. Is it because there were fight minutes. scenes? Is it because there were fight scenes and then Probably. Mount Doom exploded? Like, and that yeah, was- Yeah, I, I could believe that, that it's all this- might actually be it. It could be this shot. This is- I could totally see yeah. other people being like, this was incredible, and be like, this why? Is cinema. This is cinema, yeah. This is what it was all leading up to. Galadriel standing totally still as a massive cloud of ash <laughs> just washes <laughs> over her. Her hair isn't even moving. Why like, I looked it up. Her hair stands in defiance of death. It defies it, physics, yeah. They say it delivers exceptional action and character development. Oh That's god, that, that, just, yeah, we, we could uh, read that. Or, character or, development? Just emotional roller coaster that ends with an enormous blow to the heroes. You could say yeah, that. Yeah, enormous <laughs> blow. <laughs> all of the ground laying that. paid off. Apparently that's another thing. So all of the preceding episodes was worth it because of this. Uh, uh, episode, were, so one of their highlighted quotes. One of the highlighted quotes is episode six showed a masterful ability to weave all this character building into dramatic action. Sure. <laughs> That's all yeah, I can say to any of this. Just like, agree. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, uh, it's good um, as well. Oh, it's, at cool. least like, it's finally portraying the orcs as being more complicated. Uh, and that's good because we need to have a proper conversation about what it's like to have races that are evil by nature. So right, that's another good thing. So they extra haven't watched the, uh, the extra credits. <laughs> they haven't watched our coverage of the extra credits video. Well, they need to oh, do. Oh, I yeah. see my video on it. Yeah. This is that's their uh, their little blurb at the end, right? Their little statement. Master okay. ten out of ten masterpiece. The tides of battle keep turning in the thrilling and devastating sixth episode of The Lord of the Rings: The Rings of Power, giving us fantasy television at its finest. Ugh, you want to vomit. Really? You just want to vomit. Really? Like I just don't. Meat. I, I, I know, right? Like, it's. I don't. I, I do not understand what the appeal would be for this show, given that there are, like, no characters in it. It's basically. Who are the characters in, in this show? Like, as in, if you sat somebody down, who. If you sat down the person who gave it a 10 out of 10, it's like, can you just list me, like, in dot point form? Five traits of Galadriel, the main character. Just like five traits that she has. Dot point them for me. Even that, I'd be curious if, if they're all going to be negative. They are going to be negative. Because um, I would say arrogance if, and, is a huge one. Vanity, yeah. narcissism, like this. This headstrong. I think um, that's not negative reckless, enough. <laughs> headstrong reckless, needs to be a yeah. Reckless is better. Uh, yeah. Negligent, maybe. Yeah. Yep, yeah, I'd go with that. These are all very fair. Uh, socially inept, like she has no idea how to work with anybody. Yeah, and these are all unintentional. These are not the traits that they... It's just... And then once you go past them, it's like, well, if you went to a different character, could you list more than three traits that they have? Because they all generally have one. And even, like, that one is a very generic nebulous trait. yeah it's not a strong one like you're you're not a complicated character but you have this very strong trait about you that's you know interesting well, yeah. to watch like, one note I'm, isn't necessarily boring you know? elf man is basically his trait is protagonist that's like his trait he's like the generic hero man i will do that's what is right is. because being right is good and being good is right yeah He's, he's generic hero man. And then it's like, well, what about Elrond? It's like, Elrond is, I don't know, kind of like... A liar. Um, alive, well, I thought you just said. He's just alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's around. He exists. I just say that he's like, he's like generic elf man, basically. Like generic... He's, he's, he's... What even is like, a generic elf in this show? We learn so just, little um, about the elves. Like, kind of just... All of them aristocrat basically like that's it like generic sort of arist aristocrat character who's p or, d posh maybe that's it he's posh that's all that's the only thing that i can use to describe him but you see, i i struggle <laughs> a lot of the time well, okay let's I, do an easy that's... one you can describe nori's traits she goes off the trail. Uh, absolutely, Fringy. Go for Basically, it. Fringy can do it. Oh yeah, she's uh she's not like the other hobbits. That's 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 her. Well, what else? She basically, goes off the trail, she, right? She does things differently. Well, yeah, because the only she's thing that you would describe is she's basically that she's peppy. That's that's basically who she is. She's I just want to like beat and happy. Watch the show with curious, the actress yeah. and be like, I have been watching six hours of this. 
<laughs> do, you, do you feel this is real good for Nori? Do you, do you feel do it? I blame you or the director? Well, it's got to be the director, surely. Can you imagine, yeah. like, the amount of characterization that is in every scene of Lord of the Rings and every interaction you have with everybody and everything, and it's just so frustrating. They couldn't learn anything. They couldn't take anything forward in this show. They don't know how to do any of it. Always backwards or nothing. I just want to let everyone know, it. we don't think this is very good, in case anyone was... No. <laughs> It's not quite as good as Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> not quite. It's not quite. Almost, almost, of course. It's it's pretty. It's almost there. It's pretty good, but not quite. And imagine not quite if you put yourself level. fifteen years down the line, and you're looking back at the long history of of televised or cinematic Lord of the Rings, and you say, well, "Tell me about Gimli. Uh, tell me about Aragorn. Tell me about Legolas. Tell me about Gandalf." Or even just say which are the characters that most immediately jump out to you. The, who, who are the people that you really love and remember from that show? Every single one of them comes from the Jackson films. Even though you know, the combined extended edition will be so much shorter in its total duration than the five seasons of Rings of Power will be. If you ask anyone to say, in this sort of what Fring was saying, if you ask anyone to tell you in, in 15 years' time, tell me, about, um, tell me about Nori from Rings of Power. No one's even going to remember her name. No, uh, we can no, already, uh, already struggle through 20 that. years since Lord of the Rings, and those things are still gems of culture. Mm -hmm. We have examples of this already in all of like the Disney shows that have been coming out. It's just like all the all the new characters, and and obviously the destroyed ones. The, like who's what's the name of the is it Ali Kari something like that? The bad guy from Falcon with Soldier. Ali Morgenthau. That's the Ali yeah. Morgenthau, it's like, yeah. It's like tell me about her. It's like nobody knows what. Just well, nobody could know. even tell you what the plot of the show even was. Nope. Like, I don't think they could tell you. I don't think they could tell you the plot of, like, Moon Knight. And that was, what, six months ago? Yeah, what's, the, what's, the, what's the name of the girl in Moon Knight? Uh, oh, my God. I, I'm i pretty sure I just had it, and it's gone. Um, Layla? Layla! I have no clue, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in chat just said Layla, uh, so it's probably that, yeah. And then there was uh, Arthur, the villain. And what was his goal? He just really liked uh, the crocodile Ahmet. lady. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I remember yeah, her name because of the porn, yeah. Big old fan of Ahmet, that was it. But that's the thing, is it's just... Um, and it's really... The media is super disposable, and you don't want that to be, like, Lord of the, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> you know, like, the Lord of the Rings like tv show this massive production is gonna be like have no enduring i just don't see it i don't see this show having any sort of enduring legacy because i'm i guess i'm just i'm not convinced when i see people saying that they're really they really like it um that that they that it's really enjoyable and and, and interesting to them that at best it's like uh i guess this is nice to look at and and watch and just consume the story, but it, I I just don't see it. I don't I don't really this show in particular. I I don't get what the appeal would be. It just drops immediately from the mind. Twenty years down the line, your parents introducing their kid to the Lord of the Rings for the first time. And they're watching the Jackson films, and the kid, you know, I don't know, maybe the kid says, "Daddy, how did um how did Mordor get like that?" And then the parent says, "Let me tell you the story of a man called Waldrig." <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. What would you even? How do you summarize Waldring's story? He's the descendant <laughs> of a bunch of people who let with, with Morgoth. You're like, okay. Um, when he finds out that the orcs are on their way to his, his village, he goes up to the watchtower, and then he says, "You know what? We should just team up with the orcs." And he does, and then he creates Mordor. His story might not be over though, because he's still in that tower. So <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they would do damage. with his story, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. Like he comes back, dude. You know what would be funny? Right fucking man. hilarious! Is as the spillway opens, he slips on the water coming through, and he's in that trench, just going wow, and he goes all the way down <laughs> into Mordor. <laughs> he, he was the first explosion. <laughs> <laughs> the the critical mass. Yeah, he hits the the lava Mordor first before all the water does. Turns into a giant Waldrig, giant Godzilla. It's the slow motion. No, it's, it's like um, when Gollum falls into the crack. Yeah, of Doom exactly. Slow motion, and he's falling, and you get Waldrig doing it. <laughs> yeah, everyone's I, favorite Waldrig. Right. He hits it, and he's like the guy who got slowly lowered into acid in Rick and Morty. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. 
The only thing this is uh, the worst episode of the. Of the I thought so. Uh, it pissed me off yeah. absolutely the most, and is dense as fuck. Um, even though I think it took us longer to cover episode five, but then again, Shad was here, so that it makes some more sense. I, don't know. I feel like if Shad were here, he probably would have had many things to say. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. couldn't I'm quite sure. make it. Um, oh, these fuck up seem so bad that just anyone could tell you everything that's wrong. You don't need a shad for this one. It's you don't need that anything. basic stuff that you mentioned. You just watched it. It should just speak for I itself. I would never recommend anyone watch this thing. No, I don't, don't know do what would, what would be like of note, you know, like some shots look nice, sometimes the music's good. <laughs> you know, yeah, like um it was worth mentioning, uh, yeah, Adar escaped at some point. No one was watching him and I guess yeah, his chains nobody was just, watching him. His chains weren't very good, so how he goes? Yeah, they were a little bit loose. It's funny because if Nobody he didn't, was watching him. <laughs> if he didn't, it's like he would have just been obliterated by the fucking Mordor activation. Yeah. So, good thing he got out of there. Maybe he just dug a hole and hid. Uh, yeah, that's true. Then, uh, and the only other thing was, uh, yeah, the uh, Alandil and Alandil's like, "Your pain is bothering your horse, my son." And then he's like, "I'm not in pain." And then he's like, "Your horse is bonded to you, and so it d detects your pain, your mental pain." What a weird scene. Yeah, and then he's like, oh. And he's like, how do you know this? And he's like, I learned it from your mum. Okay. But all of this going off while a volcano is erupting. <laughs> it's kind of weird to throw that <laughs> scene like, in, in the middle of the of the, of the whole of Mordor scene. It is really fucking weird that they just put that in there. Can they expect anyone to remember that? You no. You don't put any character developing scene immediately, like two seconds before the most cataclysmic event in the show. It's just not what you do narratively. Well, yeah, because I guess you could summarize it as, oh, they're friends now. They were they were kind of not friends, but now they're friends now. Oh, and it's funny as well because like it's like Asildo was wasn't he using that horse in a grand total of about five minutes, or I guess a, a day's ride, right? But he did that in seconds, so I don't fucking on he screen in twelve half. seconds. There you go, twelve second ball. Yeah, and he jumped off it, mm -hmm. like almost immediately. <laughs> oh, so that's it. That's the episode. Episode six. All right. Wow, incredible. It was really That's some bad. cinema right there. Glad we got through it, though. <laughs> <sighs> so, um, I suppose we Pretty should good. get back to finishing up Super Chats, because we've got exactly... I got, I got about two hours exactly before I'd have to stop, so I think we should be able to... Oh, sure. All right. But I will offer both Little Platoon and Disparu, if you guys would like to get on with life itself, or hang out with us, is completely up to you. I wouldn't want to restrict you, because I already appreciate how much time you guys have sacrificed uh, breaking down uh, this awful I've thing. About, I've got about an hour. I'll never know how much you sacrificed out. for them. <laughs> Good line. That's another show everyone will forget about, WandaVision. Um, well, yeah, okay, in that case, just uh, just let me know. and Thought you out, no problem, if, if needs be. I'll just take on from where we were earlier, uh, which was... Have you seen the five hour long review called How Incredibles 2 Destroyed Everything by Gaming Magic 13? It's a great video with some very well thought out criticisms and some fantastic editing. Uh, let me actually put that on a new tab. That sounds interesting. Gaming Magic 13. That's the name. Um, I have not seen it, but yeah, sounds like that's, that's definitely a video I could see being made because Incredibles 2 is fucking annoying. All right, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll, I'm going to put that up on another tab and uh, take a look. Uh, you should check out Tolkien's Untangled's videos, in which he details how he would have adapted the Second Age. His suggestions are infinitely but no way. His suggestions are better. I couldn't have imagined. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, what? Tolkien yeah. might be able to tell stories better than some one. This 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 person in Rings of Power, who these collection of, I was gonna say clowns, but clowns don't deserve that. They try and. <laughs> trying to make people laugh, at least, you know? Uh, Daredevil is 56 million for season one, Rings of Power is 60 million per episode. That's insane well, and horrible yeah, to know. Another, another little fun fact is that Daredevil was, um, the, the production schedule was tight. Uh, I think they made each episode, each episode was filmed in 13 days, which, that's short for a, for yeah. a show like that. Um, I mean, it's, it's just, um... Yeah, there's kind of no excuse, really, uh, in the case of uh, Rings of Power. It's the most expensive show ever made. Like, technical limitations and constraints. Like, a lot of the constraints that make it difficult to tell, uh, to, to achieve certain things in other shows didn't exist here. It's, it's the writing. The writing lets it down. 
because it's like the part that isn't contingent on the budget but mm -hmm. yeah but you'd think that'd be the easiest thing to do when you've got an infinite budget you can base well a billion dollars almost infinite for a tv show uh, you could hire whoever you wanted. You yeah, but the problem is that writing doesn't... I mean, no-name people. Writing doesn't seem to be valued, like, in any sort of clear, tangible way. Like, it... it, really it, it, it you, actors are valued in a way. Uh, cinematographers. Like, all, all manner of parts of a product. And, of course, just the physical, like, filming, visual effects. This is all, like... Yeah, it seems... Priced. We There's, all, like, a price attached to it. But with writing, there just doesn't seem to be. We all seem to vaguely... It's only the story. Um, if, if if you know like the we create a binary of good bad and everyone's got to judge acting and we take some serious moments so it seems like the whole world is vaguely able to throw the dot in the correct binary same for cinematography same for a lot of things but when it comes to writing it is just all over the fucking place we have like millions and millions of people who think that it's okay let's put it this way if, if you're on like the board of directors and they're like all right we're trying to sort out who's going to be writing the next star war and it's like jj abrams do you have that no 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 that was that was awful and it's like Okay, Ryan no, Johnson? writing, writing, yeah, writing. No. And then you go, who, who else you got? And it's like Colin, Colin Trevoraro, Trevoro. And you're like, why would you suggest him? They're like, well, because of the Jurassic World films. And then you're like, why do you think that's a good reason to do it? They're like, they made money. What are you talking about? They're really good. Yeah. They, they, I, they, I, I, they made money. It seems like um, something that is, I guess, is interesting is when you think about names that names attached to and recognized in like the occupations of filmmaking. You know, you've got directors who everybody's familiar with, actors, um, to some extent cinematographers as well, um, maybe not as much in the mainstream. With writers, it feels like there's not as big a list of screenwriters that people immediately recognize and understand what their work is. You've got people like uh, Aaron Sorkin. I guess you could say Tarantino fits in that, like people he's recognized for his writing as well. The list just isn't as big, though. Um, and like, it seems like with television shows, it's often writing teams, right? Like people would recognize the Simpsons writing team, but you probably struggle to find many people who could tell you the names of like many of the writers on that team. I, I don't know. I guess like maybe it is a matter of in, cause with books, like the, you know, there's so many books where you look at them, the author's name is bigger than the title of the book. Because like when it comes to novels, the author is often like way more important than specifically like what well story you don't is, have right? like, cinematography in like books and well i mean it, it makes books. it makes total sense right like it, yeah. it is just the writing that's all you have i guess putting to one side the editor but like the editing is the writing as well it's just the writer at the forefront um but the bare so, minimum like, yeah the, the bare the bare minimum you'd expect is that they had credits to their name that they'd actually written a load oh, of yeah. i get what you mean previously. like it's kind of and baffling this, that you would the get the showrunners, your showrunners to have yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the writers themselves, if you look at the writers, there's basically nothing. It, well, we've seen amazing. it with Marvel as well. Um, like, a lot of the recent Marvel films, it's like, how many writing credits do you have? Two. It's like, really? Like, you got Michael Waldron was an assistant writer for, like, one season of Community, wrote one episode of Rick and Morty. It's like, you get to be the lead writer of a Marvel television show. I don't get it. I don't understand that. Is I just don't. Is question of sort of studio well. control? Maybe, like that, right? It... Because if you got somebody like Tarantino, how much control can you exercise? I mean, they had Edgar Wright, and he left. Sam Raimi. <laughs> like, yeah. you had Sam Raimi too, but you, I guess he you wasn't... Get the, you get the yeah. occasional story of a, you know, a director who is finally allowed to create his passion project. You know, he's, he's written the thing, he's created the thing, this is entirely his own work. And quite often, the director has no taste and no imagination, and the passion project completely fails because he's the only person who's interested in that. But I wonder whether like the wrong lesson isn't sometimes taken. I, I imagine from a studio's perspective, it is safer and more reliable to have a larger team of nobodies who you know you can overrule if you want to than to put all of your eggs in the basket held by that one guy who's a little bit wacky and who really has this, this passionate idea. Because if that fails, well, you're kind of screwed and you had no oversight over that whatsoever. Whereas if you have this, this team of nobodies who've not done anything before, they will be much more in hoc to you, your concerns as a studio so that you can focus group with them. And if you want to change a part of the plot because the focus group told you they didn't understand it, well, the director, the writer, whatever, they're not going to argue with you too much because they owe their careers to you at this point. So I, I kind of... Yeah, I think it's as simple as the less of a, of a reputation you have, the less you're able to, like, exercise that authority. Um... Yeah. There is... It did. It it sucks, and it's it's clearly one of the biggest reasons why so many of these massive productions fail in terms of just being good. 
but man, I'm like, uh, well, script really matters. Like the script is super important, but it's just it's not the valued story that much. in the it characters, the and it's just chat on. It's 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 not. It's only the story, guys. And I think because people don't need would one say, of those. Like, well, you know, film is a visual medium and all of that, and it's like, um, I I think the the way that I would explain it is, what is a story at its like most base form if you start pulling back um like visuals and sound design like what do you end up with it's like well at the end of the day it's going to be like words on a page um it's uh it's it's like it it is i don't know what it looks like to have a film without a screenplay um in much the same way that i don't know what it means to have a film that doesn't have visuals it is inextricable which which is important it it matters it needs to be valued more Needs to be understood what the difference is. I mean, because we we say this all is like it's people people in chat trying to explain how it ends up happening. It's like bad robot. There's a lot of uh, nepotism in terms of what writers get chosen for what things and stuff. And it's just like yes, but considered among all of this is that they are assuming that they do know how to write. When J.J. Abrams writes up his script for The Force Awakens, he doesn't think like, man, I'm such a bad writer, lol. Yeah. He's like, no, I, exactly. I know what people want to see. And then, by the way, he got a shit ton of praise. He he got all kinds of people telling him that he saved the series and that he did an incredible job. And I, I just mm. think, like, you know, it's hard to tell at that point what bad writer, good writer is. Why would he believe us? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's true. And I don't think he'd even bother really delving into the reasons why he would just be like yeah i guess this don't like it for whatever reason but all the praise i'm getting and yeah, all the money I, i've been given it must be successful. i did all the stuff on my checklist mystery box and everything i did all i hit all the, yeah, the yeah, things that i'm supposed people to tension do. and awe and a few jokes that's what i'm supposed to do it's about, it's about experience yeah. right but even if the scriptwriter thinks that what they've written is a masterpiece that's going to get handed up the chain and everyone above them is going to read it and they also have to think it's great. And at well, no point when they're filming it or watch the first episode, think, actually, this is it's not coming off right. We need to change I, it. I guess to probably because when it comes to certain people, the most important thing is, do we think people will like it? Um, because as opposed how to... How test know, like groups how, respond um, to this? Yeah, uh, and we have they, to be careful yeah. as well because I think that even the five of us here right now are much more invested in writing as a craft than a lot of normal people, even people in the industry, right? You could sit down with all the producers of uh, Rings of Power or whatever else and we watched the, the, the Jackson trilogy and we're like, oh, it's fucking great, yeah, excellent. Like, oh, I love that. Put on Rings of Power and we're like, Ugh. and then they're like having the exact same experience that they just had with the Jackson trilogy and you're like, wait, why? How is that even... And they're just like, what do you mean? Why? It's this. It's the uh, fantasy. It's uh, it's this action-packed scenes. There's characters who yeah. are moving along. It's like, yeah, of course I do. And you're like, oh, you don't actually see the difference. Me. That's that's unfortunate. Sucks. You're missing out on like what films have to offer. Yeah, because then you want to roll back instead of explaining why no. Rings of Power is bad. You need to be like, wait, can you tell me why Lord of the Rings is good? Because that's way more important. Is tell me why it's good. I need to know what you what you value. Do you know what's happening in it that's valuable? And if they're like, yeah, I loved it when Aragorn was like, I'm going to get you with my sword. <laughs> you know, like sometimes oh. there is this, like, there's a latent awareness that these things are not quite the same. So, like, I, you know, quite often you'll get comments on the video saying, you know, why are you thinking so hard about the blockbuster film? It's just a blockbuster film. Like mm. Jurassic World, Dominion, for example, like criticizing Dominion. You get people underneath. You get the weird class of people who just, as dino fanatics, who will love anything dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. But then you get the other class of person who says, like, well, why are you thinking too hard about it? I thought it was really good fun. It was enjoyable. Jurassic Park was just a blockbuster. Don't think so hard about it. So it's like, okay, but I, I accept that you enjoyed Dominion. Is do you think really Dominion is accepting you enjoy it? Do you think it's as good as Jurassic Park? And if you really push people on it, the answer is usually no. And the same thing is like with any summer blockbuster, like crit criticize a Marvel film, and people say, "Why are you thinking so hard about a Marvel film? It's just a blockbuster." And you say, "Okay, is this Marvel film better than Jaws?" And they all usually say no. And then you can start having that interesting conversation as to why. Okay, I accept you kind of liked it when you watched it. But if you're saying yourself that it's not as good as the blockbuster used to be, maybe it's time to start asking questions as to why that is. And it might just be the case that, you know, people sort of subliminally understand that there's a deterioration in quality. They don't mind it too much, but they know it's there. But they don't really understand why that difference in quality exists until they're invited to start asking the questions by comparing it to an equivalent film from 20 or 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. You also have to bear in mind that there's a whole generation of people where this is their entertainment. This is yeah, what like they introduce, and a lot of mm -hmm. people 
don't go back and watch like films from the 80s the 90s or anything that that's old i want to watch new stuff yeah absolutely and i so think it's, this is the bar it is safe to say that there's probably kids these days who when you start up a new hope they'd be like yeah it's old yeah like oh man <laughs> Which is, uh, well i'm pretty sure that there are people who just won't watch films in black and white and it's like man you're just missing out on like a huge portion of, of films what a weird thing to get hung up on well, I mean, just, uh, I'm assuming you guys are similar, but it's like there are some films made that era that are just like they just head and shoulders annihilate the films that are coming out today. A lot of them, anyway. Mm. It's a weird thing as well. Like if you start watching Babylon Five now, especially the the CGI and stuff, it's so awful that it, yeah. it does make you think, "Wow, this is terrible." But as you watch it, it kind of blends together, and you forget. And so when they show that scene, it, it only pulls you out at first, and you kind of get drawn in. It's a bit like VR. Um, if you use VR, the graphics, especially at first, were awful. They could be pixelated, but your brain eventually just accepted it. It's like, oh, this is my world now. And you, yeah, as long you as you're enjoying it, right? I imagine that's like as long as yeah. the phenomenon for getting very immersed in something like animation, cause you'll eventually just uh, contextualize it all as a live reel, and you're immersed instead of being like these are drawings. Like the, that part you, will just go eventually. Even the worst of 3D animation, you'll eventually just be like, well, that's a ship in space. Like, yeah, but it looks really bad. It's like, yeah, but it's really consistent, and so I can just my brain can just register it the way that it's intended at, at certain points. Um, I think the brain is it's... very good at doing that of just accepting um, what's being presented and going. But when the surrounding it. story is so well put together as it is in Babylon Five, as well as the the actors doing such a great job, and it's such an involved world, it's like yeah, eventually just that shitty CGI little thing over there. It's like yeah, it's fine. Yeah, and you'll find with things, because I saw a load of comments when people were like, well, if you um, went through the Lord of the Rings trilogy like this, then picked it apart like this, then you'd have the same problem. So yeah, but I never felt like I needed to. Cause I, I, I was disagree, thinking about anyway. other things, caring about yeah. other things. You can find stuff to be uh, critical of when you nitpick Lord of the Rings for sure, but you simultaneously will find loads of things to be hyper-praiseworthy of, which you don't find in Rings of Power when you slow it down. Yeah, with the th And the thing with Rings of Power is I'm so bored. That I, I find myself thinking that's a really stupid line. <laughs> so Dude, I, I find myself focusing on everything else. I'm not just bored for anymore. For my brain to do. I was bored after that episode. I just saw it's it's more of a I'm I'm wired in a bad way now. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> it's got me there. Yeah, it's it's got me closer to that She-Hulk level where I am definitely not bored. I'm just transfixed on how terrible everything is. Oh, anyway. <laughs> I don't even know what we were responding to exactly there, but hey. <laughs> and I was probably like favorite Simpsons right. moment or something. Yeah. It was, with Ryan, right? or... it was Daredevil's like... cost compared to... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh... Daredevil didn't... Yeah, that's right. Uh, would you consider having Deck of Shadow on if you decide to watch through the Monsterverse? Monsterverse? Is that... It's not the same as... A... That's the... Uh, King Kong and the... stuff? Yeah, that's the one. I mean, hell, if, you, if you'd like to, yeah, you can, you can join us for that. Uh, could you objectively confirm whether or not One Piece is real? It is, as far as I know. Yeah, One Piece is a real anime. But, um, I haven't seen it. Uh, Cosmoronic looking a little different today, Fringy. Huh? I, I guess they're saying, oh. like, uh -huh, it's EFAP. Oh, I don't... Well, I haven't done an episode for a while. I need to get on that. I've just been... I'm working on this video, and I don't want to stop working on it, so... Yeah, you'll get one eventually. <laughs> uh, versus matchup, Ratchet and Clank versus Jack and Daxter. Uh, Ratchet, Ratchet and Clank are winning that one. I wouldn't actually know. I know my Ratchet and Clank, but I don't know much about Jack and Daxter. Is it is Ratchet um, and Clank's arsenal well, is enormous, Ratchet though? And Clank, Ratchet and Clank have access to weapons that Jack and Daxter don't have. They live in a sci-fi world, kind of, to be fair, but like... I guess one of the things is that maybe because um, Jack has like dark eco powers, so that might sort of level it out. Yeah, um, just to clarify for chat, this is a fight to the death between those those four people, but you know, two groups of two. Well, yeah, the two of them are working together. Um, I think that Ratchet has access to weaponry that Jack can't account for. Um, if we presume that they basically have free reign over a bunch of the weapons. Right. Um, but it might be a t it might be a close one because of that. Uh, that might be that might be a close one because of uh, Jack's got is more powerful innately. Tough one. Uh, 
Uh, how would you rank the episodes from worst to best? Hmm. How? That's tough. I mean, um, do we I'm start off I don't, with I don't, I think they mean episodes? to just... I think they're just looking for us to rank them, not, like, asking us the metric by which we would do it, necessarily. I mean, we could talk about that if you want to. Obviously, uh, the, we, we on EFAB do... We try to go by most inconsistent for worst, least inconsistent for best, which puts... Um, so episode one is the best, then? <laughs> I don't even know. Probably one and two are the best. I have a feeling that the I order think. is going to be from worst to best, six, five, four, three, two, one. Um, it's it, possible. It is, it I think. might actually be. I might put four before five. It's, oh, it's hard to tell. The Numenor stuff, so little Numenor stuff happens in five. So, really? Actually, funnily enough for me, um, I think six is the worst. It is, it is clear, but like five was shockingly bad when we covered it. I didn't realize how much, how much it was just yeah, it was so it's, awful. It yeah, might be it, six, five, four, three, two, one. It might be that, yeah. Um, the more they do, the worse it gets. <laughs> it does. It does unravel more so as it goes along, which does week. make some sense. Like that. That's the same case for everything. It gets harder to keep everything in line the longer you go on. But like, come on, guys, season one, <laughs> you could maybe give a shit. I don't know. Uh, you either die or live long enough to create the rings of power. Oh. I hope we're only getting the, the one form of this, you know? I'm hoping it, it stops there. Uh, Ragu, have you had a job akin to being an English teacher? Because I've noticed you are very thorough when it comes to word spelling and sentence structure. Oh, just the basic stuff, I suppose. But no, I was never an English teacher. I don't have any English um, education apart from just what you learn and you know, through schooling and whatnot. I never took any English classes in college. I've just, I've read a lot. And when you read a lot, you just sort of absorb it. It's like diffusion, right? You just absorb all of that information uh, and you notice things. And I suppose I, I really like the language and I think we should give it a lot of respect because languages are very important things. And I think that unfortunately, especially when it comes to typing things out, um, People put shockingly little effort into what is essentially a very, very important aspect of being a human, which is conveying your thoughts to other human beings. Um, I, I, I really, I really like the language. I think we should treat it with more respect and more effort. All righty. Uh, my very first super chat has to go to the long man. Started watching Hot D because of you guys. Hopefully, end will be better than Game of Thrones. Go team Matt Damon Targaryen. Uh, well, yeah, I hope you're enjoying it. I hope it stays... I, I want it to be good overall, okay? That would be very nice. I pretty much have this approach with everything in media. It would be nice if it was all good, but... Gosh darn, I'm just gonna stay realistic. Approach it one by one, see how it goes. But yeah, nice, we're gonna... I feel like we have uh, earned a new episode tonight, after all the shit we've been doing this past week for She-Hulk and uh, Rings of Power. Hope is a good one. We our brains need a rest. We Did just it, need to go outside in a forest and just, just, just rest. We got this one, which is a reference to what Savhide said. It says, "Little platoon, I'm coming to kiss your cheek." So metaphorically, no, in real life. <laughs> Myra, there. Buy me a drink first, and then we can talk about it. <laughs> Did anyone else get the impression any media made by Amazon would become corporate soulless trash? I mean, look at their games. The games? I'm not familiar with their games. They have games? I'm just not familiar with their games. Yeah, they've got like so. They have a game studio. Huh. Yeah, New World is an MMO. They oh, released right, another New one which World, got taken yeah. off sale, I think, after three days because it just bombed and then they said they were going to fix it and never did. It just never came out. Oh, great. New World was a big uh, hit at first. Josh Drive Hayes did some good died. New World videos if you want to see what happened to it. Alright, yeah. Uh, hey, Rags. As a dog, would you hey. say your favorite drink is kombucha? Aha, I'll see myself out. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's not. My favorite drink is... I don't even know what my favorite drink is. I legitimately think that probably more so than food, my favorite drink is very contextual. Um, if you were to say, what was the best drink you ever had? Then 
it might have been a a simple humble Coca Cola that was drunk from a mug mm -hmm. while I was at summer camp when I was in Boy Scouts. Um, there was there'd be a store at summer camp. Uh, this, this was Gus Blast Scout Reservation in Arkansas. Um, I think it's I think it's named after Rockefeller now, but it's Gus Blast in my heart. And it's it's a big old place. It's like a big old forest mountain place. It's a whole like reserve. It's scout reservation. And depending on what merit badges uh, you took for your classes during the week, you'd have to go to different locations, which might entail potentially a decent amount of walking around in the Arkansas heat. But I, I remember that I had it was EcoCon Ecology Conservation was no yeah it was EcoCon yeah it was on the way there from a nut from a different class which I believe might have been orienteering uh, but I can't remember specifically I remember the pavilion for it along on the way was the trading post which was the building where it was basically the store you could buy Scout knickknacks and doodads and. Pinewood Derby stuff and knives and all, all that. It's like a little mini outdoor store, but they also had candy and drinks. And I remember, man, Arkansas heat, you're walking around all over the place and you can go in there and get an ice cold Coca-Cola to put in your mug and take along the way. It was just the best drink ever because it was all contextual. Um, so I don't know what my favorite drink was, but that might have been one of those moments that because I remember it to this day. So it must have been very. Yeah, really, really good. It was wonderful. Like you, you value it, so you suck on the ice once you're kind of done drinking it, and you still have the ice in there. You, you just savor it all, every last drop. All right then. Why do you carry your own mug around? Because if you bought, so you want to have a mug uh, on because you get money off if you buy the mug. And plus, it's just a good thing to have. You want to have it with you so you could constantly fill it up with water at the different pavilions and, you know, teaching stations. You know, you got to hydrate, so. Rags looks sad today. I am not sad. I don't even think my picture is sad. That doesn't look like a sad picture. There's an expression I'm neutral. going for. It's not quite sad. I think I'm hungry. Yeah, mine is. I, I think I'm pretty neutral. I'm just I'm just watching all this. I got my pumpkin and my hat because I did four years of wizard witch school, got my degree, and now I'm just you know I'm earning. Did we ever find out Cast what uh, what um what house the Sorting Hat put you into? Oh, I'm Slytherin. Oh yeah, I'm one of the bad boys. <laughs> uh, hi Rags. Hello. Is Rings of Power a better adaptation of Tolkien's work than Shyamalan's Aragon or The Last Airbender? I mean... I don't <laughs> know enough as about... As far as I know, it's all the... horrible, so... Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen... I've read at, at least two of the Aragon books. I think I saw the movie. I remember it being very bad. But I can't really remember anything that happened in it. And I haven't read Silmar Silmarillion, so I couldn't tell you how accurately it really conforms to the Tolkien lore. I imagine not very well from what I've been hearing. I'd have to see all that again. Uh, is there inherent value in claiming based on another work, even if only in name, to sell it? So that, uh, Can you say that question one more time? Is there inherent value in claiming it's based on something, uh, even if only in name, to sell it? Inherent value? No, I don't think so. No, I don't, wouldn't say there's inherent value in that. Um, Depends what you mean by inherent value. I mean, th there would be inherent value, I guess, inherent financial value if by basing it, claiming you've based it on a known IP, you're getting more money from that. That's a kind of inherent value because yeah, was, the, the property has... I was just going to say, what do they mean? We'll get to it. What exactly do they mean by inherent value? Yeah. If we just say, if, if we just say there's value in it, then sure. like, is there value in it? Leave inherentness out of that. Um, but, I mean, it seems to be, there seems to be great value in taking That's these, why they'll do it, isn't it? You know, IPs and names. Exactly, that's why they do it. They didn't all just decide one day that they'd do it. I think, you know, being able to leech off the success and notoriety of something else is instantly just puts you a step ahead of making your own new thing. The problem is, the more things they destroy, they're pissing off enough people that then go to the next thing and they already don't trust them with that so these companies are destroying their reputations as they do it and 
I don't think that's something you can do long term. You can't keep buying new IPs and doing it when you've got a bad reputation for always destroying everything you buy. Well, Disney's been going for a while. <laughs> I'd hope this is well, something happens to them as a result. We'll see. I mean, I, 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 I even say that knowing that there's an effect. There's been an effect. I mean, Disney's reputation is in the fucking toilet now. Well, yeah, their reputation's been destroyed, but also they've kind of got loads of IPs because they've got sort of all of Marvel. So each one of them acts like a new brand. But if you take something like Lord of the Rings, there is no other Lord of the Rings. It's the biggest one that you've destroyed. And yeah. so anything they go from this point on, is it no the biggest or the most them. revered? If you go by books sold, it's I think it only loses out to the Bible. Pretty big at that point. Oh, but we're like using in terms book of... sales as it. Well, well I, mean, I mean, fantasy IP. Yeah, individual units sold and relevance culturally is going to be pretty good indicators. But I would say, like, the is, uh, Lord of the Rings is still one of the bigger competitors. Yeah, but like Star Wars and Marvel are other ones. So, you, as you just said, though, to kill Marvel, you have to kill all of those individual stories, which they're doing a good job of. They're getting there. They're moving through all of them. <laughs> Got a couple left. Like, literally, Rocket Raccoon is one of the only characters left in Marvel that hasn't been fucking annihilated. So, unironically, yeah. But he'll have a his little, turn, I'm a sure. Raccoon in space. Uh, hey, Rags. Hi. I watched AVP for the first time. I laughed my ass off when a predator gestured an explosion with his hand, and the girl has to say, "It's a bomb." I remember that. It's funny. He points to his little wrist thing, and then makes a little like, you know, like with your hand where you you make a fist, yeah, but then expands. yeah, and she's like, "Whoa, it's a bomb." Oh yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Let us not forget that old man falling from the sky ties all the timelines together. There is no way all these timelines work when we know that. Uh, by the way, a Super Chat last stream said Studio Trigger, people who did Edge Runners, did Star Wars Visions. They only did one episode on Visions. That's an anthology. Other animation studios did other episodes. Yeah, okay, so that's not indica uh, indicative that Edge runners would be bad, even if I mean people said the visions was good. Some people did. Uh, Indicative. I don't know about that, guys. It's very clear. Every elf structure has an in case of orc emergency rope attachment. Hi, Rags. <laughs> Here's first off, hello. Second off, I can almost believe that's true. Yeah. <laughs> in case of orc. Uh, F one. The cold protocol for elves. F one should be an indoor sport. F1? F1? Formula Racing? One? Yeah. I think well, you're I, about go-karting. We're not getting the joke. I don't think so. Don't because know. if it's roofed, that creates a closed space where you have all these vehicles constantly putting... Is there some kind of reference here that's happening or something? I'm assuming it's to do with Rings of Power. Gonna somehow. be honest, don't know what the fuck's happening. Neither do I. The only interesting thing about F1 is the crashes, though, so I'm all for anything which increases their frequency. Oh, God. Uh, so, do the Harfords have small feet? I no. would assume that they have small feet, but it's relatively larger compared to their body size than you would see on a human. Yeah. Like, I don't think a hobbit foot is as big as a human foot, but when you consider the size of the hobbit, it is proportionally larger to its body. I would assume. Uh, this wouldn't fly under the patrician's watch. Don't know what that means either, I'm afraid. Uh, I don't think Rags would enjoy the Silmarillion, but chapter 11 of the Sun and Moon and the Hiding of Valinor is the chapter about setting of the sun. The Akalabeth is the downfall of Numenor. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it would be fascinating if they even, even try and do that in the season of Rings of Power. Because you have to... Yeah, uh, how would they even depict the world, A, being flat, and then B, being rounded? And then the, there's massive floods that flood a lot of northwestern Middle-earth, and that includes large parts of Linden, where Gilgalad's capital is. Um, and it's this huge, and because Numenor gets drowned, and uh, Farazon, who's gone to invade Valinor, gets buried for all time, uh, along with his men, uh, under some rubble. Uh, and he's only to be released when the sort of the equivalent of the Book of Revelations happens. It's the final battle, which is sort of hinted at throughout the Silmarillion. And then he will be sort of set free, and then he will take he will uh, take part in that big last battle as redemption. 
Um, there's all this like, really, really rich myth and world building that we'll get absolutely nothing of. But if you're interested in that kind of thing, actually read the Silmarillion. It is worth it. All right. Uh, WH fantasy character of the day is Village, the Curseling, abused runt of a barbarian tribe. He prayed to the god of change for help and awoke fused to his brother with full control of their body. Oh. Sounds kind of scary. The, the, the god of change Master... who, like, gives you stuff you're looking for, but maybe not in the way you thought. That sort of stuff. The... Uh... Village the Curseling, also known as the Master of Misrule. That's that's a pretty guy like that. And the Twisted Twin is a powerful mutant chaos sorcerer of Zinch, permanently fused to his more muscular brother, Thalmin, by the will of the Changer of Ways. Hey. Can you get you a little, little picture here? Get you a little, little picture. A picture. Master Blaster. Uh, uh Ringy, who is your favorite Looney Tunes character? Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck. Any reason why? Um, he's the funniest one to me. Um, and I also, I guess I, uh, I like his, um, he, he's always, uh, he just, he, he just can't, he can't do it. He can't get what he wants. <laughs> like, it just never pans out. Um, which often makes for more interesting and entertaining, um, stories. Not to, Deny that Bugs Bunny is also really great too, though. When his story is usually a little bit different, yeah, it'd be Daffy Duck, and then probably Bugs Bunny. Um, and I really like the Coyote as well. I like Wiley Coyote a lot, but yeah, Daffy Duck is top tier. He's a tragic character, Wiley. He is tragic. That's why I like him. He's uh, I feel bad for him. <laughs> I do. Uh, please bang what. Bang, ban, Wong posting and Wong posters. It's impossible to talk about the topic being discussed in chat during that terrible spam. It's so unfunny. I'm not. You might sure. want to go to the Discord. Yeah, I'm not sure how to how to really approach that. There's a problem here. There's a bit of logic I use every once in a while with certain things, but it's like, you know, it's like a hypothetical. You allow a lot in your EFAP chat. Would you allow a, a spam? And it's like, no. We usually knock out any individual user for spamming the same thing over and again. It's like. What if it was that, but it was individual accounts all posting once, and it was the same thing? And then it's like, well, at that point, that's just EFAP chat. It, you that's guys, the, like, you get to control... That's what they want to talk about. Yeah, you guys get to control the quality of the chat. If if you all want that, if that's what you want... I said this when uh, when the Doctor Strange video was premiering in, in the chat. I didn't ban anyone. I just said, if this is how you want to spend the chance you have to talk about these topics, then... That's it. That's that's. I guess that's it. Um, so having just asked to ban reference to Wong, you've guaranteed the rest of the chat all evening is going to be Wong. Yeah, and, and then they will try and find that. a way around it, and then there'll be there'll be an obvious post of just like, really? So you guys are allowed to just mess around with like the Jeb Bush sort of memes, but chat can't. It's like, yeah, I I I, I don't think I want to pull the line that far where we ban chatters when they get obsessively posting their their movie titles, even it. It infected. Uh, if enough people want to do a meme in the chat, then enough people want to do it. That's the thing. I know I prefer seeing everybody getting involved in the topic, but if chat want the Wong post, then uh, we'll just carry on so that the listeners can still, you know, get the stuff they're looking for. And at the same time, you can still post your, you know, paragraph, your your involvement in the conversation, and we can still see it. They can't Wong post that fast. Um, but honestly, like I, I think. With everything, give it a bit of time and Wong posting will disappear because it won't be as funny anymore. That's just how it goes. Don't worry about it. Uh, Mythbusters tested we'll smashing right. both empty and full beer bottles against a dummy head. Both were very not good for your head. Concussions at the least. Was one worse, mm -hmm. though? I assume yeah, one. I thought you would let us know which one was worse. Yeah, that was I the feel discussion. cucked. <laughs> give, give me, I do give feel me the answer. Too. I feel... I feel like you haven't been completely honest with us. You've led us on, took advantage of our curiosity. Uh, the Last Kingdom is a great show and has great battles on Netflix. Also, Castlevania is great and the cyberpunk anime. Alrighty. Uh, it's times like this I feel like my fat... Alright, it's times like this I feel like you're my fat girls and I'm your feeder. Alright. <laughs> 
Okay. It's a thing. That's <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mole, you ready for the? Are you ready for the forty-four hours of upcoming Rings of Power this season? Appa, yeah, I, yeah, the forty-four That's hours. Too gonna many be the hours two for me personally. By the way, I'm really glad that Andor takes death seriously. Also, high rags. Hello. I mean, I, I, I'm not even sure exactly what that's in reference. The fact that people die, or the fact that deaths have repercussions. Maybe? Um. Well, we had our guy who basically got shell shocked by all that happening. People are actually caring about the lives of their comrades. Oh yeah, the death doesn't the opening, seem obviously. like a glorious passive thing. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair. Uh, dogs, if I was you, I'd kill myself. Kanye West. Quote from Kanye West. Okay, all right. Huh. Everyone involved with this episode all high fived each other and said, "Wow, we're amazing. We nailed it." Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised about that. Yeah, they probably did. They think that this is a very triumphant show. Springy, I love your avatar. Is this a, uh, an emu warrior? Is this a new character or just a cool doodle? Hi, everybody. All emus are warriors. Um, it's a cassowary. It's my Halloween <laughs> profile picture. Uh, how old is the sword and how did Waldrick get it? Passed down from his ancestors. That's the only answer I could possibly have. I don't know. Maybe he just found it. He was walking around one day and he's like, oh, look at this. That's pretty neat. Looks pretty now evil. It's, it's probably it's probably something to do with my good lord Morgoth. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like a spooky Morgoth sword. It does. I mean, it could be a couple of thousand years old if it came from during the time of the war with Morgoth, which I guess it must have done. Um, so it could well be, you know, a thousand, two thousand years old. Uh, you know, I've never understood elves in Peter's or Amazon's elves. They are immortal, but they die, so they're not immortal, right? Or am I just wrong? Depends on what definition. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of definitions of immortal. One of them is that you do live forever, but someone can still kill you because you're not invincible or invulnerable uh, or everlasting. Yeah, you won't die of old age, essentially. Yeah, you'll just stay at a particular age. You'll stay at a particular health, but someone can still shoot you in the head and that'll kill you. Uh, vampires, for example, are immortal, or at least they're considered immortal in certain... It depends on the fiction, it depends on how the word's being used. Uh, but I will be, I will say it's sometimes creatures that are immune to everything are called immortal, and so it can be confusing sometimes. It depends on, like I said, the writer at that point. Uh, let it go, N-word. Oh, you're talking about the knife is guy. Yeah, well, he's dead, so <laughs> no more racism from him. Wings quote of the day, whining, almost crying, sniped, 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 sniped. Ah, look at me, I'm a sniper. Him playing hard or something, presumably. My guess. Poor guy. Uh, that is a good question. This isn't really canon. The rights are not owned to make this canon, I think. So yeah, it could be a separate continuity. I would have to check how the rights work for... How, how this and uh, the Jackson films relate to each other at all, or if they do at all. I assume there's a way to separate them out into separate continuities by rights. So that's, that's On the, um, the nice. LOTR fan wiki thing, it's listed as non-canon. Good. <laughs> that's, that's good. Yes. <laughs> that was the only good news I had today when I looked that up. Uh, the whole turning the sword slash key affecting geography and causing weird magic was done before in Lost, another bad reboot project. Oh, when they moved the island, yes. Uh. <laughs> Amazon have an active technology partnership with IGN's parent company Ziff Davis, so they're most likely compromised as a media outlet in general. IGN would never not compromise, they were just useless as a source of information. This is what I mean, I always find it weird, but I guess I'm a part of it. Like, criticizing IGN for the shitty takes, it's like, I remember doing that back in, like, back when I first started watching YouTube. IGN's always been shit on. <laughs> yeah. I like Kotaku, was the same. Yeah. Too many normies watch it. Uh, Walker is still the best Phase 4 character. Certainly new character, I think he gets that, yeah. Yeah. I don't even know if it's close. Who else would? Yeah, I was gonna say, who else contender? is there? Um, hmm. Wait, well, you talk about new characters because established characters, Spider Man. Yeah, new characters. I don't know who would be competition as new characters. What's up, my digger orcs? 
That could be construed as offensive. To orcs. Yeah, we're not orcs. My first video game was Halo 1 at a friend's house. Map was Sidewinder with CTF. It holds up today. Halo 1 is more than fun, more fun than some games coming out today. I'm sure it is. Yeah, Halo 1's great. It, it really is. It holds up super duper well. I replayed it I think recently. Halo 1 was my first first-person shooter. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure what my first one would have been. Well, I guess mine would have been Quake, house, right? Yeah. Or is that not? That counts as a first-person shooter. Right? Yeah, that's the first-person shooter, of course. It's weird because I, um, I don't associate it that way, but yeah, it is. It might have been Halo too. as well for me, Halo CE. At a friend's house, and his room was upstairs, and his older brother was playing Fable 1, and then uh, he wrapped up so that we could play uh, Halo. Bring the Xbox downstairs to the big TV Whoa. and uh, play Halo. Yeah. Lord of the Rings on Prime subreddit is a treasure trove of bad reasons why the show is good. You should give it a look sometime. It takes a baffling. <laughs> oh, no. It's all the same all shit right. we get every time. They'll be like, this is a fantasy show made for, we won't say babies or children now, they'll have to say teenagers so that it's something to try and argue why it doesn't matter. It's magical, it doesn't have to make sense, There's, it's, um, oh my god, it's like they've never seen anything before. Oh, it's just like the Jackson films, same flaws, you guys, you know, the Jackson films are actually terrible, so, you know, all the reasons like that, it's just gonna be the same I wonder shit. If they've, I wonder if they've done the same kind of thing that the Wheel of Time one did, though, because for that, they just started point-blank banning anyone. Anyone that didn't like the show, <laughs> they would ban you. And so they had to set up their own other subreddit, it was, it went crazy. Yeah, that happened with the Star Wars stuff, the Game of Thrones stuff. Like, it's fan splinter when the new thing comes out. The way the world It's that they assume that anyone that criticizes the show is doing it in bad faith. Like, yeah. you actually really like it, but you just want to dislike it. It's, it's a bizarre view. Galadriel equals Rey. Arandir equals Finn. Bronwyn equals Rose Tico. I, oh. I think I actually prefer Rey to Galadriel. Yeah, I do too. Ray is a lot less I think so, abrasive. Yeah. She's she's like lame and annoying, but uh, Galadriel is she has a tempest in. I don't. Yeah, I hate Galadriel. <laughs> she's such a cunt. Fun fact: the person who wrote Chernobyl wrote the scary movies and Hangover sequels. Huh. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. I wow. guess maybe that was things he never wanted to work on. He really wanted to make a Chernobyl show. Who knows? That's weird. You go from making disasters to making a documentary about a disaster, I can kind of see the leap. Hey, that's, that's I think it's I like quite that. common as well. Um, I can't remember who, who it was, but there was a comedian who said every comedian wakes up and they hit like either 30 or 40 and they just suddenly want to be taken seriously. <laughs> and every serious person wants the other. They suddenly want to be a comedian. It's just the grass is always greener. Now he's sure running The Last of Us. Well, we'll have to see how that turns out. If you want... Also, Neil Druckmann as executive producer. If you want an example of a Game of Thrones story from a Tolkien perspective, look up Queen Berothiel and her cats. She used her ten cats to spy on her enemies. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> Good for them. The tower falling scene is very much like the river on fire from Game of Thrones, letting the enemy advance and crushing them with a trap. Uh, you could argue it's like that. Just there's a little bit of an absurd me mechanism going on in there, that's all. Um, as much as I'm loving all the extra EFAPs, don't burn yourselves out. Rings of Power and Disney Sludge is forever, after all. Well, so we're gonna technically take a week off now. In the, this episode that you're listening to will release on, s like, a week from today? Or, yeah, pretty much a week from today. Uh, the episode we did yesterday will release tomorrow. Um... And so we, on that actual Saturday when it comes around, we might do something else. You know, like, go outside or eat food. I don't know. But, we'll uh, go outside and eat food and sleep outside. We'll do all those things outside. Everything we'll we say, normally do inside, we'll be doing outside. By then, episode 7 will have released, and we probably will already be activated. Like, ready to actually do another episode or something. Yeah. We, uh, it takes a lot to burn myself, Rags, and Fringy all out from talking about media that's either shitty or... Something we really want to talk yeah. about in general. It takes a lot. We've got a lot of experience in this field. Harry Potter has outsold Lord of the Rings in books. And in brackets it says I still bad. I didn't actually know that. I would have thought Lord of the Rings sold more, but hey, eh, fair enough. 
Harry Potter's. Very I know, Potter's but Lord of the Rings has been around for so long. You know, you would have thought that's that... true. But Harry Potter's been around for twenty five years, right? And considering the yeah. amount of movies and the steady release of them, yeah, that's true. And oh, it got like the double dip because all the books came out and then all the movies came. Wait, out. Wait, I thought they said that the books. Is, oh, you mean like the, the movies come promote out them? And is when what the you're saying? Come yeah. out and promote the books. Yeah. So I guess that would apply Lord of the Rings, of the Rings too. Yes. Tolkien yes. took off yes. very slowly as well. It, it wasn't it a did. huge it read did. until. Yeah. A good sort of 10 20 years after when he it was a, it really built slowly in publicity and in popularity even then it becomes yeah. big afterwards yeah, harry potter was just and flying off the shelves from the beginning i imagine harry potter might be in that category of books that uh gets a lot of copies sold because schools buy them whereas i'm not oh, sure how many yeah. schools are buying lord of the rings yeah my school and maybe up, it's uh, a Hobbit broader rings, age but... demographic for lord of, uh, for harry potter that's true as well yeah that's uh, you guys should check out Fable and Fable the Killer Who Doesn't Kill. It's a live-action adaptation of a good manga, and it's got a few tisms, and uh, one character is underdeveloped, but I think you'll enjoy it. Hmm, Fair I'll enough. keep that in mind. Uh, Andor, Andor cares about blunt force damage. It killed a guy. I'm not even... Uh, blunt force damage? We... Is that yeah, the guy, the head, the guy, the guy that he uh, attacked. Oh, I think he threw him into the wall. Well, it seems, yep. it seems like a oh, lot of people. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, are we talking about the initial scene where he, he hits yeah. him in the face? Yeah, yeah. I think I think some yep. people found that hard to believe rather than uh, realistic. Really? Yeah, I can absolutely believe it, especially if you fall uncontrolled and then hit your head on the concrete yeah. ground. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like um, like people who get sucker punched and then they fall down and and hit their head on yeah concrete and die because of it. it like us, like I said Definitely before, happens. like human beings are simultaneously resilient and frail. Um, also, Fringy's cassowary reminds me of Fern Gully. Does it? They said. All right, I then. don't see it. Are we talking about? Are we talking about Batty? I don't know. Uh, maybe Kratos will die in God of War 6. Uh, maybe. Well, who knows? Find out, I suppose. And uh, with that one, we are caught up with today's. Woo! So yeah. we'll Damn. likely end there. But before we do that, uh, I oh know it was God. just yesterday we did this, but I mean... Yes, for a little platoon. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. How about <laughs> yeah, you guys two. once again, not to, as if there's any updates since literally hours ago, <laughs> but like, what are you up to? What's ever that's happening on the channel? Because this will be out next week on the Moolah channel, so at least, that you know, it will have been a whole week before they've heard this before, so. Um, yeah, Disparu, what are you up to? Why should people subscribe? Uh, yeah, Disbrew on YouTube. At the moment, I'm covering uh, Rings of Power and She-Hulk mainly. I like to review really, really terrible television and rip it apart in as entertaining as funny way as I can. I think that's where the... I, I, the honestly, at the moment, if I want to watch something good, I go back a long way to watch it. And the the way I get my entertainment out of modern TV is just making those videos and ripping it apart. Uh, apart from that... In the off times when there's nothing to review, I do uh, sort of pop culture news and stuff and cover it that way. Uh, but yeah, uh, the reviews are definitely my uh, the favorite part of what I do. Cool. Um, yeah, and you, you've said before you've covered uh, Wheel of Time season one and two already, right? Oh yeah, Wheel of Time is it's a book series that I've like had in my life for mm -hmm. maybe like twenty five, twenty six years. Do they so end up going? I will for be a... covering Wheel of Time. Till the end of time. <laughs> Do those videos end up going long when you're hyper passionate? About oh, <laughs> oh yeah. My Wheel of Time reviews were like two hours or something, an hour and a half, two hours for each one. And that was me when I, because I, I, there were some of the first videos that really took off for me. And so I was heavily editing them. There was one time I remember I cut out like an hour of just me talking about the first five minutes of the show. I was like, no one's going to watch this. But that's how much the five minutes of that show had <laughs> destroyed the law. That I'm like, I have to go in and explain to people that haven't read the books exactly why this is so awful. And then in the editing, I'm like, no, no one will care about this. So I had to cut it out. Um, those videos, they took me, I know one of them took, I think I always publish them three days later. But I lost my voice twice in the recording because I recorded for so long on each single one. And, well, I, and I just had to take a passion, break. That's passion, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's a passion for the story. Oh, 
I will, I'll never forgive them for what they've done to that show. Because it was like, it was all there for you. All you had to do was just put it on the screen and you decided to make an entirely new story and just, it really comes across as if it's made by someone who actively hates what they're writing about. It wasn't just, I think I can improve this or make it better. It's like, I, I need to destroy these people. It's a horrendous series. Um, well, yeah, awesome. Link in the description. Full platoon. Same question, though you've answered it a couple of times. Find a new snazzy way of answering it. Why not? What are you up to? I, I can Ooh. I can always find uh, new ways in which to say the same thing. Um, yeah, it's uh, so uh, well at the moment I've got this Andor video, which uh, the time of recording this that will be going out I think tomorrow. Um, and then it's straight back to Rings of Power, and I'm sort of trying to make Rings of Power. It's it's all video essays and, and and the like, and I'm trying to make the Rings of Power one sort of the uh, as comprehensive as I as I can get away with, sort of with time constraints as well. So I'm working on the episode three review still. That's going to be at least I think two and a half hours. I imagine episode four is going to be similar, and it's probably only going to get longer from there. Uh, the last one was a couple of hours as well, but that's like the, the, the introduction. And the idea is to try and combine what we've done here, uh, like straight criticism of the plot, of the narrative, of the writing. Um, as well as, you know, sort of tying it into that this is where the law is relevant, this is the alternative that could have been, or well, should perhaps have been depicted and said, or this is why the alternative was better. Um, and to try and sort of make it as, as I say, as comprehensive as possible. So that's sort of like the big ongoing projects, but because they're long videos and they take a, lot, a long time to put together, like that will take a little while to, to get out. Um, so I'm falling ever further behind the show. Every new episode comes out and I'm, I'm one further episode behind. But um so that's like the main one, and I might sort of come back to She-Hulk occasionally, just because it hasn't really piqued my interest in the last few episodes, but the last couple of videos were quite well, well received on that one. Andor is kind of still intriguing, so I'm trying to, I think, probably cover a bit too much at the moment, um, and it's a case of sort of picking and choosing, mm -hmm. and I'm still still yeah. just about balancing it with the uh, the day job stuff, although I might, might be uh, junking that at some point. <laughs> it's crazy after like less than a year of the channel, but I'm sort of in a position to get rid of that. Um, in which case, more time for more videos. But uh, yeah, the schedule is and or Rings of Power, and then I'll probably be solidly Rings of Power for a little while, and I'll fit other things in where I can. Well, in two weeks from now, uh, both yourself and Dispro will be excitedly invited back to cover the final two episodes of Rings of Power with us, if you'd like. In invitation excitedly accepted, thank you. We're, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Or it'll be really short. Uh, nice and... <laughs> Nice and quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess, uh, yeah, so links in the description, of course, for those. Uh, a new one just came in, Fleems. I want to make sure I said that, make sure everyone catches Fleems. And then, uh, Fuck, Marry, Kill, Chun-Li, Kami, and Jury, of which I do not recognize any of them. And to be honest, you don't you know, know who Chun-Li is. But I know the Chun name, but I don't the, know the... This the fighter lady and you don't know who cam well so chun Lee, cami and i'm presuming the third one are all street fighter characters yeah i don't play street fighter at all um i figured that even just through like uh just participating in video games you'd have a, some passing familiarity with at least yeah, Mahler, what the fuck um well i already said i know the names but i don't know the characters i, 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 I didn't play the games i yeah i can't help you <laughs> i'm so sorry I wish I could, but I'm just so, so, I, I'm a cave dweller when it comes to select games, which I'm going to fix over time, you know? I'm going to play the those Mass Street Effect Fighter games. Looks cool. uh, have you not games. played Mass Effect? We've talked about this many times. No. <laughs> I just, I don't know what, I, I figured, because I know that Rags has definitely played them. He has. Um, yeah, okay. Them. Uh, well, yeah, there's always that list. Uh, I can't remember which game it was recently that I realized I needed to, I mean, I will say, was I played a lot so of the Naval games. Well, I mean, there's Soma, but beyond Soma, there's other there's other games that I still need to play. Name him, chat. Wow, mean. Also, I think new questions are coming. Aha. Uh, have you seen the Tolkien Untangled channel? He has a series on how Rings of Power should have been made to stay true to Tolkien. Highly recommend. I have not. Then you guys. I've heard it nope. recommended a couple of times, but I haven't checked it out yet. I haven't. Um, oh shit, also, ask the question, so I will. Disparu, uh, which is better, Halloween or Christmas? Oh, um, from an entertainment perspective, 
I'd prefer Halloween because I love watching people play like horror games on stream and stuff. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But if I had to choose one, it would be Christmas for like the experience. All right, you, it's very, and... it's, that's virtually identical. Yeah, to you and Little Platoon answer, had the the yeah. most amicable answer. I think that myself and Rags are willing oh. to both accept as opposed I... to killing one of you. I get the feeling Halloween's not that big in the UK. Uh, so I don't think it is. It no, but it's impact. big in my heart. <laughs> so that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think it produces a lot of great content to watch and like just people doing scary games is hilarious to me. I could watch them all day. Yeah, man, absolutely. I mean, I want to stream some spooky stuff this year, but it's it's coincided directly with trying to set up for God of War. That is not a spooky game, but don't worry, guys. I'll play something spooky. With uh, I think Metal's doing like a spooky arc playing games as well. Uh, but 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 Fringy did for sure promise to play Soma on stream. He did. So what I floated as an idea, which I think I'm leaning towards preferring, is recording myself playing it, but not doing it on stream, and then uploading it. Um, to me, it seems like it's the best. Of, I I get the impression that I would be distracted if I was playing it live. I would just naturally be distracted by paying attention to stream stuff. Um, but at the same time, I can appreciate and understand that well, it would in that be case... interesting. Wouldn't it be worth what? testing out a different, lesserly important horror game to see if that's the case, so that you don't potentially miss uh, that Well, I mean, it could just be, like, a lesser, like, just any game, and I, because I kind of, it's, uh, it's complicated, I, it depends, because I, um, I played Splatoon, I was playing the campaign on stream, it's like, yeah, but I don't really, I don't need to pay attention to story, really. I'm sure that'll upset some people, but I don't need to, but if I was playing something else, like, I don't know if I would want to play God of War on stream. I'd feel like that's a game that, again, I'm worried that I would not be paying full attention. We'll test it. Uh, yeah, I could, I could test, I could test This is the thing, like, the reality on, on is that, and I would tell you this, and I assume any streamer would tell you this does it all well, is like, you can just block them out whenever you want. Whenever you're engrossed in whatever's happening, chat just disappears. Um, oh, well, sure, I guess there's that, but there's also just making sure that the stream's not going floopy either. Paying attention to those Yeah, I'd imagine that it shouldn't be too hard, right? you got multiple monitors. Uh, sure. But I mean, even then, I don't know. I don't know if Mola, I'm just telling you my preferences, I think, when it yeah, comes to... Yeah, I'm telling to you, fucking wrong, you need to test streaming. it out, find out the true glory of streaming yeah. story-driven games. but if I test games. it and I disagree with you, are you gonna accept that answer? Of course. Gonna... And then I'll ask you how you figured that out, and then I'll test your answers against reality. Sure, but it's not a matter of testing answers against reality, if we're talking about, like, it's, it's gonna be hard to just figure out subconscious preferences, isn't it? We can we can talk about it for sure. I guess I'm just saying, like, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> just trying to save you from missing out. That's all. I I know I know. Well, Metal in chat, he he knows he knows what's up. I'm trying, Metal. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Well, uh, did you play Kotor two? Oh, I haven't. I need to play Kotor. Best. Have you not played the first yeah. one? No, I've played neither of them. Oh. Yeah, Play it before the ones... remake eventually comes out, because uh, I think that's not coming out for years now. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, that's a relief. It's mm -hmm. um, the project is sort of uh, derailed. I think twenty twenty five at the earliest. And the uh, writer they hired for it was not. Um, I think they would have ruined it. Well, wasn't it because there were a bunch of tweets that she'd made where she was like, "Was it criticizing or like sort of shitting on Star Wars, or was it something else?" Uh, I know there was a load of drama. I think not only did they not like Star Wars, but there was a lot of sort of uh, ideological stuff with them as well. Ah, uh, well, well, I know it's uh like the common the we talked about it on the last stream, but they're updating it for modern <laughs> audience. I think there's there's a yes. Splinter remake that's happening. It's like update for modern audiences, and and it's like. Um, I mean, you could just, like, remake Splinter Cell 1. <laughs> like, it's not that old. Like, the game's only 20 years old. You could just, like, remake Splinter Cell 1 and, and keep the story the same. You know, the 2000s at this point might be a period piece. How long, how long before uh, setting something in the past becomes a period piece? Like the 90s or the 80s? Wow, maybe period piece isn't the right way to describe it. But, you know. The, the thing with Coke. Yeah. The thing with thing with KOTOR as well is it didn't really need a writer. It is a case of, we really like this, don't mess with it because anything you change will spoil it. 
And so well, unless yeah, you're going you to just... do like an expansion, which is separate, uh, I think any writer would inevitably make it worse. We're kind of awkward when it when you start. If you're remaking games like from thirty or forty years ago, in terms of like the way that they're presented, that there are naturally going to be changes because maybe they didn't have voice acting before, or maybe they just didn't even really have like cinematic cutscenes, and you want to have them. Like that's one thing. But when a game is only twenty years old, like you really don't need to change much. Um, weren't they like, talking about changing the combat as well? Which is a well, disaster. so at that point yeah. it's like a full blown, just complete remake. Um, which I don't know if that's what anybody wants. <laughs> it's like, I haven't played Kotor, well, but I always hear that went. everybody. Well, but people like that Final Fantasy VII remake, right? And that changed heaps of things. So, yeah, maybe, but I maybe, guess but... if, yeah, I guess, but for, I don't know, maybe just to, does, cause does Kotor have the sort of, I don't know, um, like respect that Final Fantasy VII did? Because I don't uh, really know about Final Fantasy VII. Oh. its fans, yeah. Oh. Kotor like, is one of the best games ever made, right? Like, it's pretty often... Mm -hmm. regarded there, there's a moment the, in yeah, Kotor, like, like if, the purpose, if the purpose of a story is to, like, make you feel something and, like, leave a lasting impression on you, uh, this um, the moment in Kotor I never saw coming. Maybe it was because I was a kid, you know, I wasn't looking for that kind of thing, but it's always stayed with me, and it's kind of if the ultimate kind of nostalgia around things like that because of the impression that it left. I, I wouldn't want someone messing with it well yeah i mean that's, that's very much a way to sell it to me i've been i'll get around to the, the i'm gonna go through an era at some point of playing a whole bunch of games i missed including uncharted by the way of which i i have one two three four ready to go uh, right um, well i man i'm curious to see what you think of those games don't worry Fringy. i'm already getting used to pissing people off with my uh my takes of being like God you're probably one, gonna upset not too people, great. I think. <laughs> I think uh, I get the impression that your perspective on Uncharted is going to be lower than the average perspective, including mine. You ready for that, chat? You're going to find me annoying, but I'll, I'll I argue... I need to be ready for that. I'll I argue this is you brought it on yourselves, them. okay? You want me to play them. <laughs> this is what I happens. I need to brace for it, depending on what you say about Uncharted 2. Like, <laughs> that's... Uh... Oh, yeah. What if I come <laughs> in and I'm just like, this shit? Um, damn. We, that would be a fight, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, on that note, that's it. That's EFAP. Uh, was there anything, mm -hmm. Fringy, Rags, yourselves, you wanted to say before we go? You know, I don't think there is. I'm um, shocked at how fast we got through the episode. Yeah, I'm too, actually. Under uh, six hours. All I, have is, all I have is that it's, man, video is real close. It's, it's real close. I'm just, yeah, working on it. Um, Hopefully I have something soon. I guess I'll just do a run through of like, so what you can expect to happen now, it's going to be in actually one hour's time. I'll be watching the new Hot D episode, and then an hour after that, I'll be going live with Gary and Shad and possibly other guests to talk about it. It's going to be fun on the bun. It's my reward at the end of the week. That's how I see it. Monday, uh, the previous yesterday's episode will come out on Moolah. Tuesday, Real BBC. Wednesday, we are probably going to run something of either an offline or online catch up. Thursday will be open bar. Friday should be nothing. Saturday will be this episode coming out. And then, the, oh, sorry, Friday before that, though, you'll get Final Destination 1, that movie. There you go. That's something of a schedule. Plenty of things on the way. And, uh, yeah, we do intend to wait until She-Hulk and Rings of Power now complete as TV shows before you get any more coverage on them. But uh, who knows if we'll actually be able to complete coverage of either show in one EVAP episode. You know how it goes. Who knows what'll happen? Either way, thank you so much for joining us, precious guests. Mm -hmm. Thank you, EFAP, for uh, sweet, EFAP sweet chat. Guests. Uh, giving us some interesting insights, some fun on the bun commentary, and a uh, very kind donation. Uh, that's about it. Sleep well or stay awake well, whichever one you prefer. We shall see you next time, folks. Doodle bit. Yeah, see you later, everybody. See ya. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>